Last time on Beneath Dark Wings, because it has been a while, there was a great battle uh, being waged between the Shadar Kai or the Dusk Elves of Skethrino, leaving the um, the capital city of Zaracosa uh, and clashing with the forces, the united forces of Barovia uh, that you had rallied together. And this was all a clever distraction as uh, you rode in Alessandro's uh, mist-traveling uh, wagon, carriage, mm -hmm. and um, you managed to make your way through uh, outside of Castle Gloomvale, and you were all able to infiltrate with yourselves and um, uh, Sofiana, uh, the, uh, the Vistani, as well as Escher, and you made your way through uh, the sewer uh, to get into the dungeon, where you encountered uh, a Shadar Kai uh, being tortured. His arm had been removed, and uh, he had a tattoo of the Raven Queen, strangely, but you know that, this, that these elves had been, um, had rejected the Raven Queen, so it was a strange sight. You managed to heal him, regrow his arm, and learn about him. I'm still so mad. Uh, <laughs> when we hear it laid out like this, it's like, duh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, his, and you don't know where he came from, he just appeared mysteriously and fortuitously in your path. <laughs> I'm sure there's uh, nothing weird about that. <laughs> um, and he introduced himself as Zelek. He is, uh, had been a member of a secret cult or a sect that still worshiped the Raven Queen secretly. Uh, as I, let me just make sure that how I turn off, let me pause this. Hello? No, yeah, I can talk. Okay. <laughs> Extended warranty? I had no idea. Yes. It was about to expire? Yes, there's literally nothing no, important. So My right social now. security number. <laughs> um... <laughs> What the hell? Oh, and so you you freed him, and he revealed himself to be a powerful warlock uh, that could summon uh, a blade with the power of the Raven Queen uh, and use it to help you. Uh, and you made your way through the castle. Uh, you encountered a room of ghouls that uh, Iris turned to sand. Um, you also encountered a, uh, a room filled with strange canopic jars that were filled with these uh, undead scarabs that had uh, the uh, hides or shells of lapis lazuli. And um, you were able to deduce more or less that these scarabs had been, uh, would bore into the persons of these Dusk Elves, these Shadar Kai, and grant them with incredibly powerful necromantic magic. Uh, I, uh, very likely provided by whatever kind of dark bargain that um, King Vorok, the Carrion King, uh, had made with the Dark Lord, which you all know to be Ankatep of the Dread Domain of Harakir. Um, you eventually made your way to uh, a great feast that was being hosted of, of the various counts that had all been called to this uh, area uh, for a reason, uh, but not before seeing strange gears and machinery with uh, shimmering magical runes and uh, alchemy uh, that Escher was very uh, concerned and realized that it was likely the work of um, Ravenovia. Um, and uh, that she had studied his, al not just his uh, his tinkering, but also his al his alchemy as well, and had utilized it. Fuck! Um, you then made your way, uh, you saw the Carrion King, he gave a toast, as this being the day that, um, where the forces, all the traitors would be snuffed out and killed and crushed, and would be the day of their great victory. You managed to sneak your way through to Ravenovia's tower, the Tower of the Princess, and it was there that you found an absolute horror show. Body horrors of children uh, warped into strange, uh, horrible toy con constructions, uh, very clearly alive, uh, uh, rather undead. Um, irredeemable, begging for death, as well as dozens of vampire children. Um, and it was, uh, it, you've, you made your way finally into her chambers uh, with, a, with a princess-like throne, a workshop of sorts where all sorts of horrors and experiments uh, had been done. And it's there that Escher confronted his daughter, Ravenovia, who just seemed to be a little girl in a bustle dress, revealed herself to be a horrific arachnoid monster having fused with the power of Drizlash the Nine-Eyed Spider from the Amber Temple, devouring him whole uh, while Escher had been completely, his guard was entirely down. Uh, a great battle continued uh, and you were able to uh, weaken 
Ravenovia weaken whatever hold that Drizlas had over her. And Esh and while it looked like she was going to reform and get even more powerful, Escher from within managed to finish her off, uh, piercing the, the massive eye of Drizlas, severing his daughter's torso from the spider's torso. Um, and in one final moment of both of them in there dying, uh, losing their undeath, uh, having a, a moment of regret, uh, Escher makes a terrible choice and he calls the name of Pazuzu three times in desperation. They then turn to black feathers and drift away. Who knows where they are? It is then in the quiet following the battle, you hear the shaking of a cage and the squawking of a strange bird. Then it's revealed that there's a cage hanging uh, from the ceiling with a large two-headed um, raven creature fused together, half lighter, half darker, um, that have these strange human-like eyes. And it was then that Felix realizes it croaked out in a strange, a strained voice, brother, uh, that one of these heads was Milo. Uh, fused to, you then realized Valeska, the little Vistani child, and warped into this horrible uh, raven-like creature. Um, in that desperation, um, you absolutely shocked by this horror. Um, you didn't have too much time to process before um, the castle started to shake and move and runes and, and churning of gears all appeared and, and echoed through the chamber. And uh, it was in this moment that with a poof of magic, uh, Vorok teleported into the room to, uh, to take this, uh, this raven child. And he gloated and thanked uh, the party for bringing the last piece that they needed to go where they were going. And it was in this moment, your friend Zelek was able to break free of the magic with an incredible burst of fiendish magic. He flew forward, growing wings, plunging his blade into the Carrion King, pouring a plague and pestilence into the wound. And in this transformation, it was revealed that this was no elf. It was High General Virgil Zern. And uh, in this transformation, um, horrified uh, Vorok, managing to barely survive, teleporting off of the blade to who knows where, the castle settles. However, the roof collapses and Zern takes the Raven Child, uh, one of the heads he refers to as his son, uh, to, and flies off into the desert sky. And as the wall crumbles, um, uh, the uh, oh, Iris also having been compelled to sit in the throne by uh, a force within her soul. Um, uh, finally, all uh, coming to, you realize that the entire castle has been teleported to the dread domain of Harakir. And that's where we'll start. Anything, any questions that we have? Um, <clears throat> during the teleportation and arrival of this castle, it is, it is like mostly crumbled and like we saw the sun coming through, right? The, like, the, like open air. Yeah, the, the roof of the tower and I'll describe this once you all get in. But okay. yeah, basically the, at the very least, you haven't seen much because this just happened. But basically the roof has collapsed in uh, and one of the walls has uh, uh, completely fallen off and you see this strange desert land. And the castle there. feels intact though. Like we're not falling. You're not falling. No, it's, right. it's entirely settled. You might hear the, the, the crumblings of, of more bricks falling off. Um, but what happened to Vorak again? Vorak was uh, Vorak. stabbed, and he basically managed to cast a teleportation spell to get away. Okay, and so um, yeah, oh, he, and I guess I would say Vorak up. is a Nagpa. You learn through Zelek. He is uh, was formerly a Shadar Kai himself, a, a servant of the Raven Queen before she became the Raven Queen, when she was a very powerful uh, elf sorceress. Uh, a cabal of wizards conspired to take her power. Uh, it was in that ritual when the Raven Queen disrupted it in furious anger. Um, that explosion calamity uh, ripped all of them to the Shadowfell, uh, corrupting all of them, turning them into the Shadow Kai we know, and the Raven Queen cursed all of the wizards into horrible vulture-like creatures, but they are all incredibly ancient, powerful, uh, very bitter and malicious wizards. Yes? How do you spell Harak here? Uh, H-A-R apostrophe, no, Hara, uh, Hara, H-A-R-A -A, apostrophe K-I-R. Mm. Oh. Oh no! Or no, it's, no, it's H A R apostrophe A K I R. Apologies. Har apostrophe A K I R. Akir. Har Akir. 
It's phonetic. You just got to know where to put the apostrophe. We have a couple questions. Uh, we don't talk about Milo or we like Milo. Uh, Milo is Felix's bro uh, younger like brother Milo. that he's been looking for this entire campaign. Um, you found him. We like Milo. We found him, sort of. And then Nose has a question. What the fuck, Mook? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. You know, I don't know what I why I do this, um, but it happened. So, anything else before we start? A PRP. Can I pee? Yes. Can I pee? <laughs> That's fine. Any questions that you have, chat? <laughs> we'll a coffee break before yeah. we get started what a here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and uh, Iris renounced her god. Mm. I have to remember that. Yes, Iris renounced Anubis, correct. Because she, he wouldn't help with my own. He would, yeah, that's right. She attempted divine intervention. And she told him, if you don't and... help, I I renounce you. We'll see how that works I mean, he just did yeah, it. That was, really a, big that, was a, that was a bold choice, Iris. Bold choice. Bold choice, Cotton. <laughs> see if it pays off. <laughs> Lone says, what a great way to start a new year of BD Dub. Pain, suffering, loss, chaos, betrayal, unknown, a little hope. Yeah. That's, uh... Yeah. Sounds about right. I see we got a couple name changes in chat. Oh, so Team oh, yes. Mermaid is now Synonym and Ice Cream? Synonym, synonym. and Ice Cream. Oh, cinnamon, Synonym and Ice Cream. I like, like, like Cinnamon and Ice Cream, but Synonym. Oh, Synonym. Oh, okay. Cream. Got it. Uh, and wow. then it looks like Vesper has changed uh, his name to uh, Arky or Arca Tiris. Let us know how to pronounce that. Oh, yeah. But, uh, welcome on in. It's a normal day. It's a, a normal, normal day in the world of LOA. No says right. FMA out of 10. Yep, definitely. Definitely. What? I got hair on my mouth. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Just cat things. Just cat things. All right. <clears throat> Apparently, Reed's here, so someone needs to ban him. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You're my friend. Nobody likes you. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. I hate sand. It's coarse. It's, it's rough. Everywhere. It gets everywhere. It gets everywhere. Well, welcome to the desert. We got fun and games. Um, you all finally regain control of your bodies no longer tethered to the floor and the walls of the spinning castle as it teleported and made its way through the mist all, seemingly instantly due to the power uh, the alchemy uh, and the machinery of Ravinovia von Zarevich in one final posthumous act and you, as quiet returns to this space where there had been uh, the chaos of, of the, the rumbling castle, the crumbling of stone, the collapsing of the walls of this space, there's now just small stone fragments and dust uh, dropping down as all of you manage to gather yourselves. Iris, whatever kind of strange pull had taking control of your body and caused you to sit on that golden throne has released you entirely. Almost, in almost a strange jarring, um, jarring pull where beforehand, you, when you had been uh, uh, drawn to the canopic jars, when it released and you were able to gain control, it was a subtle, slow release. But it seems as if the moment whatever teleportation happened, whatever control there was, immediately cut. And you were able to regain your free will. And you look up and a massive blazing sun over the strange desert realm looms over and immediately you start to feel the heat, the oppressive dry heat. Virgil Zern's nowhere to be seen. The Raven Child is nowhere to be seen. Vorok's nowhere to be seen. It's just you all, the corpse of Sofiana, and about a dozen or so child vampires. What do you also do? Also corpses. Also corpses, yeah. A lot of corpses. You okay? Um, I will be 
on my knees with my head in my hands, sobbing, and uh, Beatrice will be hopping around me, making more noise than you've ever heard her. She's tweeting, uh, going absolutely chirping, going crazy. No, 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 no. I'm so sorry. No, no he was right there. Ah, no, how could this happen? Oh, I, I didn't have any time. We, we can still find him. Um, he, he's... He, he, we, we, we'll find a way to fix him. We'll find a way to, like, to, to, to get him back. Yeah, we, we have to find him first. We have to find him first. Where did, where could they have gone? I don't even know where we have gone. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, this is, did, did the whole castle teleport? And I, I want to, like, look around and see, like, is it very clear that we're in, like, a totally different place? Do I have a concept that we are we're in like a dread domain? Like what? How? What, what? What would I understand about that? And where are we seeing all this? Like, the, the like is there a big hole in the wall? Or like, yeah, like okay. half of the tower is basically okay. collapsed and okay. fallen away. You've just very fortunately managed to dodge all of the rubble and not been crushed beneath that. Oh man! Uh, I know, isn't that handy? Boy, that was lucky. <laughs> um, but I would say that you don't even need to roll. You look out and you see uh, what would have been a river, but completely just dried up, a dried riverbed, howling sandstorms far to the north and to the east. You see just miles and miles and miles of dunes, all of them, they look like cities just dotting this, but it just seem to be half buried ruins as far as you can see. And uh, massive mountains aspiring upwards. And you can just see that that, that, that there are, are, are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of statues of, of, of gods, of, of pharaohs, of kings, of priests, all carved in. It's you can tell very clearly that even from what you had learned, what Iris had told you of Neckbet, this is that turned up to many, many degrees. It feels incredibly supernatural. Um, it reminds you, I would say, perhaps, of the way that the elemental plane of air felt. How just insane and magical, or the plane of limbo, or just the... I, using a, a meta term, the high fantasy of it, right? It, it, it does not feel like a natural, normal place in Avantress. Interesting. Um, look, oh, I found all of these books, and I'm like, shake out the bag of holding, and there's gonna be like dozens and dozens and dozens of books are gonna just start pouring out. I mean, maybe one of these, she had to do something to, to turn him into that, right? I mean... Maybe one of these, there's like an, uh, a, 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 a reverse spell or like an undo spell. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe. I, I, I heard the, the Raven Queen's words in my head uh, about the dagger and, and about splitting them in two and, and me having to do it. But I, 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 I couldn't, I was so stunned. I, I, I couldn't react. I was frozen. You have to use the knife? That's what she said. I, I don't know if I can do it. I didn't know what I, I didn't even know what she meant when she said it. I didn't know it was going to be like this. Um, um, well, well look, I mean, uh, uh, they went uh, that direction and I want to like get a sense because they, they like flew, right? Yes. Yeah. What direction do I think that they flew? Uh, I would say make an intelligence check. Oh, a no. disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Two natural 20s. Let's go. Three. They flew off in a direction. Uh, you have no idea which way is north, which way is south. The sun is beating down oh, directly right. over you. Um, you have no idea which direction it's moving. Uh, you're in a completely strange, uh, strange new world. Uh, I'll just like gingerly like look at the covers of these books, just trying to glean anything I can from yeah. the, you know the, the way they look. So um, as you look through the books, it's a very macabre uh, assortment where you get, there are books on, a uh, good number of books on alchemy, uh, a good number of books on, uh, on, um, on the machinery or the, uh, art or the artificers, tinkers, very uh, uh, small books. It seems to be a relatively new or rare uh, type of, of knowledge. Um, there is also uh, 
things on on taxidermy, things on um, on on dark on dark magic. There's books. There's a variety of books mixed in with um, with like children's books and children's stories and fairy tales um, and uh, books of of reported monsters and nightmares. God damn them! Damn it! Uh, this is this is all Zern's fault. Zern did this. He he set this all up from the beginning, and he did this to Milo. We're gonna find him, and and we're gonna fix this. And I swear to the gods, if he gets in my way, I'm gonna reduce him into a pool of bubbling fat. Well, well I mean, it, he he was trying to help, wasn't he? I mean, Zelik was 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 really nice, and 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 also a liar. Oh, yeah, uh, but I mean, he stabbed King Vorok. We don't like him. But he let he let Vorok do everything that he did to get these Raven children together and and, and turn them into that thing. Oh, like there's some kind of tool for him. I don't know. It's just what he said. But I swear, I swear, we're gonna fix this. And when I see Zern, he's not gonna live to see another day. Well. I mean, unless his intentions are, are, are good, and maybe he's also trying to help Milo. He called him uh, his son. Then he should not have lied. We could have made haste. We could have made different choices. He's been lying to he us all from the beginning. He chose to lie. Zern yeah. and Zelik are no friend of mine. We've been his pawns. She's exactly right. So, us being the, the wings of the raven, or is it just us being pawns? It was all bullshit. None of it was real. We've been played. Oh. Well, we can't just sit in here and cry about it. We have to get up and do something. You're right. You're right. And what do we get up and do? Are, are, you, are you feeling okay? No, not particularly particularly well. Did I perceive that of the same kind of charm that happened with the scarab thing? I'm still sitting on the throne. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, Iris is just sitting on the throne and you saw her very much deliberately move to sit and that there was some sort of reaction of the glowing gold um in order to see that. Yeah. What 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 happened? You you, you walked to the throne but it looked like you were yeah. Taken over like last time. Do you want to come down from there? No, this feels quite natural. Natural. I mean, it looks kind of natural. You you look at home. It's that much seat. larger than the one I had at home. But... <coughs> Cats got my tongue. <laughs> it's the same strange magic that overcame me with the Knopic jars. Hmm? Overcame me with the throne. Just in, but, just in case. Sorry, go ahead. But that is no longer lingering on my soul. What is, is I'm having a crisis of faith. What do you mean? Well, as you know, I renounced Nubis before we came to this land. I need time to think. Without the constant worry that I will displease a god. A god that, though has helped me, might have also hindered me. Well, I mean, be, why would you renounce him? Fear, terror, weakness. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I would still be really angry and big and red, and, and Felix could probably cast eight spells at the same time and instantly incinerate us, and... And Lufty would be a slug or a worm. We don't say worm here. <laughs> oh, sorry, a slug. <laughs> I guess she was slimy. She left a slime trail. <laughs> <laughs> when I say that Anubis has weakened me, it is my own folly. I've spent my life as the middle child 
in a high-ranking family. My life has been spent trying to live up to how others see me and view me. To not be overshadowed by my brother who will be king. My sisters who will marry and be queens. And then to a god who I've wanted nothing more than to see me before I've even seen myself. I need time to find out who Iris is. I don't need Anubis to save Milo. I, I agree with that. that that's a really, that's a, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, I don't know, it just feels weird that all of these big, powerful, cool <coughs> dudes that I thought were so great, that nobody likes anymore. I love Anubis. If it weren't for him, I never would have found you. And it is through him that we will get out of this place, which I actually find quite relaxing in a way. It's more homely than any place I've been to in quite a while. But he called on me because we will save him. I can't be relying on him now. We need to rely on each other. And I need to rely on myself. And I know that we're scared. I was very scared in that moment. But I'm not ready to give up my god. I know it's deep down. I just... It's not him, it's me. I need a break. Oh. I, I guess I didn't really know you could take a break from a god. I didn't think that was the thing, but I guess it makes sense. Well, uh, out of curiosity, can you uh, still do things? I haven't given... It's not like I've killed him, Caprice. <clears throat> well, I, 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 other clerics in Galtica, you know, they claim they get their power from their god, and so I didn't know if it was, uh, you know, one of those uh, one-to-one type deals. Well, my hope is that we're here, and he needs our help to free him, so the last thing he's going to do, and I'm cranky, is to take my power away so that we can't free him. But I guess we'll see. Are you asking me to show you some kind of magical ability? Well, and also, you don't you don't have to stay stood up, but just step out of the chair and then get back into the chair if you want to relax. But, like, making sure that you're not, you know, still under some You think thrall... I'm being controlled or puppeted by a higher power? Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, you have been twice now, so... Yes. I'll stand up and then sit back down. <laughs> okay, oh. see, that's all, that's all I'm talking see, about. That's, that's all, that's all, all I'm talking about. Do you feel better? Are your nerves quelled? On this one specific point, there are a variety of additional nerves that need quelling, but uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, I would I, like to use thaumaturgy, if Anubis allows it, to rain some golden sand, like, softly around everyone. As you call upon that, the magic <clears> still <throat> comes to you, and, and golden sand does however thaumaturgy works. I oh, believe, see? <laughs> I believe that my god knows me better than I know me, and even in moments of rash outbursts, Anubis will always know my heart. He believes in you. Yes. And that is what leads me to know I must start working and believing in myself. I point to the horizon. Is this is this what Necbeth's like? Yes, but not quite this. Hot and disgusting? I'm You've sweating. been there. I know. This place is like way hotter. Yes, that's true. I'm going to take my big like woolen sweater off. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I'll feel okay. It's hot. <laughs> I would say, I'll take my coat off and like bundle it up and stick it in my backpack. Yeah. So I'm just wearing like the pants and the and the uh, undershirt. Do I they... got like my overalls and like a little like under <laughs> undershirt as well, like a little tank top. So, one. do they build all these statues like this and neck bed like this? Yes. Why? Why? Why not? Well, like, if you build one big statue, and you're staring and looking at that statue, and you look at right next to it, and you're like, I think I'll build another statue just like this one. You don't, you don't go bigger, you just do one after the other. It's like building a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. <laughs> what? Oh, no. The symmetry. Reverence. To pharaohs and gods. I don't get it. I respect it. I don't get it. Do, do your, do your, these statues don't provide coffee. 
I wasn't implying that they did. But, but a Starbucks provides coffee. No, I'm saying that like two Why would you have a similar... coffee vendor across the way from a coffee vendor? That's exactly my point, is that you've already you done the job wouldn't? with the one coffee vendor. But it's vendor. not you a marketplace, the Caprice. Vendor. They're, 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 they're temples in there. Yeah, you've already done the job with the one reference. temple. You see the, 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 the... Do you see what I'm saying? No, it's not a marketplace, Caprice. It's... Okay. I, think I, I don't get it. I, don't, I respect it. I don't get it. Is that there's a difference between um, religious reverence and providing a service to, but to a populace. When you do the one religious reverence, you need to do the next one and then the next one and the next one? It's all God points, yes. God? I mean, it depends, I guess. I don't That's know. a wonderful way to put it. Yes, God points. And really? new pharaoh comes along, scratches out the name of the old pharaoh, puts their name on it, and then adds more to show that they have more power. You understand? It's a power play thing. A Starbucks next to another Starbucks, they don't need to have a power play because it's just Starbucks. I've never felt farther away from Galtica than I do right now. <laughs> <sighs> that may be true. Uh, uh, we don't have any idea where we even are, are we? Huh? How are we going to get... Down from here? What are we gonna do about Esha? That was one of the other. He said the thing. I completely forgot. That was one of the other nerves I wanted to talk about. Is I that know, I don't know how I feel right now. This is a lot, a lot happening. A lot happened in the last fifteen minutes. I'm feeling emotionally numb. Do you know where we are? No. I can imagine because I've heard the name. Uh, yes. Yeah. Park here. Yep. You basically got the the general rundown. Of, of how that works, I would say. An Anubis basically told you, hey, this is hard here, it's a domain of dread, it's in the shadow, connected to the shadow fell. So, when Anubis and I spoke, he warned me that he was imprisoned in a domain of dread, which is connected to the shadow fell, in a realm called Harakir. I believe that is where we are. Oh. That doesn't sound very safe. That is also where Unkatep resides. I believe he is the master of this domain. Oh. I believe that my compulsion to sit in the throne was the final piece in connecting us to this plane as his soul resides, or at least did reside in me. So it's gone now, though. He's, he's it's like... possible. I believe it might be. I no longer feel that pull. And it persisted even just a small amount consistently when we were in Avantress. So my assumption is upon arriving to this plane, he has reclaimed that bit of his soul. So that sounds bad, right? Huh? Well, I mean, all it's of good this it's out of you, but bad it's The like key word times three was bad. Milo was bad. Zelig Zern was bad. And yes. Oh, and Sophia. Oh, my. And, and yes. She's like laying there, isn't she? Yeah. She's like in the middle of the oh, room. Oh, gosh. What are we going to do with her? Well, we should, could bury her in the sand. Is there a you know, how, was, how was she killed? She just... died honorably killing a bunch of child vampires, defending us from being assaulted <laughs> just, by them. She succumbed to her wounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can't just put her in here. It's a dread domain. That's like throwing her in the dumpster. Maybe you could, uh... Halfling it up. You can do that, right? You can just. Oh, she'll be really mad. Well, I've become a bit stronger since then. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Some of the sand went up my nose. Oh, I thought I spit in your face. No, no, it's. We're 15 feet apart, it feels, but. Oh. I'm a cat. <laughs> Tabaxi. Sorry. I, I, I'm a tiefling. Mm. Congratulations. I like beans. No. <laughs> you like beans? Yeah, I just thought, I felt like saying that. Why? I just, I don't know, I like them. <laughs> I came out of nowhere, Joa. Thank you for the follow, Kitty Cats Alive. Thank you. Thank you. Can we pull up the Great notification? Kitty Cats right? Alive! Mmm. Mmm. I'm just... Beans. I mean, beans are fine. I was, that's a very strange thing to say, Toa. All right, we, we how, have... How long has it been since she has passed? Probably like not that long. 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, maybe maybe within the hour. I mean, yeah, it hasn't within been the that hour. long. Well, I only have a few of these left, but I could attempt to bring her back. My fear and my hesitation hmm. 
So I, I don't believe it's what she would want. I Does she get a choice? Kind of I forget. Of course she gets a choice. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's all, just all the travel made me really hungry. All souls have a choice upon casting this kind of spell. Whether we, whether their soul rejoins their body. But given what she's seen and the fate of her daughter, I think dying in a blaze of glory like that is exactly what someone like, like her would want. But her daughter is not lost. Just like Milo is not lost. And should we be able to separate them? We will. I have magics that could bring her back at that time. So I suggest okay. we not make her choose now when her soul is so weakened. But we wait until we can give her the hope she would need to return. This is going to sound grotesque, but I suggest we sever her hand from her body, place it in our bag of holding, I will mummify it, and we will have a remnant of her physical form for us to attempt at a later date to bring her back to the material Couldn't world. we just put all of her in the bag? That would be a lot of mummified weight, and I only have so, so much... Um, of my poultice. I'll get her hand. Oh, no, couldn't we just, like, <laughs> use her, like, a, a locket of hair or something? I would prefer to have the hand. She is currently dead, Toa. She will not feel a thing. Oh, right. She just feels disrespectful to dismember her. Which no, hand? It's not. Does it matter? Was she lefty or righty? It does not matter. right handed. I'll go over to uh, the body and uh, pull up the left arm and I'll take out my dagger and as quickly as I can just Oh! Caprice! I got it, I got it, just I a moment! I know you! I'm, yeah, it's fine, it's coming, it's coming right off! That's not even serrated, you're just, just a making moment. a mess! I'm, well, I oh just, my god! Hold on, hold on, I, I got it, I got it. <laughs> I I'm, just I'm, lose I'm going to Caprice. very quickly go over, and I'm going to pull Caprice away, <laughs> and I'm going to take my blade. I'm assuming I have a serrated blade of some kind. I'm going to quickly just chop the hand off. Do they, not be disrespectful, Caprice. I wasn't trying. I thought it was going to come right off. You could Did not you handle this. Did on it? No. <laughs> There's blood on what your face. Wrong with you? No, there is not. You are horrible. No. Take a walk. Where? And then I'm going to wrap it up in linen and uh, I'll spend some time to to prepare it and then place it into my bag. My satchel. Yeah. Caprice, you're in corridor. Does she have, um, like, weapons and stuff still on her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she has her holy symbols of the Morning Lord. Uh, you see that she's used, she only has one bottle, uh, one vial of holy water left. Uh, her whip is at her side. Um, I would she take has all, of, and daggers. all of that. Loot the body. Yeah. I would take all of that and wrap it into a bundle. And, and... she's going to want this when she comes yes, back. That's true. Toa, can you keep that on in the bag of holding, please? Do I just drop it in? Yeah, just throw it in there. Does it? Is it fragile? Oh, it'll be fine. Who, who knows how his back bottom. works? It's very strange. <laughs> oh, and she, she also had five potions of invulnerability. That's amazing. Here. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that corpse we dropped that on is going to be invulnerable, though. <laughs> Skeletons shoot up through the sand. That's neat. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, we can't take anything <laughs> No, we can't. It is D &D. All right, we we have a, a series of things that we need to, we need to work out. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm definitely concerned about Escher, but quite frankly, we don't know where he's gone or, or what the repercussions of what he did will, will will be. And for now, we can't really worry about it. There's nothing we can do to, to get to him or, or save him. We can only hope that he can handle himself wherever he is. That stupid man. Ah! Two. We need to figure out where we're going. I mean, is there a, a town, a structure, somewhere to get out of this heat? Do dread domains have towns? I don't well, know. we're currently in a structure that is providing at least a little bit of shelter. Does if we need to down? rest. I'm, I've never been to this dread domain. I just assumed you'd know. I don't. I wish that I did, but I don't. Can we you might... talk to an. Oh. 
<laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we might want to rest here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we and certainly don't want to waste resources. Set this castle ruin up as a base camp of sorts. And then we're going to have to figure out where to go next once we're back to full strength. So I think setting up here, getting some food in our systems, I'm sure we're all hungry. And then we can talk about what we're going to do next. It would not be wise to just dart off into the, an unknown desert with no plan. I agree. Agreed. We, we need to figure out what the most likely scenario for where Zern might have gone, where Forok might have gone, and maybe even where this Ankatep guy might be. And Yes, there is some... The The pyramid was... Was it upside down? I can't remember if uh, it was upside so down. So there right were a number of pyramids. Uh, the one that Anubis was being kept in. Oh, no, that one was like black. Like, okay, like completely... That was the uh, yeah. There is a black pyramid. And like a really weird construction. Like, uh, it was like a tiered, almost like ziggurat pyramid. Uh, yes, exactly the like that. Yeah, uh, that's good. I mean, that that's a clue. That's a hint. Yes. That's at least some sort of a lead. Something we can keep in our eyes. Can out anyone fly? I can fly. Would you like to fly? Well, can, can you fly with someone else? Would you like to fly? Yes, actually. I would love to. If we could fly straight up in the air and scan the horizon and see what landmarks we can see, mm -hmm. it would give us a rough approximation since we have no map and no knowledge of this land. It would give us an idea. Could you make a map? You're artistic. Uh, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Yes, if we could fly up and make a rough sketch of the landscape, we won't be able to see much, mm -hmm. but we should be able to see some structures, if there are some. It would give us a good idea of, of where to start, don't you think? Uh, well, why don't we both go, and, and we can talk about it as we fly through the air, like two uh, things that fly. Yes, that would be great. Okay. Um, I'll pull out my viol. I just need a... Uh, Sand on the wind. All we are is sand on the wind. And you feel yourself oh, suddenly start oh, to oh, levitate. Oh, 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 Caprice! Caprice, I'm floating! Yes, Caprice, yes, 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 yes. look at this! Uh, and then for me... Oh, this um, is so cool. Yeah, sand on the wind, sand on the wind. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so I will spend I two charges of my um, bow of the dying swan. And uh, we now both have the ability to fly. Uh, that'll be... Uh, oh! When I cast it on myself, the concentration for you stops, doesn't it? Huh. Well, can't you cast fly on multiple people? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. multiple targets, depending on level. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So if you scroll down to the very bottom and it says... At, when cast yeah, but I'm level. casting it via my magic item. So what level does it cast oh, fly? So, no, it's so a, I think it's you, would, you would have to do extra charges for extra levels for a magical item. I think that that's probably true. I'll just quickly spend the additional... Oh, that, that was not what I wanted to do. I'm just spending resources. Thank God you guys can't see what I'm doing on D&D Beyond right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I will work out my resources later. But yes, I think if I spend four charges of the mandolin, then I can cast it at second. Third level. Three, three charges means I can cast it at second level, with, or the next level up, which means that it's two targets, which yeah. means both of us, which means we fly. So for an hour, I'm concentrating, and... Um, um, we can fly, we can fly, we can fly, we can fly, we can fly. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You just, oh. you just will. No, no, you just mm. think about it. <laughs> you you don't, don't have to do you that. You make the little squeaky noise. You could just. <laughs> this is like those videos you see of cats who've been taken into zero g and then just. <laughs> God. <laughs> or with the booties on. Like <laughs> 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 I, I gracefully superman my way out through the, the um, opening in the side of this tower, and uh, I will do a, a once around once I see that Iris has picked it up and gotten I'll, it. And I'll eventually acclimate to the flying <laughs> and uh, like doggy paddling, <laughs> and I'll fly up. Um, okay. And once we're up there, I would try to get a sense of north, south, east, west. I would try to pick out the major landmarks, what's near us. I would try to get a sense of how much of the um, actual castle has transported, if it's the whole thing, if it looks mostly destroyed. Uh, and these I'm, kinds of I'm basically just there to make sure that Caprice is taking it seriously, that he's not, like, drawing unnecessary things on the map. Like a piece. Making things up. Just basically being Caprice. <laughs> 
Okay, there's no Starbucks there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I need, uh, if you would like to make a, per- I guess if, if, if Iris is <clears throat> assisting you, make a perception check at advantage. Perception? Okay. Oh, look over there, it's an obelisk. I love obelisks. <laughs> Uh, give me oh, them no, 24. Please. 24. <laughs> Yay! You, both of you fly up, <laughs> and you, uh, and, and the heat from the sun and, and the, the blinding light uh, hits you, and I'll say that, you know, basically from where you were when you started and the time that you've been talking, the sun has moved very slightly, oh. and you're able to determine north, south, east, and west. Okay. Uh, if, it, if basically the, the sun moves the same. At the very least, there's a construction, and you it could can... just be doing this. <laughs> yeah, it could, be. it could be. You have no idea. Um, but you're able to see that if you had to deduce where you are in this in this domain, you can't really see the entirety. This place is huge, um, but you can see that you seem to be towards um, to your west is a howling. Uh, uh, sandstorm that seems to be mixed in with a strange mist that is not unlike what you had traveled through with Alessandro, uh, and you just see it's a compl- it's just a wall of just this howling I get sandstorm. A sense that there's an edge to this you get, domain. Basically, you're on you're near the western edge okay. of this domain. Uh, you look, uh, you look towards um, the north. Uh, north from you, and you actually see that there's, that there's a very large lake. It actually seems like an oasis with lush greenery. Um, and you see that there is a river that runs from uh, north to south in this place. Uh, well, it would have been a river, but it is completely dried up. It is a, it's just a barren, um, a barren uh, uh, riverbed. Mm-hmm. You're able to see... Uh, probably a, an additional oasis to your south uh, that's considerably smaller. And you see on the large oasis, there actually seems to be uh, a city of some kind made of, uh, it's 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 hard to see from how far away you are, but you do see structures that seem to be not uh, these ancient weathered ruins. Um, in the center of this place, uh, going for, for miles and miles and miles is just, just dunes and dunes and dunes and d- of, of desert, all as far as you can see dotted with what at the immediate glance would look like towns, but it's just, uh, obelisks, crumbled statues, these ancient buildings, just ruins as far as you can see. Um, some, uh, some obelisk towering, uh, hundreds of feet into the air, sticking out of the sand. Who knows how deep it goes beneath? Um, you see, uh, what seems to be a howling, uh, storm, uh, sandstorm that seems to be in the, the moving across the center of this domain that doesn't have that mist within it, um, that seems to be moving across the desert, um, to you, to the far south, uh, southeast, you see just these massive mountain ranges all uh, uh, looming high, and you see that there seems to be a colossal uh, stone city built in here with all of these similar statues, but they all seem to have very skeletal construction to them. And you see it the very, very, very far in the midst of what looks like this massive ancient city, you see a colossal golden pyramid flanked by numerous statues. Uh, and then you see the where there the, the, the mountains uh, to the north uh, northeast, you see what looks like uh, the mountains turn into just uh, uh, arid canyon land uh, with uh, uh, numerous ravines. And uh, that's the general of what you see is from where you are in this uh, in this in this uh, dread domain. Nice canyon. Thank you. He's a pretty good map maker. <laughs> Except for all the butts. Except for all of the butts. Those are dunes. (laughs) Dune butts. Um, Also, with a 24, um, I will say that you see a number of creatures flying through the air and and darting and moving across the desert. It's very hard to see at your, um, uh, from where you are, uh, exactly, making out exactly what they are. Hmm. But um, something that does, the, the, a bit of movement that you do see beyond the swirling sandstorms seems to be very far off coming from the direction 
of that massive uh, city with a colossal, unfathomably large golden pyramid. Um, you see what looks like just a swarm of, 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 of it looks like black against the, the, the desert sands. And it seems to be moving in a mass in the oh, direction of the castle. You said the skeletal stone city was in the southeast, didn't yes. you? Southeast, yep. Yep. A good map maker. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I might have to redraw that. But from the stel- heading towards the skeletal stone, stone coming city, from the, coming from, from the, the city of the dead, city of the I was going to say the city of the dead. Uh, it seems to be a massive, uh, uh, moving um, mass of of, of 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 something. Okay, I'm gonna just. <laughs> Moving mass, and it doesn't seem to be like rushing or moving super quickly. Is it heading uh, it's north, ver- east, south? It's heading in your direction, so it's heading from it's heading technically northwest, northwest. from the southeast. Yeah, 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 I got it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, spending the full hour as much as I can until I feel nervous that we need to get back down to the tower. Eventually, I gesture to Iris that I can feel the magic starting to deteriorate and start to fly back down to the tower. Um, we join you after you guys have been doing whatever you're doing for an hour, I guess. I would turn to Felix and look at him and say, well, I mean, we could we could rest here, but aren't there like hundreds or like a thousand elves like downstairs? Uh, apologies. I Let me let me finish that thought. Oh. But I did meant to say That's is that you see that the entirety of the castle has teleported. Uh, you know that it's absolutely massive, but um, you see that some of the towers have completely uh, crumbled, uh, collapsed in on themselves. You see where uh, one uh, part of the castle, much of the roof has uh, collapsed in, and you see just dozens of ghouls completely fried from the sun. And you actually hear uh, panicked voices oh, of, uh, of, of dozens of of Shadar Kai um, from different parts of the castle, but uh, they seem to be very cut off from where you are, and they seem to be very um, uh, just more concerned with where the fuck they are and getting out of there than like trying to sort of look for you all. I would say that it's definitely more of like a panic than like we gotta find the bad people. Uh, just to, so it's not an immediate danger that they're searching for you. I think you'd be able to easily discern that. Caprice and Iris will return and, after I use the restroom. Yeah. And then, so I was thinking. If there are like hundreds of dark elves still downstairs, and you all want to sleep, I could stay up all night. And we came down that long hallway to get here, and I could take on. I mean, they're like peasants, right? I could probably take on at least hundreds of peasants as long as they come single file down the hallway. <laughs> so I could just one at a time, every six seconds, just kill them. Um, yeah. Do you think they'd do that though? I mean, that seems unlikely. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, mechanically, each one is probably like a foot and a half wide, but they can only, like, you know, only one can come in in a five foot space um, because of how, you know, for how, whatever how reason. squares work. Yeah. <laughs> Just for whatever reason in, in the physical reality of this world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I anyway. don't know. I don't know. Uh, I... I'm sitting there with them, but I'm kind of like. I've taken my sweater off already, and I'm trying to, like, summarize my wardrobe as we're sitting there. I'm, like, dumping the sand out of my winter boots and, like, <laughs> putting on little, like, slippers and just trying to get, like... <laughs> for, for what it's worth, Toa, I'm not going to go to sleep. Even if we rest here for however many hours we need, I'm, I'm going to look through these books and try to take it easy and, and, and maybe look through my own spell book, and, and I need to think about what we're going to do. I don't know if they can even get up to here to us. Uh, I mean, they got to be just as confused as we are. Well, I guess that's a good point. Maybe they didn't know. And maybe Vorok just left, and he doesn't care about any of these people. So we can't hear them? No, no. It's, you're you're in this, this okay. tower, and, and with Caprice and Iris, them flying around. I and I would back. say that you're able to easily kind of stay out of sight. They're not really scanning. They're, like, looking out, and, and mm-hmm. they, they don't notice. I mean, we should definitely, we definitely need to, 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 to stay guard, but... I don't think I could sleep even if I wanted to. Well, I guess they would need vultures to get up here anyway, so... I mean, unless there's like a hundred vultures still around. We're pretty high up. Um, well, you you can can start reading and I'll get you anything you need. Just let me know. Thank you, Toa. And I'm just gonna, like, prop myself up against one of the walls. Uh, you know, one of the unbroken walls. Okay. And start, like, opening up all the books. And, uh, you know, I guess... 
rules as written. I don't need to sleep to get a long rest as long as I'm not like, exerting myself, right? We're level yeah. 14, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I would just <laughs> basically start resting. Okay. But just reading and yep. like looking through my own spell book and looking through all these books that Toa collected. Um, you know, and, and conversing with the with the group. Yeah, and I would start just going through, and like now that we have more time, and I'm not frantically trying to get books, <clears throat> I basically just start combing over what's left yeah. of this of her room, and just trying to f- see if I can find anything else of value. I'd be collecting books or, you know, reagents, whatever, and just start, you know, bringing them to the field yeah. and just putting them down and collecting them. Um, so if you're gonna take your full long rest doing that, why don't you make an investigation check for me at advantage because Toa's helping you? Sure. And then that'll basically. Love it. And you also find a number of notebooks um, as well. And it's kind of this weird thing. They're like these the, the, the notes of a horribly evil mad scientist mixed in with like girly doodles. Uh, it's it's there's some like eyes that are like hearted and like with uh, dotted with hearts. It's fucked up. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay, uh, that's noted. Uh, at this point, you're probably able to set up. Uh, Fila, uh, uh, Toa, you helped Felix kind of set up a little uh, study area and workspace. There's actually a couple of chairs and uh, and tables that are intact. I need to kind of pull away a lot of the webbing. Uh, you probably just spend some time cleaning all the disgusting webbing. Um, and it's at this point when you realize how many cages are bolted to the walls. Uh, some had collapsed and splintered uh, into shards of metal, but just the the emptiness of these cages is almost as unsettling in this aftermath as if they had been uh, filled. Uh, it's at this point that Iris, and uh, you're able to keep a, keep an eye on, on, on Caprice, he does take it seriously. And um, I'll say Iris, for your... Um, I need to make a religion check at advantage. Do it. Okay. Do it good. Do it. No, I got two natural ones. Her God has abandoned her! <laughs> That's outrageous. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, uh, but put together, it's an 11. Well, what's your, what's <laughs> yeah, your bonus? Shut up, Capri's yeah, a plus. Yeah, it's not that good. It's well, down. I don't know, that, that, that seems good. like a sign to me. <laughs> It's you ain't def- supposed to know shit. It's definitely a sign. <laughs> yeah, uh, some sort of fate at play here. Maybe I can inspire uh, her. Yeah. So eight. Mm. Uh, you're you're a little distracted given everything that you've experienced, and your head's in the in the clouds, literally, uh, <laughs> as a cloud. You're not that high up, uh, <laughs> but uh, you're you're a little distracted as you kind of you're but you you help Caprice, and you're and you eventually both arrive, flying back down before the spell runs out, and rejoin your friends. It's mostly just that as you're trailing me while I fly, you realize that there's a tiny hole right at the taint of my pants. <laughs> the taint of your pants. Yes. Yeah. Are you wearing underwear? What? Hold on, I missed please, that. Please say you have the, uh, a smaller pair of pantaloons that you wear under your normal pants. No, I just didn't realize that there was a rip right between the butthole and the ball sack. <laughs> oh my god. Huge <laughs> tear, if you will. Yeah, I mean, there's a natural hole that's intentional because of the. In the I need to get my the tail, tail out. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, well, yeah. that'll share what you split. learned the other yeah, day. Yeah, the, yeah. We, we've been through <laughs> a lot, and I am not aware that there's a small hole right there between my legs. Well, you've been doing a lot of action stuff. But Iris probably is aware just of it. <laughs> probably just split your fence. It happens. You've been moving a lot, running, dodging, attacking, spell casting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, if I, when I fly fast enough, it makes a it makes a sound. You know, it's like one of those like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like. But I don't know. I don't quite know why that's happening. I don't recognize it. Like an empty two liter when you twelve. <laughs> Caprice. Yeah. I can see the area between your butthole and your ball sack currently. Well, I don't know why you'd be looking there. You're flying above me, and there is a tear between your... Oh, you mean that you can actually see what's going yes, on. Yes, I can see the pink flesh between your butthole and your ball sack. Would you like to take would you like me to take one of my surgical needles and my thread and fix your trousers? Not while I'm wearing the pants. <laughs> well, I don't want to see more than that. Well, please. I can put on my jam jams and you can and you can do that. Right. I just thought you should know in case we're flying with the rest of the group. I'm not sure how I they would no fare idea. seeing what I've seen today. <laughs> it's been an uncountable it's, horrors. It's been a it's been a it's been a trying day. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I'll, I'll go and uh, change, and I'll be right back with my pants. And I I go and I find uh, my alternate sleeping wear and 
you can see I, I show up in a onesie, you know. I'll, sort of, I'll get out my uh, my medicine kit and I'll take out my <laughs> what I would use for a suture. <laughs> and I'll sew up his pants. While she's working on that, I'm I'm um, taking the notes and like scritch that I the like scritch scratch that I put down on the actual piece of paper while I was flying because obviously it would be hard to draw on a piece of mm-hmm. page mm-hmm. parchment in the air like that and I'm like formalizing it and making like as detailed a map as I can just trying to to really really get them the 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 points of interest and the milestones as uh, to the best of my ability even even the distances between those things if I can no. uh, I want to create like a map map Okay. Chris, why did you draw a penis on that? This was supposed to be serious. That's what that looked like, I swear. Uh, oh, that's oh, it's an obelisk. I see. Okay, carry on. I think it was like a guy with big feet, and he just like lost the top half of his torso, and now it's just the two legs coming down, and then like like oh. what do you like, you know what I mean? Yeah, from that vantage point, I see. Uh, but I, I swear to God, that's what that looked like. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> You're the one who who looks at you know and sees a penis. So I, I'm just drawing it as it is. Oh, so you saw his penis too? You saw his penis? No, just the the skin between his butthole and his ballsack. You saw his gooch? Is that not what we're talking about? No, it's see here on the map. Oh, we're talking never about mind. now. Never mind. You remember I'm the just gonna keep stitching. Gooch. <laughs> I should start a brand called Gucci. <laughs> I'll never think of it the same way. Never again. It's been 33 years, and now all of a sudden it's, it's now I just, you made that connection for me. It seems like a fashion brand, you know? Where that area of your pants never tears. It would be called Gucci. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely. Uh, do I have to roll to make an accurate map, or uh, do I produce a? Oh, make an intelligent. Uh, what, what the hell is like is map making? Does uh, anyone know, chat? Cartography. Uh, it could either. It, it could be sleight of hand, hilariously, but uh, performance would be uh, an option in addition to intelligence. Because it's artistic. What about history? Um. Eh. But it could be literally like history. one of five rolls. It's up to you. Whatever you want. Uh, I'll say make a general so uh, intelligence check. And are you an artist? Like a Caprice an artist? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's an artist beyond the fact that he's used brushes for the f- purposes of like lacquering instruments and stuff. Okay, yeah, I would just say just make a straight creative. creative yeah, I would make just a straight intelligence check. Creative and talented. Six. <laughs> it's a rough <laughs> approximation of what's out there. Perfect. <laughs> where are we? It's a masterpiece. <laughs> where where are we? Yeah. <laughs> I give you a minute. <laughs> Everybody knows you start the map with a little star that says you are here. You didn't do that. Now what? <laughs> all right, all right. Well, hold, hold. I can't breathe. Hey, go. Because if this was here, you now just hold. Bear with me. If this. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Here. This is where we were. Are you sure? Yeah. Left of the piece. Very. <laughs> are you actually marking where you think we are on the map? Now that I think that I know where we right. are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Everything else about the map, the map is perfect, but I have no idea where, where we start. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. Uh. So, now we know, maybe, where we are. Where do we want to go? Um, I don't even know. There's so many things that we need to worry about. Well, based on the things that I saw, the city with a giant golden pyramid seems the most likely place for something important to be. That's fair. I didn't... Caprice or someone say that there's a swarm of 
something heading from that direction towards our direction? There's the moving mass, and then there's the small winged creatures. Well, they were small because they were so far off in the distance, but, uh, I mean, they could be fucking huge, who knows, you know? <laughs> but uh, they were, there are those two threats, for sure, we have to think about that. And then there was this uh, smaller city next to the oasis to the south, which I thought was interesting. Um, or we could be right out, and maybe it's the arid canyons we should be heading towards. So the things are coming here? Like, well, it's, I mean, I, I, if I had to estimate it, it would perhaps be days, maybe even weeks, uh, given how high up we, we are. And it was not moving with urgency. It wasn't like, uh, you know, whenever we saw one of the, the armies uh, moving through the mountains and stuff, where they're really, like, marching orders, doing their thing, you know, they, they were just yeah. sort of slinking on the sand. So, well, what do you mean by moving mass? It's really hard to describe it. it was, but it's it was... probably a swarm of something. Huh. That doesn't Locus, make me feel insects, better. scarabs. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that far enough away, a, a group of bodies of then uh, even humanoid shapes might look like a, a group of locusts. But given where we are, that's probably a good call. Right. And it would make sense if Onkatep is here. He would know that a gigantic castle just landed in his domain, and would want to send out sentries of some kind to scout the area. So it is best that we don't. That we don't stay for too long. Oh, uh, Ankatep was big into the is is big into the the necromancy stuff, right? Yes. Well, what about uh, all the the the? Uh, oh, you guys didn't hear, but there are a bunch of shadow Karya underneath us. I don't they, I don't think they're going to be able to find us here, but like there are dozens, maybe hundreds of, of people who got brought along with this castle. All right, so I'll steam in the hallway then. But there's no like water or food, so they might die and then be necromantically charged into a nightmare army. <laughs> So should we not kill the men? <clears throat> I think we should move move on. Yeah, whatever their fate is now that they've been transported to this dreadful domain, I would propose is their fate. I I don't think that we need to intervene in order for them to find they out made what that their ending was like. Exactly right. When they followed Vorok, so if their fate is to be puppeted as an undead minion, then that is their fate. Unless we think we could ally with them and, and, and unite them in, in some sort of common cause and perhaps have an army of our own and become leaders and, and eventually usurp the Ankatep and, and become... We could, we could turn this place into, into I don't know, the, the, the party town of the, the extraplanar reality. We can't partner with them. They're bad. They were bad. Like bad Akai. <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but but they're here now, and they've been betrayed, and they've been doomed by their leader. What if we went down and we're like, hey, what about us, new leader? You know, we could treat you right. And, and uh... but how would we do that? We can't feed them, we can't water them, we can't pay them. Do we want to be in a land like this? With a bunch of bad archai that we are responsible for? No. No, no, I... No, that's... Fuck them. <laughs> I think that we need to get out of here. I don't feel like we should be sitting here in case what you said is true. If well, they're I coming to find us. Right, but I don't think they'll arrive in the next 24 hours. Yeah, but then we're just going to be like... I don't know, how far is from... Where are we again? Well, right so, here. Oh, from there to wherever we want to go. I so mean, I we'll think just be out in the open. We need to decide if we want to head towards the large city with the Golden Pyramid, the canyons, which I think should not even be on the table, or the small city near the oasis. Well, I think that the small city might be a little less conspicuous if we're trying to lay low and, and, and gather some information, but... If we want to find Zern or, or Vorak or any of these important individuals, the, the giant golden pyramid is probably the most likely to, to be fruitful. They have to be going to wherever the most important places on this plane are. And the sooner that we find them, the sooner we'll get answers and the sooner we can stop all of this and save those kids. According to my map, the shortest distance of the two uh, possible cities is the Oasis City. And 
I actually think the opposite is true. I think it'll be harder to hide in a smaller population that might be more intimate with each other than in a big city. But we maybe we could do some intel there, and it gets us out of the path of that moving mass. If we go south, and they're headed towards us, the city, uh, the, the 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 castle, then then we can the pyramid. Oh, the castle. Yeah, the castle. From the pyramid to the castle. From the pyramid to the castle. Yes. Then uh, the oasis makes a good place to at least just get out of their path while also finding out what the hell this place is all about. Maybe. Yes, that sounds pretty smart to me. We sidestep and reevaluate. Thank you. And the oasis sounds pretty nice. I, I, I'm also worried about water. I've just got my scheme. Well, I... I certainly don't want to waste time, and my vote was for the pyramid, but you make up several good points. If we head towards the pyramid, we're going to have to figure <clears throat> out how to hide from, or move through, or go around, or right. the, the mass. We, we don't want to. We don't want to get mixed up in a fight we can't handle right now. We still might have to face some of those flying creatures, or maybe they're friendly and they'll be like, "Hop on the back." And if that, if that's the case, then we'll go straight to the golden pyramid. Because who doesn't want to go see a golden pyramid before? You know, we're killed in this horrible land. Hmm. Um, well, I think regardless, I think we should stay here tonight. Um, because, I mean, we've been through a lot today. And I think it's dangerous to try to leave before we've rested. I agree. I would completely agree. And also, and my pants need repair. And the, the bad archai aren't going to be able to get up here. It was a lot for us to even ride those vultures up here. They're not going to be able to convince them to allow them atop their backs, so I think we're safe. At least for one evening. All right, well. We should get some sleep. I would agree. I, I don't think, given how hot it is, I don't think we even need to make a fire. You know? It's probably not going to drop like 60, 80 degrees overnight like it would in a normal desert. I'm sure that everything will be fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna go to sleep. I just need to rest. I'm uh, and, and recoup my energy. I'll, I can help keep a lookout, and if things do start to get cold or, or, or change, we'll we'll deal with it. I'm just gonna. Pr I need to. I need to look through these books and just try to learn as much as we can about this. Is there a shade? There's there like a shaded part of this. Yeah, room? yeah. You'd be, there's a whole a bunch of it is shaded, and you know there's still some roof, and so the, there's definitely an area where you can pull, definitely sprawl out and enjoy some shade. Oh, uh, wake us up if you need anything, or you know, if there's any trouble. Um, Are you okay, Felix? I don't know. All I know is right now we need to figure out what's going on, and then we'll take things one step at a time like we always do. We can figure this out. I uh, hope. I'll, um, I'll sit next to you and just be like, uh, you know, uh, I, I need to practice and, and explore some creative ideas, and uh, I understand that this, this, this can help. Uh, for the purposes of focusing and energy, so um, you know, if you don't mind, I'll just sit here and 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 sort of play some some beats that you can uh, study and chill to, and uh, that'll hopefully allow you to uh, focus even better on, on your on your book study. No, I, I don't. I don't mind at all. Uh, I will um, run my hand up the neck of my viol, turning it almost into a kalimba, and then uh, sort of like working on a beat like. And I'll literally do uh, lo-fi like it's uh, eight uh, hours of uh, lo-fi Capri speeds. You but can I'll I'll cast on Felix. I'll cast Enhance Ability, <laughs> a second level spell. Fox is cunning. Cunning. The target has advantage on intelligence checks. Yes. Mm, that's nice. It's rock and roll. Um, and I'll get into sort of rest mode too as that as the night goes on. Eventually, I'll find my way to bed. Hey. Thank you for the sub, Thank you for the sub. Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you, Kama. Appreciate it. So, uh, my onesie has a bunch of T-Rexes on it. <laughs> you are uh, able to do that. Um, Felix, what was your, uh, what's your cult roll? It's a 27. 27, okay. My old buddy Toa's help. Um, 27. So, you take the time to read through the notes, and... You 
are starting to get a sense of basically what the prospect was. And you understand that that dozens of children were brought, um, all of them human, and experimented on. And many did not survive the process. Anyone who did not have the raven's blood did not survive. And there is the necessity to have both halves of the raven child, both sides of death, both both halves of that same coin. And you learn that it's through the power that she's gained from Drizlash that she's able to shape flesh. She's able to to basically take the, the take flesh and basically have full mastery over it, uh, especially when she has the time. Um, and you get the sense that there uh, that. It was very critical, however, that both of both halves of the Raven Child would be kept alive. That if they die, the process does not work. And that the all of all of the failed experiments, all of the children who did not make it, or who they just immediately presumed would not make it were either turned undead into her playthings or friends as vampires. She would give them the gift as well. And you, you finally, as you continue reading, you under, you see that there are notes of her having stolen books from, you see that some of these books were actually personal, uh, the, the journals and the work of Escher. And a lot of the alchemy uh, and all of the all of the machinations, um, you actually see that there's some construction uh, and some notes of of, of techniques and um, and uh, artificers' tricks learned from uh, some uh, some tinker named uh, Tom Cogburn and uh, Silas Morgan, as uh, and 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 different constructions that he had learned. And um, basically, the entire, uh, much of the knowledge that he had gained had been stolen and studied by Ravanovia. And you then see the bl blueprints of the different, uh, the gears and the machinery built into the castle with the, the various runes. And uh, basically, the key piece was the, um, the mist talisman. The mist talisman, and then uh, to get to Harakir, and that uh, Vorok had been had been assured that they would uh, procure it in order to get there. Um, and you then learn, I think, with that role, that it's very unclear what this Raven Child does, but it seems to, from whatever Vorok had said, and, it, and it's really just more posturing and more notes, that, that Ravanovia didn't really know for sure, but she had postured as a, um, a mount to ride against the Raven Queen uh. and could shatter the Fortress of Memories. The hell? Cool. Is there anything else you're looking for or interested in, in trying to learn? Um, no, it was it was mostly me uh, wanting to try to absorb all of this research to see if there was any other way to fix it than what the Raven Queen had told me. You know, just learning as much as I possibly can about the scenario, um, you know, 
and and I mean that's some shitload of information. Yeah. <laughs> and so the context. I don't I don't think nothing specific. Yeah, and so I think that you get the sense that she has no interest in ever reversing it. That there's no right. no thought whatsoever, right? Um, but uh, that that basically that the the key component of those that would survive that were it, it had to do with bloodlines, and that it had to be the the blood of the the raven. Got it. Um, and I think that's g- generally what you've what you've learned. Perfect. Um. <laughs> <laughs> With that, uh, Felix does not sleep, but uh, you are able to actually, despite everything that's happened, despite the adrenaline pumping through your veins, the exhaustion and the horrible traumas you've endured and just it, it today uh, overwhelm you and you're able to pass out. Um, and it's... In this moment, Iris, that you have a dream. Let's go. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be really I'm nice sure it's gonna be really good, like relaxing. Candyland drink. style. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everything's made out of fun. <laughs> Grandma Dot will be there. Willy Worm. Darkness <laughs> surrounds you, and you see. A figure up ahead as light starts to wash over you and starts to illuminate a howling sandstorm. Violent, dark, grains of sand so large it should be rending your flesh, but you look down and you do not see your body. You're just a disembodied sensory uh, sense of perception as once again that humming, radiating, pulsing, chaotic energy of silver light rocketing up from strange black pyramid, colossal in its construction, covered in runic hieroglyphics. It's very, it's very far in the distance, but you can see it. You've dreamed of this before. And in the sandstorm, you actually see a figure. The figure, it seems familiar. There's dark fur, uh, golden armor, and uh, regal adornments. And you get closer and you get closer, and you, is that Anubis? Oh, it's feline. It's you. And you're staring up at a massive jackal-headed god as Anubis stands over you, but withered, hollow. The massive musculature and fullness and power that he has withered away, drained, as he, he looks tired. How can a god be tired? And as you stare up defiantly, you then turn away. And as soon as you fully turn your back on him, the flesh withers as is the fur and the skin. And there's nothing left but a jackal skull atop a man's skeleton. But then flesh begins to reform. You see the tendons and the sinew. And the blood vessels begin to reform. And suddenly, skin and fur, an animal headed god, reforms on top of the skeleton in this dark land. But th- there's no jackal. This is a strange creature with malevolent evil eyes that seems to be a, a chimeric amalgamation of, of dog, aardvark, donkey, cobra. Uh, 
it's a strange combination as it stares at you. Filled with the power that had once been your god. But your god no longer. And as the energy and magic that surges with this malevolent, malicious creature looms down on you, it pulses with the same chaotic entropy that pulses from the door of the pyramid and the chain god that is locked away. And then you wake up. You'll enjoy a long rest. Oh, fuck. <gasps> Jesus, Lord Almighty. Religion-wise, what I have recognized that god. Oh, you won't have to roll for it. That was set. Yep. All right. That's what I wrote down in my notebook. <laughs> yep. Uh-oh. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Okay. Means, but it sounds very scary. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. You all wake. Oh. You all wake up and and it's You've slept for an incredible amount of time. You've been on the road getting poor sleep and you you see now that it's morning. You slept through the entire rest of the day, the entire night. You're not sure how long these days are. You're not sure how long you've been asleep. I guess perhaps Velos has been uh, been keeping track. I guess he's been awake. It just feels like a normal day in Avantress as far as timing goes, but you didn't want to wake anyone enjoying a, a, a long rest. And, and you see now is the, the heat definitely reduced didn't get super frigid, but uh, it definitely cooled off in the evening. And now you see the, the golden and, and red and pink rays of sun as they uh, cast this glow over the dunes. Um, as uh, it you dawn? all- uh, it's, it's a little bit past dawn. I would say it's shortly after dawn. The sun is now fully uh, above the horizon. It's looking absolutely just massive, just casting its the the glow of morning. But it's that same desert red uh, of this of this strange place, and far larger than the sun of Avantras. What time is it? I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, I the so set. Would I make the connection that obviously Set and Ankhotep are completely separate entities, or are they linked in some way? Or am I making the con- would I be making the connection that Set is related to the Chained God? Like, I guess. Why don't you make a religion check at advantage for me? I'm just trying to figure out what Iris would be thinking about this. And thinking for the fall of Think for the fall. Is it Sully the Grass type? That's so cute. Oh, that is very cute. Soul Robin also resubscribed. 25. For, oh, 25. Oh, thank, thank you, Soul Robin. I thank you, Soul Robin. Where does the time thing. go? I would say that you've seen Ankhotep. He's communicated with you. Whatever this is, I mean, it's all seemingly Nekbeshin. Yeah. Right? It's, it's all of the same general vibe, right? But um, I would say that the the Anubis had withered away. And in that wither away, on that same frame regrew the uh, the god in your in, in your pantheon, the, the evil god of, of destruction and chaos and entropy. Oh boy. Radiates with the same kind of power and energy as the Thars do in the chain god. Mm-hmm. As oh, if they're boy. as if uh, set is 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 in play in yeah. this Dark world somehow, okay. um, and That's it's related I'm to Anubis's power withering away, and he's they're... basically trying to kill Anubis so he can take his body. Is how or Iris Anubis. would see it. I think that is a very reasonable. I think that's a very reasonable. At the very least, whether it's body, power, whatever it is, basically tapping and he killing Anubis in order to yeah. then for 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 Set to to emerge in this in this way. Yeah. Oh boy, I think that's very reasonable. All right. Um, did you learn anything, Felix? Yeah, actually, quite a lot. Uh, I'll answer Lofi's question. It's, it's time seems to move here roughly the same way that it does in Avantress. Uh, you know, the days are days, and we have nights, and so that's a good thing. You know, uh, things were relatively quiet while everybody slept. I, I read through all these notes, and it's it's all Escher's. All of that. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it took a little while, but yeah, no problem. It's, How it's, long were we out? Uh, well, given, uh, you know, uh, probably more than 12 hours. Uh, more than 8 for sure, but, you know, it was probably late evening by the time we you all settled in and, you know, got a, I didn't want to wake anybody. It looked like we needed it, you know? Everybody was pretty tired. Um, well, anyway, a lot of these notes uh, are actually from Mesher. It looks like Ravinovia stole a lot of it and, and, and was going through it and, and, and marking over top of it, and, and quite frankly, I've never seen anything used so evil and dark. This is some of the most evil magic I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it, it's all the kids that they were taking and experimenting on. If they, if they didn't survive, they just were turned undead, and it's it's a mess, and uh, just it's really bad. It, it, clearly, it had something to do with bloodlines, the raven child, and, and, and there needed to be two halves and, and whatnot, but... Their survival was key, so and that's why uh, we were able to deduce. Iris was able to deduce that they were still alive; they weren't undead. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's good. It, it is good. Uh, it seemed that Vorak and Ravenovia herself didn't even really know what the Raven Child was for. I mean, there's all sorts of of scribbles and, and guesses in here of what she thought she was doing, uh, building some sort of a mount. Uh, to ride against the Raven Queen, and it says something about shattering a fortress of memory. Uh, that's a quote. I, I don't know what that means. But if, if she's right, if, if the, the Raven Child was some sort of a mount that was created to, to ride against the Raven Queen, then it would make sense that the Raven Queen would tell us that we needed to separate them. Uh, certainly, she wouldn't want to be uh, ridden against uh, at all. She would want to protect herself and her domain and her power. Uh, the only other thing that I seem to learn is that this place is called Harakir, and, and there was some sort of a mist talisman was what that they needed to get here, uh, to get the castle here. And King Vorak was very confident that they'd find the mist talisman, whatever that might be, too. Did we, we never saw any evidence of a mist talisman outside of... Um, I would say that you had said that Alessandro basically said that they could use Iris to get to Harakir. Oh, okay. That, that's that, right. That, that you guys could use Iris to get to Harakir if that if that was the case. Okay. Because she was sort of. Because she basically had a piece of a piece of yeah, yeah basically. Um, well, I guess then, then Iris was the mist talisman that he found, and and her, you know, sitting on that throne maybe activated it, and that's why we teleported here. It's certainly possible. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. I... What concerns me is that if Iris is right and she no longer has that within her, then we gotta find a new way home. Hey, but don't worry. Uh, <laughs> That's a problem for later us. We have other stuff to focus well, on. Right, and, and all the planes that we've been to have had different ways of getting home, and including <clears throat> that uh, wild machine that, that they had built in, in, in the treetops uh, when we first oh, went yeah. to the, the oh, plane yeah. of air. It, it, we, I'll worry about that, but... It, it, at the end of the day, the, the notes were very explicit that they had absolutely no intention of reversing whatever they did to, to Milo and Veleska. So we're going to have to figure that out, uh, whether it means doing what the Raven Queen told us or, or finding a different way. But I don't know. I, I think I've absorbed just about everything I can in these books. Well, you did a good job. Yeah, we should... Then, then we can go and we have that information and, and I'm not concerned about going home. There's a lot we need to do here and I want to get all of it done uh, before we even think about trying to return. Right, I, I just don't want to be stuck here. And I'm sure we won't. That'd be nice. Yes, we'll that'd we'll be figure nice. out a way at some point. We, we, we will, we, we just want to make sure we have an escape is all. Uh, as far as where we head next, it's my understanding that we're all voting for the Oasis. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what sounded best to me. I I don't know where that cloud of stuff is now. We'll be... It's closer. We'll need to be vigilant. You know, we've got uh, uh, sandstorms, uh, a, a big sandy tornado type operation, I flying like creatures, uh, mm. uh, whatever the Shadar Kai who have been, you know, uh, came along with us in the castle probably are starting to wander out into the dunes at some point, certainly. <laughs> Um, we have to avoid maybe the temples and obelisks if uh, any of them are nefarious or evil or cursed in nature. Uh, and then we have to make it to the oasis with what few provisions we have. Are we going to be able to walk there? Did I get a sense that it was walkable? I mean, it's Dooney, right? Uh, it'd be, like it, how long it's very far. And so, I mean, yeah, it would be 
it would take a very long time to walk there. You get the sense. Yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah. And, and you're not sure, like, how traversable. You didn't see, like, any people or roads or anything. Well, I, I suppose we could start starting. I mean, the, a journey of a million miles or whatever. One step. That seems like a lot of work. We've walked a lot before. Yeah, but have you ever walked in sand? It's it, like twice yes. as hard. Well, have you oh, seen you these, have. Have you seen these caves? I, I, mean, I have, I, I, yeah. I, I'll be fine. I mean, I'm used to it. I've done it my Felix, have life. you ever walked in sand? I, I was playing to the wrong audience. <laughs> I, I didn't... I mean, Don't worry about me. I'll, I'll walk wherever we have to walk. That's not a question. I wish we had like a, like a desert boat. You have a boat, don't you? Yeah, I, I do have my, my boat, yes. What but it, it's like? it's for, for, for water, I well, mean. What if we just put sand as kind of like water? What if we just put it on the sand and see if that works? Let's try it, and we'll <laughs> see how that goes. Is there any wind? Oh, you're 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 asking me. <laughs> well, you're relatively weather protected. man of the. You're, really, of the you're world. relatively protected from the elements in here. Uh, it does seem to be actually quite quite windy, especially this high up. Um, you do get that sense, yeah. I can teleport once a day, but oh, <laughs> I haven't seen it. It's only been described to me. I don't well, know where go we're going. Caprice's map. That it's own. not the same as me seeing it or being there or having visited it. Anything could happen. If he looks out the window, is are we is the open to the direction in which we would be traveling? Um, you he would need to like get up and climb and like hey. and, or fly up and to get a, get a to, sense. You have to understand this magic is unpredictable and it doesn't necessarily mean that we'd end up where we're aiming for. I could fly you up there. Uh, I, I, I just I, I wanted to lay it out there as an option because we have it, but I, I think it's it's an emergency kind of a thing. We and should try the boat thing. If did did Caprice have an estimate of how long the walking would take? I mean, we're talking weeks. I, I think days. It, I would say it would probably take uh, probably a couple days. I mean, you can basically see how very far from this high up. Uh, obviously, there's no curvature of the Earth or of of the globe mm -hmm. in this situation, mm -hmm. so you're able to see much farther. Uh, than you normally would. And so it's very difficult to gauge, especially with how far everything off. Like, there does seem to be a lot of shimmering mirages and and it's difficult to get that sense. I mean, several days isn't, isn't too bad, I think. We've done it before. I guess what I'd be worried about is cover at night. You know, we're not gonna freeze, but our exposure to the elements might be bad. I would propose we get started in that direction, and uh, if we're getting tired or the end of the day is happening, then we find, we, 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 we pick a point where, a, a threshold where we need to find shelter, and that looks like perhaps one of the many obelisks, or, or if there's a ziggurat or something. All right. Or uh, a temple to a god. Are there any objections? Oh, you've got the thing. Yes. I forget. She's you got the always thing. have a place to rest. Oh, that's perfect. I was going to say, because I knew a guy once. Saw an obelisk, went up to it, lost unknown amounts of time. Really? Not worth messing around with. No? All time? Time. Gone. That sounds scary. Like that. All right? Well, it's not my favorite seasoning, so I guess it's not horrible, but... <laughs> At least it wasn't the Tony Sachery. Oh, time. I got it. I always pronounced it Thyme. Oh, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Yeah, you're right. You're right out. <laughs> Rosemary and Thyme. Um, it's at this point where you then hear the loud, um, or not loud, but it feels very distant what sounds like repetitive drumming and the uh, blowing of a, lo a lo horn off in the distance. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I'll run up to the edge of the destroyed tower face where we can see out and, and, and try to see if there's any activity in the immediate vicinity on the sand yeah. or on the dunes. Yeah, uh, I'll say you run and you're able to climb up and look out uh, towards the, uh, the south uh, east. 
and you see an army approaching. Oh, is this the mass? This is the mass. And you see high above, um, you see high above uh, winged creatures flying around, and you see now that there is an army that's marching, and you're able to see that they're they're all adorned in this uh, golden and and, and blue armor that uh, is surprisingly well kept, given the fact that they're adorning skeletons, mummies creatures of undeath. Amidst them, you see these large serpentine, uh, skeletal cobra-like creatures with, uh, uh, that are ha- part humanoid. You see these massive, looks like giant uh, animal-headed um, uh, animal-headed uh, uh, creatures uh, amidst this army. Uh, uh, huge scorpions. Um, uh, massive uh, vultures. And you'd seen the, the vultures from um, <coughs> from the from Scathrinil, but these are huge. They are skeletal and on wing on on wings with holes in them, uh, rotting away. Somehow they're managing to fly as an army of of the undead marches uh, and is approaching Castle Gloomvale, seemingly. Uh, uh, moving relatively slowly, you see that chariots hold, pulled by skeletal horses, um, and a number of banners, uh, all all held up. And you see that same uh, that same symbol uh, that 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 you recall um, adorning the uh, the scarabs, as it seems to be the uh, the the colors of and the heraldry of um, Ankhetep. Sick. Well. Shit. What is it? Yeah, you remember that mass I told you about? The moving one that Iris and I saw when we were flying up yesterday? Yeah. What's so funny? <laughs> Wait. It, well, well, it's here now. <laughs> the mass has arrived. It's an undead army oh, of scorpions no. and chariots and uh, 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 skeletal beasts that can fly and uh, armor-clad skeletons. Did I say skeletons already? Yeah, you said that. You said that. I get the gist. An what army. are we going to do? An How army? far? Well, time for us to go. I'm going to start closing up the books and sliding them into my backpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How close are they, Caprice? Uh, they look like they're about this far away. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Insert I would say they they it. seem to be probably <laughs> less than an hour away Holy to arrive shit. as you see that they are very, they're they're approaching uh quickly they don't seem to be like uh, waging war they don't seem to be like going to attack but they're just marching very deliberately um as this uh, army of the dead um and it's not a massive army. It seems to be. Um, it seems to be a uh, battalion. A battalion. Yeah, I would say that it's, it's a battalion. It's not rows and rows and rows. Just a single unit. Oh, okay. It's a single unit uh, that is that is moving towards uh, moving towards you. Well, they're they're here for either the castle or the folks or both. I mean, well, I don't want to wait here and find out. I think we should go. We should definitely get out of here. Maybe we try the the, the, the boat thing, and we'll all ride on my boat. Are they going to see us leave? I don't know. I mean, we should probably hurry, though. Well, let's go. Well, at the very least, we're not going to leave the direction they're coming from, right? If we're going to try to set this up and get this going, uh, we, we should at least do it out of line of sight of them. All right, how do yeah. we get down? Well, I can... I looked at Caprice. I could. <laughs> If I slow fall, can I carry some of the things? That's a great question. That's a good question. If you could physically hold the person. Yeah, I think if it's within your, like, carrying capacity. But, like, you couldn't yeah. carry Toa, right? Like, there's no way. Thanks. <laughs> I was going to crack the boats up. <laughs> I, do, I do not have any skills to assist with this problem. Oh boy. Um I think that we just have to figure out a way down and figure out how to fucking get around or outside of this thing, maybe steal, and hope that we can be two ships passing in the night. Do we uh do we have to leave like the direction that we wanted to go, is that the direction that the army is currently coming from? Uh so my understanding of the truth, and Mikey can correct me if I'm wrong, 
is that let's say this is the center of the domain this is where the castle is this is where the oasis is and this is where the um golden pyramid is so we right? could in theory so uh, center like this okay. this is this is castle gloomvale like so okay. and then down here it's oasis town right. with whatever that looks like um so there is an oasis to the south and that's closer but the the city is towards the north oasis that's considerably farther the golden pyramid city so here so let me so i must have misunderstood so here so basically all, all turns kind of, out you're terrible uh, so basically here's castle bloomvale right that yeah. was that was right and so like, let's just say it's like a general yeah, sure. Hold on, let, me, let me turn this on right and so basically yeah. here's an oasis here's an oasis Here's the city of the dead, right? Here's a skull. I got that. Can, that... can you sort of restart just so that the folks at oh, home can see? Yeah, it, so right? basically here's the center of like in the rough center, right? This sandstorm and mist all around here, right? Castle Gloomvale's re- roughly over here. The There's like a, a, an oasis with like a city of like that seems to actually be an actual like relatively normal looking city around here. And there's, you know, a river that goes kind of here, connects this oasis, goes down here, oh. goes up this way. And that, that's, it's totally dry, but basically it, there would have been a river potentially. There's no city down here? No. It's no, that there. looks, that looks nasty. <laughs> yeah. You uh, like an eight, and then, you six, know, whatever you roll. mountains basically all up here. So is the canyon the, land up here. Is the top. skull the golden pyramid? Yes. Yep. Yep. And then this is, and so it's coming from that direction. And it's, there's also, to my understanding, there's a canyon, like super yeah, kind far of a, out, yeah, a little like bit over here, there, right? And or a little bit further. And then there's yeah, mat. And then there's like an absolute massive sandstorm, like right up here, like okay, in this direction. Let's, let's yeah. get some sandstorm action yeah. going on right here. Okay. Okay. So that all being said, I thought that I was leading. And guiding everyone south, but in but reality, we can slip out the back here. in reality, this dotted line is yeah. the path that the army has taken, and they're beating on our door now. Yep. Right. So we and could so we could, slip we out could the just back fucking go north and try to. Yeah. So how far up in the air are we compared to like getting down to the desert sand? Um, your uh, I would say many stories. Um, but uh, you know, it's not. It's not complete. It's you're basically in a massive castle. It's a sand. very tall, we can just jump down. A very tall tower. Right, so, I mean, uh, we could probably just climb down, use the stones, maybe use a rope. Why don't I go down first, and I'll see if I can, you know, point out a good path for you all. Be careful uh, of the shad archive, the bad archive. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out. Okay. Maybe they're all dead by now, who knows? <laughs> I'll go and Kendry. I'm going to um, just use my walking, my vertical walking ability, or I forget what it's called. Exactly. Yeah, 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 Run down wall. Yeah, you can run <laughs> down, I'm going to use run down wall to run down wall. Okay. Um, but as I'm going, I'm going to be looking for um, sort of like the path where I think that it would be easier for them to climb down and like, you know, if there's a little kind of jut out stone or maybe like a little anchor point of something, like different points and, and yeah. guide them down as yeah. they climb. Okay. Um, I would say for that, I need everyone to do make an acrobatics or athletics check to see how you do scaling down this castle. I'm gonna cast feather fall on myself. Okay. Or you just jump. And I would say it would normally be disadvantage. Just roll it straight, actually, because I'm a cat and I have a climbing. Oh, speed. you have climbing speed for you're fine. You're able to just ascend. Uh, you said acrobats or athletics. Yeah. Just roll it straight. I'm a cat. Everyone rolls it straight. I'm just gonna float down. Okay. Uh, provided I, if I have so to. So just it. Toa and Caprice have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Sixteen. Twelve. Sixteen. Uh, <laughs> tw- <laughs> I'm also ready to cast Featherfall again. If uh, I need to. <laughs> it's a reaction. So, uh, yeah. with Toa, you have a couple of close calls, but you know, you, th- this the way that this is crumbled has left a lot of footholds. And um, as you're scaling down, uh, you manage to make your way, and you're fortunately for you, you're on the opposite uh, side of the castle from where this army of the undead is coming to march up to Castle Gloomvale. Um, a Caprice, as you're scaling down, mm-hmm. you are trying to be as dexterous as you can, but you uh, make one wrong move, and and actually want the the stone actually crumbles out of your grip, and you begin to fall. Okay, uh, as I am beginning to fall, I'll be like, oh no, I'm gonna die, oh fuck! 
I cast levitate on myself. (laughs) (laughs) Oh! (laughs) Never mind. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I was fucking around. Did you do that the whole time? (laughs) Yeah. Oh. I mean, it sucks that I had to do it. I was really hoping that I could rock it out like toe over here, but you know. Yeah. You know, that's how how we learn. Good try. You eventually all manage, and you see this massive, uh, you know, from a meta term, this gothic castle of these strange angles and strange construction uh, looks so completely out of place in this bright desert. And you manage to make your way down to the dunes as uh, you actually see a number of vultures start to take off from the castle. Uh, but they're actually flying towards the army of the undead as it begins to march, make its way towards Castle Gloomfale. And you are able to just start sprinting away across the desert. Obviously, it's a small, or rather, it's a massive expanse of dunes. And uh, walking in this area, your feet sink in more than you'd expect, and it is hard going. Uh, But you all hustle as a group, having uh, descended safely from this castle, uh, and begin to to make your way across the hot sands. Do we want to try the boat? We can try it. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, so I'll, I'll pull my uh, my wooden box out that has the little all my little figurines, and I will take out a small, you know, my little sailing uh, boat, and I'll place it on the ground on, on the sand, and I'll back up and I'll say, "Ray, Ray," and it's going to expand into a full sized. What do you say, Ray, Ray? Is the man? I think it was. I, I couldn't remember exactly because mm-hmm. I didn't write it down. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's good it expands uh, to the full size, and um, oh, it's a shower, not a grower. Uh, or is it grower? All right, shower. and so it'll be a sail, and there's a platform, and it's not crazy big, but right, and there's the two sort of canoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that are, that are attaching to it with the with the mast, and I'll say, okay, everybody, get on. I'll hop on. <laughs> and so I, I don't know. I'll probably just sink into the sand. Uh, but I'm gonna like, you know, grab grab a rope and I'm gonna like move the sail so that it could, you know, potentially catch wind and just see what happens. Okay. <laughs> the boat goes nowhere. So Move what? It, what is a um, a water vehicle's check? Uh, what kind of check is that? It 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 depends. I'm proficient in it, so I'd add my proficiency. But you could add deck strength. You could add any of the stats to it, right? So, like, if it's something that would require wisdom in a boat, I would add, like, my wisdom modifier and then my proficiency. So that's how you can do it. You can have any kind of check. Got it, got it, got related it. Related to it. Um, um, as the... As you, uh, the boat suddenly appears. And I don't know if anyone besides Felix has ever seen this boat. Have you ever pulled that out? Uh, once before. Really? Yeah. Once before, yeah, yeah maybe. Did it, I recognized uh, it one time long ago. It was for a, uh... There was some reason I did it. There's water, remember? I, was it during was I do, it sailing race? I do, because I knew you had a boat. Sailing right? race? No, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's In right. Dreams. That's right. So, oh, so only Felix has seen it then. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is everyone else? Yeah, no. Yeah. Else oh, what the holy jeez! Wow! <laughs> Suddenly, a, a large sailing uh, boat uh, appears. Not some massive ship. It seems to be very much of the uh, the Makani Islands construction. Um, but you're all able to get on, and you are. It's been a long time since you've done this, and so I would like you to roll a. I think this would be a wisdom check. I think, like, how are you going to utilize the wind and this? Uh, and add your proficiency, please. It's like a sandstorm. Oh. oh, that's pretty good. Um, See, that's pretty good. Uh, that is a twenty-five. Nice. Oh, okay. Um, as you uh, you met you you pull on all the ropes, you get the sail in the right direction, and. Um, you actually feel the wind uh, as, as the wind is, 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 is so strong that it's actually kind of uh, uh, lifting some of the sand. It doesn't hurt, but it's very clearly uh, windy wind blasting across the, these dunes. Uh, you actually feel that you and see and hear the wind, the sails fill, and you manage to pull and you start to move a little bit oh. as you start to go. And you get the sense, though, that if you really want to... So that you you need more wind than is available here. To, it's meant to go on water, not in sand. But it actually is a relatively smooth uh, dunes that that mimics that a little bit. Wow, yeah. I I didn't think that was gonna work. So you're just kind of oh. moving at like a very hey. slow clip. This kind of works. I can't believe it. Um, Did you always have the ability to create a boat out of the small totem? 
Well, yeah, how, how do you think I got here? I had to sail here. Duh. Yeah, but you've never used this before? What do you have to do to make the totem turn into a boat? It seemed very easy. Well, I mean, it's a little boat, and then it grows into a big boat, and then it shrinks back down when I need it to. Yeah, but, like, if you're fighting a guy, couldn't you put a boat, this, like, boat totem in his mouth, and then just, like, hit the go button and call it a fucking day? Oh, no, it would break. I would never risk that. <laughs> this is very, this is very precious to me. This is the boat that he saved my life on when we first met. Oh. Now I know. Yeah, this is this is how I got here. So, well, this is nice. I know we're running from a skeletal army, but if um, I were to walk next to them on the boat, yeah, would I move faster? Yeah, uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> You're like <laughs> coasting <laughs> along, and you get the sense that if you were able to get like a large gust of wind to go in, very similar to the uh, the sandbenders in uh, in Avatar: The Last Airbender, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Aang airbending right. into the the sail, you think exactly that you could probably sure. uh, go at a pretty good clip. <clears throat> Tua. Do you have ropes that we could attach to a giant scarab that could, for ten minutes, drag us along and hopefully get us some momentum? Something like that? I mean, I have plenty of rope. Great, and I'm going to use my staff of the swarming scarab to create a giant scarab. Okay. That's going to fly, and I'd like to attach, with Toa's help, attach the rope to it oh. and have it drag the boat along for 10 minutes. Okay. Hopefully, giving it some some momentum during that time we can try and figure out. I would out say it. one of you can make an animal handling check at advantage because it's a magical creature. Yeah. To well, see, to see how well, to see how well you're able to hitch this guy up. But I'll help. Natural 20. Oh, oh my god. Gotta give it up. Yeah. Gotta give it up. So you are able to, this scarab immediately appears, and it, and it actually looks very much at home. Uh, and you oh, manage hey. to uh, to fasten it and tie it around in a point where um, I'll say with a natural 20 that you have the feeling this scarab is so comfortable here, you'll stay for an hour instead of 10 minutes. Oh, uh, nice and scarab. Nice mic. And, nice mic. <laughs> and as soon as you you get back on the boat, um, with a little bit of help from the wind, and you're still able to to to, to aim. What's it? Trim the sails. Uh, to trim the sails into the wind. Uh, that uh, with the the help of the scare of these huge wings, it blasts off and flies probably about uh, 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 five feet off of the ground and pulls as you manage to actually start going at a pretty decent clip as this scare pulls you. And you're in this little uh, little relative valley in this dune with really just these dunes rising up all above you with Castle Gloomvale. And um, uh, and as you're being pulled away, you hear a booming voice call out from behind you. Oh boy. As it sounds incredibly dry and raspy and rattly. Uh, as, um, as it says, uh, it calls out and, and says, On the behalf of Pharaoh Ankatep, we welcome you to Harakir. Your king is awaiting in comfort and safety at the City of the Dead. We have provided transport for anyone who wishes to join us. You will enjoy your time here. We will protect you. You will join us. And uh, and there is a bit of a hesitation there. Uh, and you, you, uh, and, and it's, you get the sense as you kind of hear a voice calling off as if there is some Shadar Kai speaking to whatever this booming, uh, this booming magically amplified voice uh, of, of some undead. Uh, and it says, uh, but we will provide you with everything you require if you promise to assist in the search for the final fragment of our Pharaoh's car. And uh, there's a bit of uh, there's a, a, a bit of hesitation, and then says, "We will search the castle. 
And suddenly you hear the, the movements of the troops as they begin to approach Castle Gloomvale as you as the scarab pulls you away. Well shit. Um are we out of sight? Like, they just look to the left and see us. Like, so long! Like, very fortunately, so I will say that you are, you think that you can basically stay behind Castle Gloomvale and, uh, and, and basically, you, you see that there are divots and the Dudes. elevation is a little bit more, like, rocky in certain areas right. where you'd be able to, to eventually Dunk. get out of the eyesight dunks. of that. Good old dunks. There are dunks dotting the land. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. They're gonna save all the elves. I don't know if save's the word I'd use. They're gonna... Use them as labor, sort of, it sounds like. Well, they'll probably kill them and rise them as undead, like Caprice had mentioned previously. I was gonna say on board, but that's really what that looks like, yes. (laughs) Um, well, on the way, we should really go as far as we can. Well, and at least now we know for sure where Ankatep is. Are we sure that this final fragment thing that was mentioned isn't in the castle and that we're walking away from some artifact that would prevent the pharaoh from achieving his true power? No, I think they mean Iris. I, yeah. I was going to ask who <laughs> wanted to tell him. <laughs> oh. Remember, Capri, there are no dumb questions. But I, Just I thought you ones. felt like it was oh. gone from you. Yes, well, apparently I was wrong. Oh, jeez. Just that the pool is no longer there, I guess. Because you're already here, so now he can use brute force in an army of I thought maybe he had already claimed the the soul fragment, but no. Well, I might have to die for him to get it. Well, I mean... We're not going to let that happen. Of course not. And the good news is, if he knew exactly where it was, he'd know where you were. Exactly right, you can't sense it. searching for it, so they're not being able to sense it, which means as long as we lay low and we don't ever lose Iris, then we're going to be okay. Or, I'm going to wander off on my own for a while. I have a lot to think about. Well, you were, were, oh. we were just No, around. that was a joke. Oh. I didn't deliver it very well, did I? Uh, you well, know, because Felix just said, as long as we don't lose Iris. And then I said, oh, well, I'm going to go solemnly because that's something I would do, you right, know, right. walk off on my own and think. And But I guess because it's something I would do, it's not funny because you would expect it to actually... Never mind, I'm sorry. The most important thing to know about telling jokes is timing. What about it? Oh, I fucked that up. (laughs) (laughs) Look, Uh. here's here's what I'll say. Iris, if, if, if you just let us kill you, then we don't have to worry about the pharaoh ever achieving his true purpose. You know? Well, unless the, the, the unless the, the fragment goes right to him. Yeah, what if he Oh, she's holding it back she like a be, vessel. She could be keeping it contained. Yeah. And of course we're not going to kill her. That was a really crude joke. I can't believe you would suggest that. Well, the most think... important thing about joke is timing. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the scarab's doing work. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. Am, I'm blown away that this is working right now. I'll be completely <laughs> frank. Yeah, I'm being know, honest. I know my name Me is Caprice, but I'll be completely frank. And we all lurch forward as he just like just, just, just yeah. I, we just <laughs> yeah. 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 dune just you fucking pass and you see the top of, of of an obelisk poking out of the dunes, and you see that there's Dunks. crumbling uh, there's crumbling uh, stones and that's buried as you uh, make your way around, and uh, you see as you a uh, crest on the top of of a dune, you see now far ahead that uh, snaking dried <laughs> out a. Uh, huge riverbed that seems to go all the way through the entire domain. Um, which way are you heading? Are you heading directly there? What are you, how are you, how are you doing? And we'll say that basically once you get there, you get the top of this dude and suddenly you all lurch forward as the scarab poofs out of existence. Oh, oh. Well, um, I guess we just keep going away from the army and then we can figure out where we take our next step. I think I think we have two choices. We have we have the harder path of just going across the dunes to this oasis or we cross over to that dried up riverbed and we use it like a road. That's not a bad idea. Could be more dangerous because I imagine other creatures like ourselves would have the same idea, but it's worth is, a shot. Is, does the riverbed go to the 
Right to the oasis, yeah. It looks, it looks, it looks like the oases that you could see are connected, would have originally been connected by a, a very large river. But now they're subterranean rivers. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then should I steer for the riverbed? Are we able to progress further on this boat, or are we going to have to walk? Well, we're at the top. We can at least slide down. How long does it look like it would take to get to the riverbed? Well, I could, uh, if, I could... if there was another scarab. Well, we could try this, and I pull out my conch shell that I haven't used for about <laughs> three, three Earth years. Um, this might at least get us somewhere, and I'll, I'll blow on it, and you'll hear this, like, just this gushing of wind, and from it, uh, <laughs> wind will explode from the conch shell in the direction that I, that I, that I blow. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to use it to angle the sails like I've done in the past, yeah, right? Yeah. So I have one hand on the rope with the sail, and then I'll basically, for one minute, uh, oh. it'll blow in. And so, <laughs> How many times can you do that? As many as you need? Uh, or is it like once a day? It's not once a day. <laughs> Every minute we're just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is that noise? Hold on. So, I mean, move! <laughs> uh, so I can use it again, but then if I use it again, it has a 20% chance of not working. No, no, you it. Exploding into blood. <laughs> exploding into conch, blood. Conch, 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 conch. Are we going to try it again? Roll the dice. No. Just one. Roll the dice, Bella. Roll the dice. You lose a shell in my eye. <laughs> Can I? I will. I'm gonna go <gasps> and try to use my unending breath. <laughs> Ooh, unending breath. How does that work? I have unending breath. Are you able to cast gust of wind? No. <laughs> Probably. Almost, almost certainly not. Not magically. Well, that, that's what I'm basically that. casting with my conch no, shell. Yeah. It only lasts a minute. <laughs> Um, I almost took whirlwind of the seventh level spell. <laughs> <laughs> that would do the work. Unending breath is oh, I always do this wrong. I can hold my breath indefinitely. Okay, you hold your oh, breath. The opposite. As, <laughs> as you as you manage to uh, make your way. So which way? Which direction are you going? Are you going basically towards the river or towards the? I think we were gonna ride the dune down towards the river. Yeah, okay, I so, think we yeah, decided yeah. that the river is the way to go. Um, and if we need another hour to get there, then Caprice will generously okay. gift some magic. <laughs> um, I can also do another scarab. Oh, you can. Yeah. How much to? It takes four charges of my staff to make a scarab, okay, and that's I literally cheaper never than, use my staff. Than it would cost me, probably. So, so I'll say with the conch, with another scarab. I will scarab. We'll say use another scarab. We gotta name him. Um, you are able to uh, scarab, uh, make your him. way, and you are riding down. <laughs> and um, I need it was Iris. Like a scrump. I need you make. I need so you make a, a perception, perception check for me, please. Good job, Which scrump. One of us? <laughs> Iris scrump. is making the perception, oh, perception check. <laughs> <laughs> I don't perceive shit. <laughs> or whatever we were no, calling. No, it's your bonus. Uh, well, it's, it's, not gonna be, it's not going to help. It's not going to be good enough. Why are you rolling nothing but threes, twos, and ones? <laughs> and twenties. Twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Well, this is bad. Um, I guess it's higher than a ten. Yeah. Uh, I'll say that, so as you ride down, you start to see the, this this place as, as you look around, you're starting to see life. Uh, you starting to see uh, scrumpies in the area. So, whatever so, whatever we were calling Clegg's uh, Scarl, yeah. we call it like Scrump, Scump, whatever scump, we call them. Scarab. Scump, Scump, Scump. Uh, you're able scump. to see uh, you're able to see life in this, in this area. You see uh, what uh. looks like these uh, strange uh, reptilian creatures uh, that, that slither back and forth with uh, with four legs, but they almost look snake-like. Uh, you see that as you walk past, you see what looks like, oh, is that another band of travelers? But you just see it's it's just like three skeletons walking along the dune, just wandering. Uh, you see winged creatures flying overhead, and, and you actually see that uh, similar to the winged creatures that you had seen to the north, as you make your way down the river, you see that there's a statue that seems to be split in two. Um, that seems to ha be looks like a creature sitting on its, uh, uh, basically sitting down, uh, some sort of animal. But the statue is split, and there's two um, there's two winged creatures 
uh, circling, but with that roll, you're not able to make out what they are. But they seem to be circling it, that's, uh, that you seem to be passing, uh, that would have once perhaps looked over a river. And that's what you see. Oh, really? Yeah? As we're cruising down this uh, riverbed. Are we at the riverbed already? Or are we? We were oh. cruising down I'll the say you're, you arrive at the riverbed okay. after a while. You know, I'm, I'm time is as relevant to the story. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm getting kind of concerned that if we do get to this town and it is a, a group of peoples that mm-hmm. might be here, uh, I, I can't imagine that there's any living creatures that could survive here. Yeah. What if we don't encounter anybody who's actually not undead? We are going to stick out like a sore thumb with all this flesh. Hmm. Would you consider- like to die? No. Well, Absolutely then I don't not. think we have another option. No, no, no. I'm not suggesting we we do anything else. I'm just I'm just surmising. I'm wondering. Well, if uh, that's true, though. If we run into nothing but undeath, then our first job will be to lie <laughs> and to tell them that we're just fresh <laughs> and that we just happen to have recently died. And that the, the sand and winds have not yet stripped our flesh of its fleshy uh, 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 exterior. Fleshy flesh. Of the fleshy our flesh. Fleshy flesh. No. I, may, I may also. Oh, sorry, hey, Mel. Thank you so much for the sun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank miss you your face. Yes. Apples so and bananas. Tell them like we said, ha ha. Hello. Yeah. And. Sorry, Derek. Keep going. I will have to do a little R&D to see if I can illusorily create us as undead people. Let me just... I think what I was... Is anyone else concerned about the shambling skeletons all over the place? (laughs) Well, that's what made me think of it, Toa. That's exactly my my point. Yeah, there's a lot more... I don't want to say people, but there's things about. I was kind of picturing this to just be a desert, like empty. What are they doing out here? I'm very concerned about the well. skeletons. We wouldn't even be able to escape them if we went into an anti-magic uh, bubble for some reason, according to <laughs> sage advice. It's fucking horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe they're not magically undead. Maybe they're just sort of undead, undead. Undead. I don't know. You can't take a normal skeleton and have it walk around in that manner. There's something magical about that, right? I don't know, maybe in the rules of just the world of Dungeons and Dragons, it just doesn't quite work that way. So, oh, what, the so fuck what you're saying about? is that there's room for magical but not quite magical effects, is what you're saying. Maybe when you turn undead, your inner skeleton becomes your exoskeleton, so all your muscles and stuff just zoops to the inside, but it's all still there. Isn't, because your, your brain is inside your skull, right? Isn't it outer skeleton? Well, no, you because... the hole in my theory. <laughs> <laughs> There's alcohol in my theory. <laughs> she just poked a hole in her teeth. Oh, no. I thought she said there's also alcohol, alcohol in my theory. There's also alcohol. <laughs> there's also alcohol. It's really hot out here, and I've been hitting the wine a little bit more than I should be. <laughs> Um, well, maybe as long as we stay out of their aggro radius, they won't pay any attention to us. I'm only level 59! <laughs> I was thinking that maybe I could, like, roll in honey and then roll in sand and just show up like a sand <coughs> monster. I'm, 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 I'm with Iris. I don't think this is something we need to actively worry about. I just was thinking out loud. But that does pose another problem. If we're the only living things that enter this city and Onkatep has announced this reclamation for part of his soul Mm -hmm. we might be fucked yes we don't we won't know until we get there maybe we're going to the oasis of 20 to 30 percent dead and in worst case scenario if it comes to blows this won't be the first group of undead things that we dispatch once and for all. Well, and and you're very true. good with undead. You can just be like Pk. And I mean yes. if you see this and I hold up my totem I, I mean one swing could take out at least eight skeletons. Yeah. I mean they like barely have to get it. We'll be fine. Swinging we'll be fine. through those guys like Sauron. But I think everyone should get off my boat. <laughs> oh like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got this. 
no it's problem. all in the forearm and the wrist. It's all in the forearm and the wrist. It's like he's asking a bowl. Watch the movie again. It's literally. Everyone knows that the way that you wield a massive, huge maul as a 12 foot monster crushing into other creatures is like you're using a Wiimote. <laughs> Like, he has a strap. We tennis. We protect his. Protect his. Is your uh, strap on tight? Is your strap on tight? Is your strap on tight? <laughs> There's two ways to read that. Stop saying strap on. Thank you. Every time you load up the Wii, is your strap on tight? Please don't move it. The Wii is king shaming. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, well, Yikes. Uh, do, does it seem like there's a threat that these uh, skeletons oh, no- notice us God. as we approach the riverbed and yeah, start like, to make our way? Yeah, like, they see a boat flying through? Do they turn and look? Do they... You <laughs> see that there's a number of skeletons, and they, they turn, and they look at you, and then they just continue on their way. Some are just shambling aimlessly. You actually see as... Um, you see that there is, uh, as, as you actually see there's, there's a creature around the bend in this riverbed, and uh, it almost uh, catches you off guard, and you just see it's actually a camel, and it's just kind of pulling out this strange, just sprouting oh. shrub from uh, the riverbed. A camel camel and, or a skele camel? It looks like a camel. Oh, cool. It just looks like a camel. That's good. That's a good um, sign. Yeah. And uh, it just kind of looks at you lazily as you pass by. Is that uh, a wild camel? Yeah, it's a camel. You, you saw it because of lizard creatures, and you're seeing that there's that this isn't just some completely barren desert. That there are creatures. Um, Why don't we take around. the camel? Yeah, we can recruit the camel. I'm sure mm. we'll find more of them. There has to be more than one camel. Well, then everybody get off my boat. Say right. please. Wow, that was awfully. <laughs> was that, that was, was the rudest you've ever been. Oh, this oh. makes you really cranky, Toa. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just. Uh, it's more for the bit. Oh, well, just, thank you for your service. Know, it's a struck and high sort of thing, you know, like oh. maybe we've been talking about strap-ons and emotes and I, I, hop, wrong. I hop off the boat. <laughs> yeah, we hop off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get off the boat. I say, Ray Ray, and it slinks down after the box. Um... I guess I'll approach the camel and be like, hey, <laughs> camel. I, I like lean over the toe and I say, this is going to go so badly. I just want to say that you have the best humps I've ever seen. And if you would be so kind, uh, one or perhaps two of my friends here might be able to uh, take you to, uh, if, if you'd be so willing to, 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 to carry us on your back, you, we would be able to go to a destination. You'd get lots of pets. You'd get lots of food. We'd take good care of you. We'd brush you, brushy, you know, brush you, brushy, huh? Brush you, brushy. Let me go animal handling check at disadvantage. No. Caprice is aware that camels don't speak common. Right? <laughs> <clears throat> 13. Oh. You have a negative one. Wow. With a 13, um, the camel looks at you and doesn't immediately bolt away as the boat just uh toa's boat just slides up right next to it and you're able to stop it for a bit and the camel just kind of is chewing the shrub that it managed to pull and you see that this riverbed it's sandy but uh as opposed to like just the high dunes that there is a little bit of soil and there are some a few bits of of greenery that's growing out of this Mm -hmm. and uh it is just lazily looks at you hey you're great. You're great. I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly bring my hand up and sort of try to give it a little like ear scritchies. We can animal handling check. Felix, is, is, that, a, is that a battery There's or a, a dromedary a camel? Uh, can you tell from here? I'm gonna be on honest. It's a dromedary camel. Thank you. Uh, Twelve. Amazing. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Twelve. Hey, hey, you're all right, buddy. Uh, as you do that, it uh, it looks at you and it continues just to chew and it like leans in and goes. <laughs> and it like leans in a little bit. I can't wait for it to spit in Caprice's face. I was rolling for that was a spit roll. <laughs> if, it, if, it was sub, if it was sub twelve. Uh well, uh I just don't want it to kick him. Uh I will the I will worse. I'll start to like pat him down and pat him off. I'll get all the sand out of his hair and, and make sure that he's like enjoying uh, just just interacting. We'll spend a few minutes just sort of uh, uh, being together and, and, and making sure that everything's good before I eventually am like, uh, would you take some weight up here? Are you, can I, uh, 
<laughs> and, I, and, I'll, and I'll attempt to jump into the, the mid-hump area to see if I can ride this wild camel. Yeah. Is it a dromedary? It's a dromedary camel, so it'd be single hump. Oh, my He's apologies. Not a back I, will, I will jump onto its back and <laughs> attempt to... Say it. <laughs> so, uh, this camel, despite it being a camel, uh, I will say that it is actually... Um, it is much larger as you're spending time with it. You've probably never seen a camel in your life. No. But uh, it looks at you with these large, uh, these camels. large uh, bushy eyelashes as it blinks at you. Like Sahara uh, and animal, animal crossing. Yeah, exactly right. Because so they, they they blink out the sun or the the, uh, the sand. Like right. so they yeah, they right, sort of right. these big yeah, crazy bushy eyelashes. and it's very large. And uh, you get the sense this is this is like a, a dire yeah, camel or yeah. some sort of like <laughs> much larger kind of creature. I treat it with nothing but respect. And I'll say that with uh, those two rolls, uh, you can roll an animal handling check just straight now. You are no longer just to see if I can get on top of this thing. It's not good. It's a seven. It's I do not, I do not succeed up. probably getting uh, up on As you attempt to jump off, it uh, that was a bridge too far as it, it uh, shoves you Ow. off and you just feel a spit at you. And this spit it's acidic. is actually incredibly painful. It's oh. a cobra it's a cobra camel. <laughs> it's a spit. Wow, that actually is a camel. lot of damage. As you take <laughs> sixteen mm-hmm. points of acid damage. Oh. You're like Ned yeah. in Jurassic Park. As you feel it, as a Dennis Nedry, as a Dennis Nedry's you. That's right, Dennis Nedry. God damn uh, it, what the fuck? And it, I was gonna uh, name so you Toe. And uh, you oh, see geez. as it looks at you Ew. and blinks and then uh, trots like off and it swallows the greens that it has and there's another little bit of shrub and it just seems to, now that it's finished its meal, it's more interested in that next meal or that next bit of shrubbery uh, before uh, so- what did you say to that probably, camel? He probably walks about like 15 feet away. These camels are dicks. <laughs> I gave it nothing but respect. I pet him. I, I scratched his ears. I, I cleared his, his fur of sand, and he spit in my face. <laughs> well, it is a wild animal, Caprice. And you did try to mount it. I, I love that you were going to name him after me, though. I appreciate that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> are, are, are you all right? Yeah, that looks painful. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a little red for a while, and I don't know if I can open this eye until tomorrow. We'll be all right. <laughs> well, what do we do? Should we try again? Well, let's just keep. I, I think if we just all walk. just get on it, it can't spit on us if we're already on it, right? <laughs> it walked away. Lady, you know? Ladies, get <laughs> he's walking like feet, 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 feet away. He's just sitting, he's like literally just 15 feet further, leans down, and you see him pull up the shrub. And actually, although they only look like very small, once it gets pulled up through the sand and the soil, they're actually like these very large uh, uh, shrubberies that he's enjoying quite a bit. Hmm. So, did you say it's big enough that we could all fit on it? No, but I will say, oh. as the dungeon master, if you cared to tr- attempt, if you could try something and impress me with your idea, <laughs> to uh, a couple of you could ride it because it is a large camel. But if you wanted to try to fasten some kind of reins and get it to pull your boat, it could very easily pull your boat, given how giant this fucking. I thing use is. Iron Fortress of Dis. It fails its intelligence saving <laughs> throw. Falls prone and turns into camel paste. <laughs> I am going to look around. Thanks. In the, in the sand and try to find some of these shrubs that it's eating okay. and just spend you know a few minutes like picking a big bunch I of I would shrubs. say you don't even have to roll and, for it. Oh, and I easy. would like to help her by creating food and water. Okay. Um, and I would, well, there's going to be a shit ton of bread just off to the <laughs> side because I can't take it with me. But I'm going to take one of the uh, one of the containers of water and provide a jug of water to the camel. I'll it's take one of the loaves of breads and nurse my face with it. <laughs> I was gonna just dust some of the sand off and just eat some of the bread. It's very bland. You do that. Wow. Um, and so uh, you see Iris Condor and then there's a uh, a, a beautiful pottery uh, jar of water that you're able to hold. And, and Luft, you're able to pull uh, a good number. You have a big handful of these. And you actually see that at the, the base of all of these shrubs, there's a, a nice uh, little vegetable of some kind with some roots dangling from it that looks Ooh, like it might dangles. almost kind of like a like a little a dangle tube, uh, a little onion or something. 
a dangle tuber. Yeah, that's their scientific name is the dangle tuber. Dangle-tuber. Um, so I'm gonna gather all these <laughs> roots and and stuff up and kind of bundle dangle them tubers. up and okay. and tie them with some rope that I have or some twine. Okay. Um. And uh, from that, I'm gonna tie them to the end of my spoon. Okay. Like a little fishing pole. Carrot yeah. on a stick. Carrot on a stick, if, if you will. will. Dangle tuber on a stick. Um. Okay. Everybody, here's what we're going to do. We're going to strap this camel to the boat, and then I'm going to jump on it with a treat and see what happens. All right. Uh, you want us to just try to, like, attach the camel to the boat? Yeah. Do, so do we have some rope? Don't you think that we should try to warm the camel up to us before we attempt to... Strap it to a boat. I tried talking to him. He's a fucking dick. I think if we just hook him up and then he... I'm gonna walk over to the camel with the jug of water. Uh, make an animal handling check. And so I'm gonna hold the jug of water out in front of me. Natural twenty. Let's go. Um. So That's that'll be twenty five. Twenty five. Um. As you and I'll, walk, I'll just like walk up to it and be like, and then pull down. You the... and. You, like something you like have, um, camels, but I don't know what it is. You know camels. Yeah. You know, you know normal camels. <laughs> like, hut, hut, as I think, for them yeah. to move. So, uh, yeah, something like I mean, in the I'm mummy, she does the, the like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, your family, uh, your family has, uh, has camels, uh, camel tamers. You're familiar with this creature, not one of this size, uh, in this, and there is something strange about it. It does look like an otherworldly camel, but as soon as you bring the water over, you can tell that that uh, its its eyes um, actually flash with this strange blue, and it immediately turns towards you. And as without even seeing the water, it knows that it's there, and it immediately walks over to you and just starts slurping and drinking deep. And I'll like I'll pet it and I'll like talk to it, and it's okay, darling. We're gonna strap you to our boat. And I'm gonna motion for them to do it while it's distracted drinking the water. Yeah, so while I'm gonna be hooking We're going to strap you to the boat, and, and then we'll we're going to feed you while yep. you walk, and everything's going to be fine. And I'm just gonna talk to it and continue so to I'm, feed it water. Do you need a description of this? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. We don't have to roleplay this, but. <laughs> well. <laughs> 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 um, so from the front of the boat where it's oh, got the two scary. canoes, I'm going to have a rope attached to each canoe uh, going up, le- like laying in the sand on either side. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to very gently, while it's distracted, put a circle of rope kind of under its armpits, behind its neck, but in front of the hump. Okay, yeah. And then I'm going to tie each rope to the side. Okay. I would just say make a dexterity check, uh, just straight, and you can add your proficiency. And we'll see, we'll see how we se- we will see how well you uh, how well you do this. Dexterity check plus five. <clears throat> but also plus proficiency, right? Plus five is the proficiency. Yeah, eleven. Wait, I hate you. What did you roll? It's dexterity. A six. A six plus plus five, five plus, plus your five. proficiency it is fourteen. So it oh. should be fifteen. Fifteen. 16. 16. 16. 16. Well, that's way better. 16. Is, you right? are able to yeah, fashion uh, with the ropes, with the scraps. You're able to take time with it is drinking the water. It is it seems very appreciative. I have like 30 jugs of water. So. Um, and as it looks at you, there seems but to be... really bland. As it looks <laughs> at you, it, it pauses. And, and as you're, tr- you're fastening it, it looks <laughs> at you with a strange kind of... A bit of... A strange kind of intelligence that you wouldn't expect from, from one of these because you've seen camels, you've been a neck bat. Yeah. Uh, similar to how uh, Vandris antagonized a bear many years in the future. <laughs> uh, th- <laughs> this animal seems to have some God, level of, of, of intelligence beyond Dick. that, and it seems to not care at all, and it seems very appreciative, especially it's kind of eyeing that little bulb on the shrubs that you guys got. Uh, oh, you're able to dig up a little you like bit. like that? Yeah, and so, because you get the sense that the camel was only able to tear off the, uh, like the tops of it, not always get that little it bit at the really bottom. wanted the bulb. You gotta feed it. And okay. Okay. so yeah. it's, it's you giving you like, the eye, and then it goes back to that. And so you I would can, say like, you're able to fashion that. You can carry on a stick one, but you have to like actually feed it because. 
because I know this is a fake camel, but my heart's really sad for how much it wants those bulbs and can't get them. I'll, uh, once I've got it all hooked up, I'm going to come up with a bulb and flat hand horse feed it. Nice. Yeah, I'll and say scratch. that there's no more rolling than you have to do. You've already succeeded this challenge. Okay. Uh, he, I just he, really want to know how he, he reacts. You, uh, he... Uh, very eagerly uh, goes I'm gonna, up. I'm going to look under the hood. Eating. Also, is it a he or a she? Uh, it is a he. Oh, it, cool. you're able to tell that it is a he. <laughs> um, as <laughs> you look under the hood, as camel bites it, um, <laughs> you start to feel as it very happily uh, does that, and you feel its 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 uh, lips kind of almost wrap around your hand, and uh, because you're just feeding it, you. Do feel its saliva and it actually stings. Ow. You're taking five points of acid damage. Ow. Ow, uh, I love you. Ow! Oh, shit. I like that a kiss from this camel would kill most level one. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. As it's very, it seems very appreciative and it looks at you uh, um, and uh, eats it, the entire shrub and, and continues to chew uh, as it's finished drinking its water. Uh, um, okay. I think we should, uh, why don't you all get on the boat? Iris, do you want to hold the stick or should I sit well, up there? I think I'll, I'll ride it. I, I have the most experience don't riding Don't lose my spoon. Oh, okay. But we could attach it to my staff. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I don't even think I want you to touch it. As long as no well, one brings really up the bitchy. fact that Toa already, <laughs> already stopped the boat, then we'll get on the boat and, and then everything will be fine. I hop back on the boat. I bring the boat back in. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. You do that and you're able to fashion it. And uh, wherever you guys uh, decide to move it, uh, the camel um, begins to uh, pull. And with the addition of Toa still working the sail, it gives him a little bit of, of, of oomph. And you're able to travel considerably faster. Yes. than uh, you had with the Scarab. Uh, and you have a fucking desert vehicle that I wasn't planning on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us, give us another, to... like, a uh, couple hours. We're gonna have, like, a wind ship just take off. <laughs> <laughs> we have to oh, name this camel. I agree. We have to keep this camel. Yeah, camel needs a this name. is our best friend, Camel. Um, I agree. And his name is Toe. And so <laughs> I would say <laughs> it begins to start uh, galloping, and its eyes are on that little bulb, and it just continues to go. And and um, I will say that uh, you get the sense that this is probably a camel that has an incredible amount of endurance. You know that, that, that normal camels have crazy endurance. Yep. That you get a sense of a dire camel or some sort of whatever this is. A dire, dire camel. camel. Uh, what, that it would be Aww, uh, considerably. Um, Did we all see I love its their eyes change color? They're so pretty. Yes, I would I say that'd be very obvious. Camels are just so cute. <laughs> um, uh, uh, ladies, uh, the, the camel's eyes uh, shifted when you started feeding it water. Is that normal? I well, it's not camel normal before. for camels no. to have acid spit. So no, this is clearly some alternate reality is anime any of this camel. Anime normal camel. to you? What? Is any of this normal to you? The skeletons well, and, you know. I mean, Look, Felix, I, I, I agree with Luffy on this. We're, we're sailing on a water boat on sand driven by a dead a death camel it's not the weirdest thing we've you ever think done he's a let's, death camel? let's be real well here. i think everything in this land is somehow tied to death in some way just, you know i just never seen a camel before i guess i they're know. really cool look at yeah. its eyelashes it's pretty amazing uh, yeah I, I... <sighs> they store water in their hopes oh good to know that's convenient it's not pregnant i wish i had a water hump oh what if I got pregnant? It was on your back. I wish I had a water hump. <laughs> Does that mean that, uh... <laughs> it was twins. It got a double. Oh, no. You turned into a back tree in the Sorry. That's awful. Thanks, I, I hate it. <laughs> Jesus. Let's move on. Okay. Apologies. Apologies. <laughs> I would say that we ride in the riverbank or alongside the riverbank, whichever is the smoothest ride. Probably being dri uh, with this vehicle that we've concocted somehow. Yeah. Uh, until we reach night or we reach our destination. Um. Yeah. So uh, you see that there is <clears throat> that as you make your way through the river, you're you're riding, and. Um, you make your way towards, uh, it's, it's approaching midday. 
as you see now, the large statue is looming high, and you've seen bits of ruins um, all across. You know, basically every you know several like every several hundred feet, there is a bit of stone, a bit of ruin all across this entire desert. Um, it doesn't make sense that there'd be this many buildings. How long would it have taken to construct this? Did anyone uh, build this? And um, but the one that the one statue that you'd seen previously that looked crumbled, uh, seemed its head seemed to be split in two. Its head uh, tumbled into the river ahead into the bank ahead of you, mm. uh, and you see. See those uh, two winged creatures circling high. Their shadows um, over the uh, the really shadows as as they uh, bl uh, block out the sun a little bit and cast this this shadow over you. Now his feet really are big. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Aren't they weirdly bulbous? It's wild. Yeah, it's just. Is it more clear now what those flying creatures might be? Make a perception check. Oh God. <laughs> Not very good. Uh, I just need to interrupt this. There's a poll going that asks if we name the camel Strap On, <laughs> and there's a hundred percent yes with 166 points. Oh, what? Shit. It's just going crazy. Why? Why Strap On for the camel? What because of you. Mean? Yeah, just so because they said strap you on. Can use oh, channel you can use channel, channel you points. Can, yeah. I was like, there is no way 208 people voted yes on this question. <laughs> okay, right. Our viewership's crazy. No. Uh, I got a 10, so not very good. Uh, no, um, I will say that they don't seem to be birds. They do not look bird-like at all. Okay, let's... Uh, well, fine. <laughs> and um, I need you, so uh, Nikki, to make a religion check at advantage now that you're closer. Religion. Religion. Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, as you've been, you've seen re uh, remnants of statues. You've seen um bits of of pieces that seem to be religious artifacts, but they don't seem to be of any gods or pharaohs that you know of. But this statue up ahead that seems to be like a, a creature that's on, uh, that's basically resting down with its uh, on its haunches, uh, with its head missing and split in two, buried in the sand, you see that the shape of the ear that's sticking up on one side, uh, that, that it actually looks very pointed and jackal-like. Uh, and you see the construction of uh, of it, it seems to be a, would perhaps once have been uh, uh, covered in, in, a, in a decorative black stone. Looking at it, does it look like it was naturally destroyed or intentionally destroyed? I'll say we'll keep that. It looks like it had been uh, as you approach or far off in the distance, it looks like it had been uh, where others had been worn away. This looks like it had been a, uh, a, a, d a deliberate destruction. Given how many pieces it was, you've seen the ruins where it had kind of worn and crumbled normally. Uh, and you see that as you're going around, it's probably, um, you know, uh, several a good hundreds hundreds of feet away, but this is a massive statue that these two winged creatures seem to be circling, staying above. Where, uh, but it looks as if it has been defaced, and much oh of it boy. is buried in the sand. Oh boy. I am not pleased by this. Someone clearly destroyed a statue of Anubis. This is Anubis. Well, it looks to be. If That's I'm judging Anubis. by the ears. At least some kind of jackal-headed effigy, which would have been constructed in most cases, in reverence to Anubis. Strapon, Strapon, I'm going to call him Strappy for short. Strapon, can you move us a little bit closer to to the thing, but not up to it? Oh, I guess naming it after me is a little uncomfortable. That's fair. I, I support this. It would be confusing if we were Toa the Toa or Toa the Camel. Well, we just said Toa or Camel Toa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to name the next Camel Fee. Since fee? Caprice was nice to do it. Or Ka, I guess. Well, if it was Toe, it was this guy. But he's not Toe anymore. I was going to name him Fee after Felix. Oh. Pass it on, you know. But So Camel Fee. Well, I, I, I think what you said is fine. Or Fee? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll just call him Strappy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> <we> <laughs> 
We have him connected to the boat via ropes. And he's a strapping young lad. <laughs> Strappy. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's unraveling very quickly. <laughs> Come on, Strapon. Uh, the camel, the camel, eagerly follows wherever where uh, the bulb goes, uh, where the bulb goes, and so you're going to go towards this sphinx-like statue. Is what you're is what you're doing. I I, I don't want to go up to it, but I'd like to just kind of get closer, just to unless I already know that it's a statue of Anubis. Okay, so you. I just want to kind of. Get closer confirm. to see if I can yeah. confirm that it is a statue of Anubis. Yeah. Okay. Because it is, I'm putting pieces together in Iris's head. Roger that. Jesus. So um, you go forward, and, and he goes basically wherever the uh, delicious bulb of these uh, shrubs lead him. And so uh, wherever you you're, you get the set, you, you get a hang, especially with how long you've been traveling, um, as it's, 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 it's approaching late afternoon probably at this point, um, or mid-afternoon we'll say. And you see now uh, where much of it is buried, uh, you see that there's been deliberate, uh, that, that you know that there are sphinx-like statues, right? Um, or these, these, these statues of, of the various animals. This very clearly seems to have been a massive statue of a jackal. Uh, the head has been completely smashed off, split into at least two. One of the ears is pointed up, and you see that familiar lining of gold on the so inside like of the ear. So it's like the hieroglyph of the jackal. Yes, exactly gotcha. right. Uh, split, and uh, one of the pieces of the head is sticking out of the riverbank. Um, and I need to make a perception check for me uh, at advantage, because you're, you're deliberately looking. Uh, perception, you yep. said? Uh, 29. 29. You look up, and these two winged creatures are still very high above the statue, and they're very deliberately circling it. And it almost looks vulture-like in the way that they're circling. But you look up, and these are no vultures. You see wings that are feathery and bird-like, but they carry these massive feline bodies with uh, long tails and shaggy manes, as it looks like winged lions that are two winged lions that are that are circling above this, uh, uh, above this. Thank you so much, Strapon. You have done your job well. Give him the bulb. Did you hear that? What? It's just snow? It's a car. It's an avalanche. It sounds like a dead body being <laughs> dragged across the side of the house. It's, it's probably that. <laughs> if I had to guess. Well, well yes. People driving through the snow. Oh. Occam's razor. Oh, that was that. horrifying. It's a dead body being dragged across the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! The only logical option. Is it, already, oh, is it already Saturday? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do that every Saturday. Good old corpse disposal. Dead body they're, removal. They're a little late, actually. <laughs> You know, they always say, like, noon to 8 p.m. Just... Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> they do whatever the fuck they want. What kind of window is that? Yeah. Yeah. Really it's not nearly enough time. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> just give you a 16-hour window. Yeah. Yeah, I got life, too. You know? Okay. Uh, anyway. Two winged lions are circling above, and we're giving... And they're still shrouded in dark. You can't see right. their faces. You can't see anything, but they seem um, to be circling. They're far. This is in close. Yeah, yeah like they're high is, up. They're very yeah. high up. Well, I'm not sure what else we can <coughs> learn from the situation. I, I think maybe they're sentries, scouts. Who knows? But but should we check it out? What if there's something under the sand? Well, parts of the statue, I'm sure. Yeah, but what if it's more than parts of a statue? What if it's like underground, like um, like a subterranean temple? Exactly. There are probably many of those. If this is anything like my head cannon, <laughs> be mazes, labyrinthine underground tunnels. It seems like we should check it out a little bit while we're here. I don't right? necessarily want to get any closer to those things, though. I don't either. But well, we do have Strapon, and he'll be able to get us there more quickly. What if they? What if we get too close and they eat the camel? I don't want to go anywhere near those things. I've become quite fond of strapping. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you how many horses we've lost to terrific monsters in Korvakia. So where are we along the river? <coughs> On the um, way to. I mean, I would s say oasis. that you're probably you like went here and then you like went up that way and then you kind of came down and you're like about here. Okay. 
Yeah. We're on the river. Bend. You're on the river. Bend. Yeah. On the river bend. There's more to see. Did I kick the camera there? Where the goals? Oh yeah, see. it's totally out of whack. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. It's that one, right? Just, yeah. just push it. Oh my that way. Yeah. What? Now this is. The... What do you? So what do we want to do? Do we want to go closer or keep going? Well, I think we need to investigate. If this part was a... of me does feel like we should. We have to. If this it, is it, actually Anubis related. Well, it's well, yes, it's a drackal, which is Anubis related, of course. But it's been intentionally desecrated. And I think that, that there are probably clues. What if it's an entrance to a subterranean tomb? Then we can explore the tomb. What, what, what if what if someone stays here with Scrappy? And uh, the rest you of will the just split the party split up. in a in a dread domain of death. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess that's what I'm no. suggesting. Yeah. Do you want to get spit on again? No. I can stay here with Strappy. Really, I want to stay with my boat. <laughs> but I'll stay here, and the rest of you can go. All right. I, I'm. I certainly don't want to rob you of an opportunity to, to learn more about what's potentially going on here. Um, out of character, you told us that uh, Anubis is like being held captive, right? Mm-hmm. I, I guess it does shouldn't surprise me that that this they don't really like Anubis here. If they've got him held captive. Well, yes, and I'm starting to think, and maybe this is completely off base, but this realm has existed for a long time. I'm assuming. What if this was Anubis's realm for a while? It has been usurped. Why would there be a jackal statue here? Yeah, you're right. Someone would have had to build it at some point. And so if Unkatep stole his realm and imprisoned Anubis, wouldn't it make sense that he would then go around and desecrate his effigies? Yeah. What a jerk. It makes a lot of sense. I guess what kind of worries me is how could they have gotten the upper hand over Anubis? A literal god. There's a lot of scary stuff happening. Trickery, or or perhaps that was part of the bargain that he made with uh, Vorok. That was that was the way that uh, Vorok was able to equip him with something that uh, took down Anubis in the same way that Vorok benefited from that relationship. Well, if we want to go investigate, then I'll be with you every step of the way. Iris, right. do you have any more water? Yes, I've got thirty-eight jugs of water. <laughs> Lay a couple on the ground here, and we'll we'll put some roots down and untie Strappy from the boat. That way, if he, or Toa can take his boat with him, and I'm sure he'll just hang out here and snack. Yes, and if he doesn't, then he didn't want to stay. And we can't force yeah. Strappy to stay if he doesn't want to. And That's I, right. I'd feel a lot better if you came with us, Toa. I don't think we should yes. split up. If, for some reason, let's say we do go down into this subterranean, um, labyrinthine, underground temple. Of which we currently have no evidence that it exists currently. But it is highly likely, time. given my experience. Uh, uh, you're the expert. All right. Yeah, if I'm going to build something like that, you don't think I'm going to put a labyrinth underneath it? That's crazy talk. It's, it's an entrance. Deep it, within the earth. Should we get down there, and there's a long marble or sandstone hallway, granite or sandstone hallway, Mm -hmm. and skeletal enemies come at us one by one, who better than Toa to cleave them one at a time? Yeah, one at a time. Eight at a time. At least eight at a time. Unfortunately, mechanically, just one at a time. (laughs) Even though they're like just skeletons, but yeah. Well, we have time. (laughs) We have time. Just one at a time is fine. That's we have. Plenty of six second chunks. All right. All right, fine. You feed strap on. Strap on. Strap on. Strap on. Just call him Strappy. 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 All right. Strappy. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> what? Strap, strappy. 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 <laughs> Yeah, are you all right, Tom? What are you doing? Man, it's gonna be the same as Strappy Doo! His name is just Strappy. <laughs> Camel Power! Strappy Toe. These Scooby Scooby Doo fans and the thirteen ghosts. Strappy Tappy Toe. <laughs> Vincent Van Gogh <Gool> arrives. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. He's standing with his cape. 
Hey, boomers, you remember fucking <laughs> Scooby Doo and the 13 Ghosts? <laughs> no, I don't. Magic the Weird Van Gogh, no! How useless half of Mr. Ink was. They got completely rid of Velma and Fred. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Hold on. Nose has a great comment. Every time they say it like Strapon, I immediately think Curse of Strapania. <laughs> oh, no! Good old <laughs> Honestly, knowing Strapania, that seems very You <laughs> just spoiled our, our next on, Patreon it's on tier. Brand. Oh. Is that canon now? Probably. Oh, yeah. He's a big vibrating camel. <laughs> Good old Curse of Strapania. <laughs> Oh God. So you're oh. able to easily get rid of oh uh, of the the makeshift uh, saddle and barding that you've made for. Um, I was gonna leave saddle. it on him, but just okay, disconnect yeah. it from yeah, the boat. Yeah, you're able to disconnect it from the boat. Toa, you're easily able to you get all of the water jugs off of the, the boat, put it in the ground. He very happily is lapping up the water. He looks at you with like kind of a sense of understanding uh, of that of that intelligence that he's just gonna chill and enjoy the water and. Um, you know, this is a good gig. Uh, we and love so... you, Strappy. And when we're done exploring the subterranean temple, we will come back for you. Did its eyes turn back to normal and then blue again with the water? Yes, or were they yep. consistently yep. So you, I will say... Uh, he wants to die. So uh, as soon as the water <laughs> was, uh, was drunk, brought near him, they flash with blue, and then he goes over and starts drinking. This camel's evil as fuck. Yep. <laughs> this camel's the big camel's big bad. <laughs> and actually, as you leave, you see the camel sort of shift into Virgil's arm. <laughs> Come, sons of water. <laughs> we have work to do. I cast. He kill. stole all our bread. <laughs> that fucker. I cast kill him. <laughs> bread is the key to all of this. <laughs> With that, uh, you are able to all, if you want to proceed. We do. Yes, we, we do. Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll play D and D. <laughs> and so you see now, as you approach, you see this Ooh. large, um, this large statue that had been. Uh, that was was carved out of a, a, a dense black stone and uh, completely uh, broken apart. And you see that basically it looks as if it's been beheaded, uh, but it looks like whatever had done this was a, uh, it's, it, it's broken up into fragments. Its head is scattered across uh, a deep uh, crater uh, where its neck uh, connect, would, have, would have connected to its chest. You see that most of it is covered in sand and only really its, its right uh, uh, Paul is is is, uh, is uh, visible as a dune is basically like almost completely swallowing it uh, as you approach this thing and you see once again as you approach this massive ear sticking up and you get closer and you see that familiar uh, uh, gold along the the outline of the ear that would have that would have been very much um, would have been very much akin to a lot of the iconography of Anubis. Um, and I would say make a history check at advantage. Uh, 21. Rock and roll. 21. As you approach and you see this, the, the sculpting, and you see the, the way that this jackal has formed, you, in your royal education, would have learned about history and of, of art and worship, especially as a, as a priestess of Anubis. And you're familiar with how the construction and the sculpting and the worship of Anubis had been from the very first of the pharaohs, from your understanding. This seems more akin to that than anything that you would have experienced, and this looks even older. And that doesn't seem possible to you. Sure. Um, and so you see that as you approach, and you see this massive remnant of 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 this uh, sphinx-like Anubis statue. That's what you see. I relay that. We don't have to RP this. But would this be a good place for us to get food? Because I just eavesdropped on a note that said food question mark and I wrote a Y on it because I'm hungry too. Yes. And so I there is going to be a point very soon. Oh, so we're, not we're right going now. to break. Not right now. Okay. No, no, we're we're, we're okay. not going to break right now. So how close are oh we my to God, we're okay. <laughs> said no. <laughs> it's the bodies, the bodies on the walls. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the corpses. <laughs> the corpses. Dragging a dead body, man. 
Okay, how close are we to, or we, we're not like right up on it. You're or, approaching right up on it is my understanding. And they, the things circling have not seemed to take notice of us or change their pattern of swooping. Or not, no, like not, not currently, no, not presently. I'm like, I would be just really wary and like letting Iris do her thing, investigating the, the statue. And I'm, <laughs> I'm focused on these creatures because I'm okay. worried about um, I would say I you don't need to roll because you focus on that. The closer you get, the lower they get in the sky. And you now see as, uh, as they seem to have these feline but strangely human faces in their manes. I don't, I, these things are getting closer. This, this, this isn't good. Should we just try to talk to them? Maybe they are like trying to protect it. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not the expert here. I just, you know, I've seen a lot of messed up stuff in Striga, and, and it just I'm getting vibes like that. Well, I, I don't know what to do. What, what, well, it's just two of them, and why not two? That we ignore them for now. Uh, whatever we're trying to do, let's accomplish it and get the hell out we're of here. We just want to investigate, that's all. All right. And find the entrance. There has to be an entrance. Yes, because there's a subterranean tomb. What if we have to dig? How far down to the base of it do you think it is? What if we have to dig all oh. that way? I'm worried it's about going to take a while. He's fine. Fine. will be fine. Don't worry, just hurry, please. And so I'm just going to investigate and see if there's anything else to, to learn from the statue. Make an investigation check. And because because everyone's assisting at advantage. Hoping. Yeah, at advantage. I'd be poking around in the sand yeah. with my spoon, seeing if any, 21. Like, oh, anything ooh, gives baby. way with like sand um, falling. I beneath. will say, as you do that, you see where the uh, these two uh, legs would be sticking out from uh, the, the base of this chest. And as you're sticking and poking, you drive the stick down and you feel it click up as if there is a doorway. At the chest of this, uh, at the chest of this uh, statue, what? As, as, and 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 it's 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 tapped, it's tapped against the uh, the top of it, completely buried in sand. Oh my gosh! Look what I found. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm just. Gonna I knew say it. it. I literally cannot believe that this is happening. <laughs> I am really on fire today. You know, if I had an electrum piece for every time we found two subterranean labyrinth, I'd have two electrum pieces. <laughs> but it's weird that it's happened twice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, look, everybody come over here. Uh, do I have to, like, clear it off? Do I feel oh, like... it seems very deep. Like, you went all the way in with your spoon, and so you would need to take time to dig away. Yeah. All right, I was, uh, I would, actually, I'm just, I would just be casting um, the cantrip uh, Mold Earth and moving, excavating. I okay. Can do it five oh, cube, cube feet at a time. Oh, I can wow, just that's shoveling that's a shitload that's of that's sand that's magically. Sand. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's crazy. <laughs> with, um, that with Felix... Snow? It's called Mold Earth. Uh, you, that, earth. You know, it literally says a portion of dirt or stone that you can see within range. I'm going to say it works on sand. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like sand, sand, is stone. Stone. sand is stone. Sand is stone. Yeah. Sand is stone. It's, it's just a lot of I tiny stones. Snow. And so, yeah, I thought oh. snow. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, no, it's dirt or I stone. I thought you said stone. I'm like, I was of course more curious works. about snow. It's not mold <laughs> snow. Stop bothering me. That would me. be mold water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. So with the We're excavation and Felix, your... Your... Your magic is just is just blasting sand back and forth and excavating, and it's almost as if like the the sand is just draining out as the front of this statue. You get the sense would have been absolutely magnificent of a of a sitting jackal, um, black and gold, and you see now remnants of, of turquoise long faded from countless millennia of, of of decay, and who knows what sort of desecration has come upon. This this, uh, uh, this statue, but as the sand drifts away, you see very clearly a rectangular doorway, an entrance into this large uh, jackal statue. Um, and you see that there's a number of hieroglyphics uh, around the top of it. And as soon as the sand uh, shifts away and Iris, you stand before it, suddenly it begins to glow gold. And you hear a voice boom out from the, uh, above as the two winged creatures, now very clearly sphinxes, uh, begin to descend towards you. And it says, who dare enters the domain of the Lord of the dead? 
and that is where we're going to take a break. Oh. <laughs> I have to say that Nose had a brilliant comment that yes. I, I made sure not to interrupt. Oh Gullhaven's hottest club is Curse of, Curse of Strapania. This club has everything. Pollen Keens, secondhand tombs, <laughs> big old bowls of skier, and compression gym. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to that club. Yeah, God. You said it's in Gullhaven? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that would be in uh, up in the uh, where the Silver Serpents reside. It'd be a very rich club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nowhere near the Kench. 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 I was going to say, I couldn't remember the name of the... It's been 80,000 years since yeah. Gullhaven. But I had to make sure that we read it out because that is so good. I now. love yeah. So good. Walnuts, peanuts, pineapple smell. Don't cut this. From the video. <laughs> Grapes, melons, <laughs> oranges, and coconut shells. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I need to play my music. That was a good Grant Kirk Dude. Yeah, that's my yeah, that's my Grant Kirk Hope impression. <laughs> Um, Remember when I met David Weiss? Oh, yeah. Oh my god, we nice. party with David Weiss and his band for like three hours. <sighs> that was so good. I'm really, I'm really pleased with that rap that just happened. You hear the voice booming from one of the sphinxes as it lands behind you. So they're sphinxes, you're saying? They are very clearly sphinxes. They swoop. They have these feline, the lion bodies, basically, and large feathery wings, each of them. And you see that one, they both have feline faces, but they're also very humanish. One, the one who boomed out this uh, this question to you, has uh, what looks like a, a beard, and it looks to be male. And another one has a longer hair around her mane and seems to have a feminine face as they uh, descend and land. Despite these hu these are very large creatures. Uh, they land very gracefully uh, and, and loom tall over you. Uh, your camel seems to not really particularly care. He's good enough away and he just kind of looks up and then just continues to eat his, uh, his shrubs. And um, they both stare at you with appraising eyes. What and do you all do? What did they say? Again, uh, the, uh, like the, the male dare, one has said, "Who dares uh, <laughs> enter the domain of the Lord of the Dead?" Um, I will step forward. I'll be right behind her. Um, Iris, daughter of the Pharaoh to Siket, priestess of Anubis, and her friends. You see the male one. Uh, take several steps, his wings fold uh, on, on top of his back, and he uh, looks at you and and looms over in, in uh, very clearly an attempt, um, an attempted imitation. And he... You are the one we have been waiting for. I am... Do not lie to me, child. Then do not interrupt me, Sphinx. I do not know if you have been waiting for me, but I am a priestess of Anubis, and this monument has been desecrated. I would like to enter the underneath and pay my respects to my god. Something good can be done here. Um, with that, the, the female sphinx uh, steps forward and says, I apologize for his brashness. I will speak to the priestess. And he kind of uh, uh, rustles his mane a little bit and says, I was testing her courage. And he steps back and uh, she looks forward and says, I am never this is Ramkehen. We are servants of Anubis. We were told by our god that the final fragment of the car would reside in the soul of one of his worshippers and that she would be the one 
to return his strength and his health. Is that you? Is that why you are here? I will look around and kind of weigh the options of being honest with these sphinxes I've never met. Oh, well, yes, that is why I'm here. I fear that something horrible is happening to Anubis. I can feel it. I have seen it. He has told me that there is something inside of me. I know not this thing myself, but I trust my God. She looks at you, and she looks over the rest of you. And you can see that um, Ramkahan, the male of, uh, and I would say that, Iris, you would know that uh, the, the male sphinx is an andro sphinx, mm-hmm. and the female sphinx is a gyna sphinx, and that is that they're very, yep, they're, 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 they're different in temperament and power and ability, mm-hmm. uh, and generally they don't care for each other, but at the very oh. least this is a, and you don't even need to roll that, um, <clears throat> but this is a, a, a pair that are seemingly in the service of, um, of Anubis. Neferet? Neferet, yep. And Ramkahan. Yeah, is, is the yeah. is the Gyno Sphinx, yep. And Gyna, then Ron, Gyno. Gyno, Gyno, G-Y-N-O. Okay, and then Gyno. the Andro Sphinx is uh, Ramkahan, R-A-M-K-A-H-E-M. Ramkahan. Ramkahan. I said Ramtakin. Ramtakin. Ramakin. Samson. Ram. Thank you for the follow, Space Whiskey. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, Space Whiskey. Whiskey. Space. He said that you would know and you would come. He was right. You have arrived at this prison. I hope that you have the power that he said you did. What happened to this place? Who did this? To this? Or to the realm? To Harakir? Has Ankatep always been the master here? She looks at you and nods. Who built this monument, this prison, as you call it, in the image of our god? She looks at you, and her face is very, not expressionless and blank, but very stoic, and it's very difficult to read. Well, you would be surprised to learn. It's Ankatep himself. But why? Oh, sorry. You will learn in time. You will learn about the master of this place. You will learn of the prisoner of this place. They are one and the same. I see. And so this is a prison? Yes. For not just whom you wish to stop, but for the master. And he will stop at nothing until he finds you. And you see as Ramkan steps forward and says, but do not let that fill you with fear. We must do what we can to save the Lord under the mountain. We must do what we can, even if we risk playing into Ankatep's plans. I'm not afraid. He looks, leans down. His face is a lot more readable. He wears his, uh, his emotions and his feelings on his face very clearly. I do not smell fear on you. Sorry. 
of the Hellboy trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's scary. It was constantly delivered to me on my YouTube playlists. I can't get away from it. Uh, and he steps back, and um, <coughs> Neferet um, steps forward and says, You've arrived at the right time. It was all meant to be. You... You do know what is happening to Anubis, do you not? <coughs> The vague approximations. Anubis has not been well enough to provide me with every aspect of the situation, but I know he is weakened as he attempts to hold back the chained god. She nods, and she raises a huge paw and points to the far north, to the northeast, and you see a vicious, dark, howling sandstorm that seems far more violent than any of the sandstorms. The one that had been that Caprice that you had seen, I guess on Iris, rolling across this in place. In the northeast. Uh, yeah, this is in, in, yeah, in the northeast, but this one is, is past it. On the, seemingly at the very northern uh, area, the borders of this of this domain. He's within the breath of the forgotten. The eternal sandstorm that shrouds the Black Pyramid. It is with the power of death that the chain god was sealed away, and it's only the power of death that keeps him currently chained as the seals break. We have been given a single task. To lead you on the hero's journey. To heal, to restore, to save the God of the Dead. Why would we ever want to go on this hero's journey? She just explained it to Caprice. I know, but him. the first step of the hero's journey is refusal to call, so I just had to... <laughs> <laughs> now that we're past that step, we can move on. Get out! <laughs> Please give this man an inspiration. <laughs> yeah, take an inspiration. Take an inspiration. That's <laughs> I'm like, seriously, Derek? Did you not just hear what he said? That's so good. Nikki <laughs> gave it to me a long time ago. I gave this to you? Yeah, I got a raft. Oh, is this from the oh, oh, wait, what is it? oh this is from is this from my um the the tarpier from the Kinder Egg. <laughs> oh. The tarpier. Yeah, I've had this this whole time. I can't believe you still have that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. <laughs> oh, this, this place is a godless place. Only Anubis can come and go. All gods are forbidden. Why you will learn. <coughs> And it is with the power of our God that another God, chaos of destruction, of evil, wishes to grant us foothold in this land of. You're speaking of Set. 
I do not speak his name, for he has a different name here. There is no gods. There are no gods here. They are forbidden. The only god is the god king, Ankhotep. The gods are dead here. By, by what other name do you call Set in this land, so that I may use it? He is not a god here, but a dark mockery of our Lord. A noob Satan. An effigy of necromancy, evil, entropy, and destruction. Taking shape, gaining power in his pyramid. The black pyramid or the golden one? Neither. The pyramid that's lost to the sands. It is there he waits until every ounce of divine power and life is drained from Anubis. And then, only then, will Anubisitan achieve his full power. And it is with that power that Ankhotep is planning to make himself whole for his ultimate wish, his ultimate goal, to die. What purpose would he want to die? Eternal life, eternal undeath, eternal existence can only be appealing to some people for so long. There's nothing more that he wants than the eternal darkness, eternal rest. That is all he desires. But what happens when he dies? He will learn. That is part of the journey. You must follow in Ankhotep's footsteps. That will be the one way you can be granted access, access to the pyramid beneath the sands. To Noob Satong's pyramid. Destroy the leech that drains Anubis. And then a god on our side we will have. Well, as you all know, I will go on this journey, whether I go alone or with you by my side. I will not turn my back on Anubis. Not again. do anything to save him. He saved me multiple times. How do we get there? <clears throat> Sit down there? In this once holy place, it is the first step of the journey receive your first riddle which will lead you to the first fragment of Ankhotep's car but it is not our place and she looks at Ramkehan to tell you you must solve the riddle 
experience the steps that Ankhotep himself has taken, procuring all of the fragments of his car, all but one. And she looks at you. Countless millennia has taken them. For while, while he has power to peer through the mists, outside of the mists and dark bargains in this land, it is a prison. He cannot sense you here. He must dispatch his minions seeking. Seeking all of the fragments. You are all that remain. Well, then let us begin. She steps away and um, uh, Ron Cahen does as well. And he kind of grumbles a little bit and says, let us see how strong you really are. And as they said, boy, the sand seemingly magically starts to sink down a little bit and the glowing gold hieroglyphs around this door uh, glow brighter. Can you read it? What does it say? Can I read it? Um, you can. But there's something interesting about it. The dialect is off. Heratic. The It is it seems older than the most ancient of the texts mm. and the scripts and the dialects that you have studied. And you're able to make out like bits and pieces and, and you're able to read it but it it um it it, it says uh, to your approximation there's not really a one to one translation but you're able to get the general gist that um that that this is this is the this is the domain of the Lord of the Dead in the land of reeds and lotuses. I would say that to everyone. <clears throat> is that the riddle? I'm not sure. Reeds and lotuses. <clears throat> <clears throat> Does that mean anything to you? No. Okay. Well, that's probably not the riddle, right? That's just like the entryway door. Yes. Okay, so... Let's just try to open it? The door? It's Does... open. Oh, it's open? Yeah, it's open. And, oh, and, yeah. oh. Oh, I thought it was closed. No. I did too. And it's a Sphinx totally open and door. Is... They're just stepping back. Oh, they're stepping yeah. back. Yeah. Alright, well, it was lovely to meet you. To meet you both, and hopefully we'll see you on the other side. In the meantime, would you do me a grand favor? Would you keep an eye on Strapon, our camel over there? She looks back and back at you and nods and says, <coughs> "This is the riddle inside." It's not the right right accent. The riddle inside will just take you to the first location. You will be, if you can solve it. You will be returning here shortly. Lovely. Just keep an eye on Strapon. Make sure nothing happens to him. And do not delve too deeply in this ancient temple. Every ruin... Subterranean temple? We call it the Labyrinth. I knew it. Every single ruin in this land connects. Oh, shit. Beneath the sands. And there are dark... There are dark things that wander those halls. Yes. It is dangerous up here enough. All right, well, we'll be seeing you. Good day. She nods. Are you ready? And we'll step forward. And as we pass the threshold, I'll go, doubt me again on subterranean tunnels. <laughs> 
How um <laughs> how enclo- how tight and closed <laughs> and and dark does this uh, space seem? We took a long rest. Or... The the, yeah, the doorway did. it seems like a normal it's it's a relatively small entranceway to a temple, but it doesn't like it's not super tight. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, I'm just trying to decide if the priest's uh, claustrophobia five, would kick in going into this space. Yeah, it seems like a relatively small, very old. It's very it's dark. <clears throat> from what it you is can say. under the earth, so 100. percent Yes. Hundred percent. Yes, exactly right. This is a claustrophobic worth of nightmare. Do we really have to. Uh... There. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, you heard them. We're not going. We're not going to go deep. We're not going to go far. We're just going to find the first riddle and solve it. I like pull up my tail for the first time and start to like ring the actual <laughs> end of it. Cowardly lion style. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be all right. Yeah. It's okay. Just sing a little song for you guys. Sing a little song. Sing a song now. I'll protect you, Caprice. If anything happens, I'll make sure you get it back out of here. Do you want to be the last one in, or where do you want to stand? That'll make you more most comfortable. I'll just uh, uh, in the middle. In the middle. All right. Do not tell me a companion of one of the faith is so cowardly. Hey, uh, you know what? You don't know anything about me, all right, pal? I know what I see. And it is cowardice. Uh, just because you have a specific fear about anything doesn't mean you're cowardly all the time. That's not the, the way that works. Cowardice means you will not do what needs to be done. You are hesitating and wasting time. Bravery is not the lack of fear. It is the understanding of it. Let us see if he proceeds. And you see that uh, Nefret is like giving him eyes to shut the fuck up and he's not listening. <laughs> what Iris said! Come on! You go ahead. I'm gonna push him in the tunnel. And... I start, I start, uh, yeah, I, I like out of more anger and stubbornness towards his attitude than anything, I just like run through and and and, and make my way in through the, through the threshold. Can you believe that guy? Yes. Huh. <laughs> so Unfortunately, yes. So what do we? Is it dark when we walk in? Yes, here? it's dark. <laughs> so although the outside is glowing, it's dark, and it seems to be a small uh, uh, temple room. Um, and once again, Iris, the construction looks very old. Um, but as you step in, you see uh, very slowly glowing hieroglyphs start to illuminate and enter, and you actually feel uh, a pull as your chest glows that similar color, that similar gold, and then fades back down. And you see now that there um, are, are, are murals and carvings that are, are, are still painted. The painting is chipped. But uh, it's still in 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 shocking condition, given how old this seems. And you see a um, a, a great pyramid with a throne before it, and you see that there is a um, a pharaoh that is sitting there, and he. It seems to be a. It's difficult to tell with the artistry, but it seems to be a. Uh, a teenager, a teenage boy, and on to the right of him is a a priest, a priest of Anubis, wearing an Anubian jackal headdress. And although the face is carved in artist in in, in an artistic fashion, a stylized fashion, and despite it being a living man, there seems to be something uncannily familiar about that face. On the Anubian priest, on his right, and you see that um, there are a number of 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 gods uh, as well. You recognize the Ra. You recognize um, uh, Osiris. You recognize uh, Isis, and there are. A number of them, but none of them have, or, or rather, you recognize uh, priests of all uh, of all of those gods, but none of them have that place of importance than the priest of Anubis that stands beside his pharaoh. And 
as the hieroglyphs form and glow, it says, what can run but never walks, has a mouth but never talks, has a head but never weeps, has a bed but never sleeps. Well, I know. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, I, I, I got this one. Look at this. No problem at all. It's a river. Yeah. yeah. A what? A river. A river. This don't have beads. How do a, they have beads? Yeah, they got like bed. a river bed. That's not a bead. Yeah, it's a bed. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a river bed. bed. It's a play on words. Oh. I, it's okay. Look, I'm sure that this is going to be the hard one, and they'll get easier, and oh, you'll, okay. you'll you'll catch up. All right. Well, I just I mean, it didn't fit enough. <clears throat> as soon as you all have been saying river, you hear you see the same glow, and <laughs> sand is dropping on top of you as the <gasps> the carvings start to change and move, and you see the scene of what looks like a beautiful oasis. Uh, on the banks of which is uh, a city of, of, of mud brick and with uh, large reeds, uh, herons and antelope drinking and uh, musical notes uh, rising up from musicians playing uh, lutes and harps and drums and, and as well as singers. And it all glows before then turning dark and from those same ancient carvings of the priests and the pharaoh, the young boy pharaoh. Well, we've answered the riddle. They said we would be teleported back. You know, I didn't even think about it. Maybe we should have just like shouted the answer out. We didn't even know what was going to happen. That might have been a little hasty. <laughs> Well, I mean, they told us to answer the riddle. For sure. Of it. I, I'm just saying, I, uh, maybe a little more prudence in that. I was, I just wasn't thinking. I got excited about a riddle. Yeah. I'm well, gonna, I'm gonna look around. Is there anything of, else of interest or note in this space besides the like portal that we're now staring through? Apparently. Uh, you see that there is a broken altar. Uh, there are some doorways that seem to go down oh. into the into the earth, but it seems like this small space, whatever. Uh, of importance is really just what's carved on the walls. And so when that ha you said a portal, I missed that. There's no portals. There's no portals. It, just, oh, it, it lit, lit up the walls it and the carvings. Yeah, and it, the carvings. The carvings. Yeah, and it provided a river, uh, or provided a, uh, a riddle um, <clears throat> that then once you said the answer, it showed a location. Oh. Oh. So okay. then I did get it. I think it's trying to tell us to go to the Oasis city. The dried up riverbed that we were traveling on. Well, we take the. To, I mean, there's still I mean, at least a, a lake. Would you call it a lake? There's still water left and trees and things left. Did the did the oasis that we saw in the, the brief vision uh, look like there was a town with it or it was just an oasis? Uh, it looks like the, the, the oasis to the north that you're heading towards. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, well, I mean, that was. All right. So it was great. Done. Let's go. I, I thought we were supposed to be teleported back. No, no, no. They just said we would come back. Oh. It's the point is that we were just going to run in here for just like a second. Oh. I mean, this is good. This confirms everything that we, we, we were speculating well, about. What it tells us is that the first piece of the car is still there, or at least was there. I mean, they did say Aris was the only one that remains. Uh, maybe yes, and lying. speaking of that, do you, is it really a good idea from my piece of the core to reunite with all of the other ones? Should I go anywhere near the other ones? I feel like I shouldn't. Oh. As long as we're talking, what's Ka? It's a word that... Well, there's no direct translation, but it's, it's akin to a soul. Okay. I'll buy it. Yes, fragment of a soul. Okay. So do we think that they were just lying about saying that he has all the others already and he actually doesn't? Or he's storing it there for safekeeping? Well, maybe just that they're in this land and them being in the land and he knows where they are. Because they or, said that we had to follow his footsteps and do the same that he did. 
So maybe it's a symbolic finding. We just have to trace the steps. Oh, we've well, got to like, steps, you're right. Well, my fear is what if it's similar to to the, the Barry Lauter stories? You know, he was a wizard from, I think, Onzu. And in his, there was this powerful snake man who severed his soul into seven pieces like a horcrux. Oh, I, I don't know that what story, did you call me? but... What? <laughs> I don't know that story, but I'm reminded of the... Uh, skeleton that we fought at the top of that mountain. The one you fought it on. Exactly right. Uh, it, didn't he split his souls and, 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 and they were like phylacteries and the whole thing? And you like, mean the lich? That was how he kept himself sustained, right? Oh Magic. yeah, he put his soul in a box, which we then destroyed. But then if you were to bring <laughs> the souls back to... because this, it, 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 Weren't we just told that Ankatep wants to die and then he went? Allegedly. So yeah. wouldn't the whole idea is that like, if you were to make yourself immortal by scattering your souls all over the place... That's and... exactly what happened in Barry Lauter. Well, I think I read that one too. Didn't like they... they... Really put a lot of focus of collecting like two or three of them, and then they had to like destroy like five of them in one night or something. Yes, but so in that, <laughs> that one, the only was way a little d- weird to me. Well, you haven't read the books though. You only watched the major illusions, and oh, they're completely right. different. <laughs> the adaptation does not translate very well. However, yes, for for the evil Snake Man to die at the end, mm-hmm. you had to destroy his Horcruxes. Okay, so in in very Lord in the parallel that we're trying to make with Ankatep here, are we trying to destroy, collect, or keep separate? The well, m- what? You know so yet. in in Berilorta, he didn't want to die. That's just how they had to kill him. So Ankatep might be bringing all of them back together, knowing the only way for him to die is if all of his car are together inside of him. And you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the Sphinx has said that we'd learn more as we continue to follow the trail. So we don't even really know what it means or what the implications of him dying are. I think what they're trying to say is that even if the actual pieces, the fragments of the car, aren't, no, aren't there anymore, we need to walk in his footsteps to understand him, how he got there, what the cars were. Why then, he split his car into pieces and to begin we'll with. And then we understand how to defeat him and stop him. That's exactly yes. right. And it seems to me that he probably didn't go down those staircases, so we should turn around and leave. Yeah, well, they said not to go down there. They were very explicit. Yes, they said to just do the riddle and then leave. Do I hear any creepy skittering? Make a presumption, Jack. <laughs> oh, oh, baby. 20... Yes, yeah, absolutely. Five. Absolutely. Oh, you listen and you hear you you hear what sounds like skittering of insectoid legs or per, probably actually more likely arachnoid legs uh, that are far too large. Uh yeah, no, absolutely not. Um, all right, no, yeah, I think we can leave. All right, let's turn around. <laughs> we march right out of the, <laughs> the damn fuck uh, up. We're whatever. done. Uh, you see the two um, sphinxes, they're actually sitting uh, <coughs> like the sphinx statues. One on either yeah, side. Yeah, one on either side as they're, they're sitting there. <laughs> I love uh, sphinxes. And uh, they stand <laughs> up, uh, and Neferet looks at you and uh, says, Well, as fast as I thought you would be. Well oh, we spend some time just chit chatting. We could hear. It's very oh. echoey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Yeah, so it told us where to go. Funny enough, we were headed there to begin with. Yeah, it's like we knew. Yes, it's like we were drawn. Because if we didn't stop and find this amazing underground place, we never would have known what we were doing there. That's true. We were just going to ask around. She uh, looks at you and uh, nods and says, Well, tell us where to go. And she, uh, she leans her head down. And then the other, uh... You're going to let us have. ride you? That is... Is there the... room for Strapon? I don't think we need Strapon anymore. We can't leave Strappy on a river. Yes, we can. He lives here. This is his own. <laughs> but not know? anymore. He's used to a new life. I, I think he's been fine for all this time on his own. He's still a wild animal. We know. We've given him water and those weird turnip things. He's come to expect them. He will starve. We met him an hour ago. He spit on Caprice's face. Yeah, and, her, and his face is pinky. just fine. He's covered in scars <laughs> and blood. It looks like Deadpool. 
<laughs> it looks like an avocado with cancer. <laughs> He looks like a testicle. Can't, can't we just fit him into, into Toa's bag? <laughs> he looks like Two-Faced, but worse. I just feel like I just feel like we can stuff him into the bag. You know? He's probably fit, right? He, just stuff him. Just, uh, stuff him in the bag. Goodbye. We'll see you, Beta Camel. We, this is way faster. <laughs> I will uh, very oh, gently uh, attempt to <laughs> <laughs> climb onto uh, <laughs> You do that, uh, and you get the sense that uh, you'd probably just split up between Neferet and Ramkahan, and you can tell that Ramkahan is definitely not super happy about it, but he's doing it because, you know, he has to. Uh, and he leans Fucking down. Job, Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I hate to, to bother you, but while we're all boarding, um, <clears throat> are there people in in this oasis town yes there are the living here as oh, well as the dead thank goodness the pharaoh the god king Ankhotep, does not bother them as long as there is order he believes that the living may have just as much of a role to play in finding his and restoring his car as the dead as for the first fragment, the fragment of the river, has proven. And as long as there's order, he has left his children and his priests in charge. All mummies, all undead. But the living are here. If you interact with them, it could bring them more danger. So, noted. Well, we want to go to the oasis to the north. But first, we need to pick up strip. I really don't think we need yeah, to. Yeah, Iris, I think we should leave him. He looks so happy down there. But why don't you go say goodbye and just take off his harness and, you know, let him free. Give him one last screech. Why look, do you care I'll about... I'll look down fondly at the camel. <laughs> you... I don't think I will say goodbye to strip it would just be too painful for him. It's best he doesn't know we're abandoning him. Are you expecting me to carry it? Aren't you strong enough to? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that was obvious, Mikey. Come no. on. And that's how we got a new pet. <laughs> Iron forces of this! Camel pest! I, just I will carry him. him. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> make a fuck. <laughs> make a fuck. Make Mickey. a persuasion check. <laughs> persuasion, you said? Yeah. 24? Oh my god. <laughs> you want to see how strong I am? Get on my back, I will carry the camel. <laughs> We'll get on his back and we'll go pick up Strappy. Dude, this camel is gonna get so pissed. <laughs> He's gonna be spitting everywhere. Uh, raining acid hell uh, down the, the town. <laughs> at, at this point, you manage to just get on the backs of the Sphinx, and uh, they, you, with a loud fl a flap of the wings, they both take off, and Ramkan, who's considerably larger uh, than Neferet, uh, uh, Flies over, and you look as your as the camel. It looks absolutely horrified. <laughs> as a giant fucking winged lion, he's just sending him a. No, you can't go this game. As he then uh, grabs his paw, and he's trying to spit. As the camel's probably screaming. <laughs> He grabs and effortlessly picks it up, and, it, and you hear, and his, his eyes are wild and horrified. This is awful. We're gonna give this camel PTSD. <laughs> and you take off into the sky and fly north. Strapon pees a little bit. <laughs> a lot of it, probably. A lot of it. This is, and <laughs> Neferet's flying behind Ramkan. Oh, no. And whoever's on Neferet. I'm on Neferet. 
Uh, oh, as you both take in the sky and you fly higher and higher and higher, and you see um, the occasional uh, large bird and a few smaller ones flying. Some seem to be undead, others not. Um, as you make your way and you see is there's actually a few pockets. You see um, what looks like to be a camp. Of, uh, there's several camels all around a series of tents. There How seem many to be um, humans actually uh, walking around and as you fly closer and closer um, to this uh, great oasis, you see um, a city that looks like it could probably hold a few thousand people. Uh, no more than that, but a lot larger than you'd expect. And uh, Neferet says, uh, that is Muha. It is the only city of the living in this entire domain. Almost all of the living humans reside in those buildings. And you can see that there's a sprawling city around this oasis. Um, and you finally start to see the civilization, uh, some, some, some wagons pulled by camels and horses um, and other, another beast of burden. Um, and you see a marketplace, and as you see that, that there's, despite the, the river um, having dried up, uh, this oasis has beautiful, pristine water. Um, and you manage to uh, skirt around the city as you fly over it. And you notice, however, uh, after, uh, after uh, Ramkehan, uh, he looks like he's going to try to point. Uh, and then he starts to lose grip on, on the camel. <laughs> and he grabs it again. Oh, he no. says, look into the storm. That is what our god is fighting. And as you look, you're able to see through this incredibly dark storm that is swirling and violent, you see that beam of silver light shooting into the sky, just barely, very, very high, going all the way up until it's completely out of sight. Uh, and it looks so incredibly treacherous and violent that you have no idea how anything could survive in there, um, uh, unless it was a god. Um, and as they descend, um, you see that there is, um, that there's a bit of stone sticking up and just like the rest of the desert, there are ruins and monuments and statues all poking up from the sand in various states of disrepair. And, uh, both of the sphinxes fly down and, and you, you hear a, uh, a, a panicked, a cry of, of a heron as it sees these two massive sphinxes descending and they and uh, several of them fly away and you both land uh, as the as soon as uh, as soon as Strapon I guess I have to say it uh, <laughs> as yeah. soon as Strapon makes a touchdown on on the uh, the ground he panics and lets out a uh, a, a yelp but then his eyes flash blue and he immediately rockets over to the water and just starts drinking and drinking and drinking Aww. seemingly uh, having forgotten uh, the horrible trauma of being oh, look, thrown across the desert Strappy is so happy. That's one happy strappy. Um, and as Don't be you, sappy. And as you look... <laughs> I can't help it, Caprice. I just love happy. And as you look... <laughs> and as you happy. land uh, in oh, a... Oh, in, oh. in, in, in a patch of very lush vegetation, there's ferns, there's uh, there's uh, these uh, uh, lush palm trees, um, and uh, all sorts of greenery and reeds. Reed? Yeah. Uh, reeds. There are a bunch of reeds, and uh, you see dragonflies you skittering about. There's a, there's there's an entire herd of gazelles and antelopes that are on uh, a far bank. You see a a, a, cr a huge crocodile swimming on the top no. of the uh, uh, on the top of the oasis no, on, on the water, and then it looks at you, and then immediately descends. And you see that there's a, a number of sailboats with these large triangular sails uh, of fishermen that seem to be pulling up these uh, large hulls of fish that have all these strange coloration to them. Um, and as, the, as you hear, although you're on the other side of the oasis, you can hear music drifting across the water. As, as as notes from harps and lyres and lutes and, and the, the, the rhythm of a drum and people singing seems to uh, a sail across from the city of Muhar. As um, where you land, 
there is a uh, a patch of stone that seems to be just an unassuming ruin. But what seems familiar is the construction of that black stone with the faded gilding. It seems to be of the same type of construction as the statue of Anubis. And it's here that uh, both sphinxes let you off. And uh, Neferet looks at all of you and just nods over to that. It's uh, really a, a, a dais. Um, so the city's just built on one side of the oasis. Yep, yep. And it's it's, it's, it's like the southern side country. of the oasis. So, um, let me. Oh, shit. Oh, so, like, camera, basically, camera. here is, like, you know, the oasis is here. And the river had once gone from the north and would have gone south here. And Muhar, the city, is right Does here. Does this river flow uh, north to south or south to north? It's very important. Uh, it's south to north. Figured. There are uh, only a couple of rivers in the world that do that. Uh, and and that you awesome. all landed, like, right about here. Right, and so the city is here, and it's all built out around here and around like this area, and then you're on more in a wild side. I, I thought it wasn't helpful for. No. So anyway, it's just yeah. No, basically, that's not helpful for. No, that just viewers. looks like a, a gold <laughs> water. <laughs> the point is, is, is that that there's a big city we can see in here, but we're not like in the city. We're on the opposite side yeah. of the oasis. It's just ruins and greenery and like. Yeah, the, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the sun. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's what they say. They told me in school. Um, so... And the building that matched is on our side or in the city side? It's on your side. It's like it seems to be all, almost like shrouded uh, oh, okay. in the greenery, almost deliberately hidden by the wilds here. Um, as you see that it's it's the ruins of this, uh, this dais that's risen up. Um, that seems to be of that same con similar construction style to the statue of Anubis. That's where we're gonna go. All right, and and this is good. If we, if we want to avoid, uh, you know, talking to the people of the town to avoid avoid endangering them, then for now we'll 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 leave them be, and we can focus on this. Yeah, I wouldn't want to endanger them. They look like this actually looks really nice. They seem happy. They're playing music. I listen to the music and I try to get a sense of like the rhythms and cadences and notes and, and, and just as a bard trying to absorb the cultural sense of any uniqueness that might be important. I would say make an intelligence check and add your proficiency modifier. Yeah. 17. Oh, okay. I would say that um, you recognize, uh, you know, that these are uh, instruments that are a lot older than a lot of the ones that you would have played and made, but um, it has a beautiful uh, tonality and rhythm to it um, that you probably heard uh, bastardizations of like Nekbeshin music in like certain clubs. There might have been like certain areas where it was uh, a fad or a phase to like take that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, similar kind of vibes, but uh, this seems to be the, like the original and it seems to be a very old style. Of okay. I can hear that purity and I will start to think about how I might recreate that without doing anything. Just, just listening. Okay. I'll walk over to the Gaius, if Iris thinks it's okay. Are you ready I'm to go? Gonna... Sure. Now that I know that Strappy is happy. Strappy seems to be very happy. After after he uh, finishes drinking for a little bit, his eyes uh, stop flashing blue, <coughs> and then he goes over and he enjoys the variety of the greenery that's there. It looks like uh, the the tree stars from Nightmare uh, from not Nightmare uh, from uh, You Land are gonna Time. shut up! My uh, gosh. It looks that delicious for a camel to be eating. You don't get to say that's tree how star. happy he is. You don't get to see tree star. Um, you don't I'm just saying. Does anything look emotional more damage? Emotional than... damage. <laughs> TikTok. I know. What's well, important yes. is that that movie yes, will is. make you cry like a little bitch. 
<laughs> yes. So there's another TikTok meme, which is uh, name one thing that can make um, any millennial cry within the first like ten seconds, and they start playing the theme song for Land Before Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I literally started welling up. I was like, Oh god, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I walk over to the ruins. You do. I'll be behind. And as all of you approach, <coughs> Iris, your soul begins to glow that same gold. And all of you see in the exact same style of hieroglyphic, in the exact same uh, glow, it begins to light up around this dais as the sand shifts away. It looked very subtle, very hidden and discreet, but as soon as you approach, it starts to shift. And you see now this uh, this 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 dais, this disc that is um, that reads out a simple phrase. Sing a song that brings tears to make the river flow. Is this a riddle? I don't know. I mean, that seems kind of subjective. Brings tears to who? Who? Hoops. Oh, I always get that wrong. Do you know any sad songs, Caprice? I know a bunch of sad songs, sure. He sings one. I mean, it, do you think that it has to be uh, specifically like a uh, deserty? I think that if you know a song that makes you feel a certain way, you know, it reminds you of something sad and it's the intent, you know, it just kind of puts you in that mindset that will probably do it. Wait, do we want the river to flow? Well, we did what the last thing said. It was a riddle. This seems like a request. For what it's worth, I mean, water here is everything. It brings life. Yeah, but I just, I'm just i just curious. What does that mean for us? Do we need to go to Mahar? We could just walk across the dry riverbed. Do we need to do that first? I don't... It will escape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Yes, so uh, Tell us your idea, please. Let's go <laughs> now. Please, please. My name is Glasnov. <laughs> With Cheyenne, Wyoming Telegraph <laughs> Company. <laughs> um... Instead, I say, uh, what was I even gonna fucking say? Um, oh, and then so anyway, we we, we we did the thing, and we saw a scene. I, I don't think whatever we do is gonna actually make the river flow. I mean, it's probably been dried up for thousands of years. I think oh. we'll probably just see maybe another scene that gives us a hint. Yeah. Of where to go next? You're right. Okay. I mean, so if you if you want to, Surprise you know, no, yeah, no, sing a song. No pressure, you know. Um, I know a sad song that's loosely on theme, and I'll pull the lyrics up right now. Here they are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't. I haven't reflavored them, so apologies. This is going to be straight. Every child in Valoran has heard the tale before About the cursed mummy boy who felt his heart no more So sad and lorn, the helpless lad, Amumu was his name He ventured out to find a friend and learn about his bane I'll sing the remainder of that song, which is just fucking excellent. And by the end, you're you're crying up, you're tearing up a little bit by the end of that song. That's a classic. I haven't heard that so long. Um, I would say that that is a a song that that uh, is an an old song from Neckbat. I would say that you would know the story of a mummy. I know the story of a mummy. The sad mummy mummy boy that is now vanished from what I was listening to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you immediately Aww. pulled it out, and you know that this would be That's a very sad out. song. I need you to make a performance check at advantage for being so uh, uh, on theme here. Thank God. Um, I 
Give me some 22. 22. Mm-hmm. Not it. enough. You, as soon Sad. as you finish singing the song, the dais glows with, and 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 immediately the, the hieroglyphs fade, and you hear the <laughs> that begins to shift, and you see that beneath you, as as a scene unfolds, as you see not just the oasis, but the the roaring river from a time long gone, from uh, from south to north, and this city being far more populous and filled with 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 joy and 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 song, and suddenly you. And suddenly you all see Iris's soul begin to glow and it blasts out all around you. And you all see a vision, (laughs) the dais around you and where Iris is, you see standing a mummy lord, a pharaoh wearing golds and uh, blacks and turquoise, holding a staff, looking incredibly ancient as the bandages cling to his withered flesh, empty eye sockets staring out as a withered uh, hand with bone tips uh, uh, pointing and poking out from those withered bandages. As you see through the air, this wisping golden series of notes that is being played and sung by dozens and dozens of these humans as their 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 eyes seem to be filled with fear but they are singing a song all the same as the song swirls together and turns to a glow the exact same color that, that resides with an iris and his hand extends and it shoots into him and it fills him and causes him to glow as he has retrieved the first fragment the fragment of the river interesting and suddenly it fades and immediately all of your consciousness is whipped away from you as your eyes are blinded by by golden light and you suddenly see a vision a shared vision as you are consumed on this dais you are in Nakba you are in a land known only as the land of reeds and lotuses lost to time. The history books do not mention this. It was the time of the, before the first pharaohs that you would have known. It was a kingdom that worshiped the Assyrian pantheon. And there was the high priest of Anubis, Ankhotep. He served his god dutifully and he served his pharaohs dutifully. One generation, then another generation, and then a third generation. A boy king, his father fell ill with the plague too early. And so he became the pharaoh at a very young age and Strife began to come over the land of reeds and lotuses. Indecision, fear, and emotion that Ankhotep did not feel befitting a pharaoh of this land that would only lead to ruin. And he believed that the people would agree. And so, You see this pharaoh with his priests in a beautiful temple in the shape of a jackal, rising uh, rising tall, overlooking a brilliant river. 
plotting in secret against this boy king and feeling a call towards the forbidden desert across the West Bank where none were ever permitted to go for dark things lurked and madness and death would befall those who would venture there. Suddenly the vision fades and you all, your consciousness returns. As a scene, the hieroglyphs that had all been there shift and change and glow with another riddle. <gasps> a riddle. What is large yet never grows, has roots that cannot be seen, is taller than trees. Large but doesn't grow. Yeah, no, Roots no. unseen, taller than trees. <clears throat> well, the mountains are pretty big. <laughs> As it glows. You did! Uh, you got oh, it! I told you! <laughs> I told you! I solved the riddle, Felix! It's my very first riddle! I knew you could do it! Oh man, that feels Good cool. job, Toa! I had no idea what it was! I just thought of something really big that's stole the trees! <laughs> well, that works! You, you, you don't have to, you just shout them out when you know them, you know? Oh yeah, I guess. I'm proud of you. Wow. Well done. That's a that really good! Felix. I'm proud of you too, Toa! Oh my goodness! Thank you. Look at you! <laughs> You're so stinking smart, Toa Kamanui. The, when we get back to reality, I'm going to buy you a big... And big suddenly something. a mosaic so appears below your feet on the dais. Oh, God. A scene emerges in a great <clears throat> uh, series of mountains and canyons. You see rock formations that wind and form what looks like a snake. And spires that rise up almost like ribs in a cage. <clears throat> That's what you see. So that was really, really good. We are flying. I love this. Did, did everyone uh, briefly lose consciousness yes. and see a whole... Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Neck oh, yeah. Ancient yeah. neck bit. Yeah, and we watched like a, a whole story yes, play Yes, like out, a major image. Thing. So okay. you recognize the river, that's where you're from? Yes. Ah. It's beautiful. So Onkatep was a priest, the head priest of Anubis. So it would seem. And he parted with his priest to do something to the pharaoh. I think he was. I he, thought he was he, the He priest. was the boy king, right? What? Or was Onkatep was was the, the priest, right? was a priest yeah, yeah. who had served the grandfather and the father of and the so boy he, king. so when the boy king... When the boy king, king rose to power... So he was the jackal-headed priest plotting against them. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yep. So I did to kill not the, catch wanted to yeah. kill the pharaoh. But we don't have the whole story. I think we're, we might learn more as things progress. Yes, this is really... He blamed the boy king for the strife that Nekbet had succumbed to. It seemed like he just wanted to help the people and thought they'd agree, but... I get a bad feeling. Did something horrible. Yeah. Well, what was the 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 car that we witnessed? That was probably more recent, or more recent, I guess. Yes, I think there were two separate things. The first scene was when he took his car back so from the, car the river. So the was in the song, maybe of of the people, or it at least enabled him to to get it. Something there, obviously, something is at play there with the music. I know we've got a lot left to learn about yes. this Ankatep guy, but it seems like it's going to be a real riches to rags story. <laughs> oh, I get it. All, All right. right, you're right on top of it. Mountains and puns with you today. All right. right, I need you to make an intelligence check for me. Okay. Or actually, religion. <laughs> Not today. You haven't rolled a higher Not than a five. Today, it's, ten. A, it's twenty or five or lower. <laughs> I think that's actually enough because it's wow. a memory that you experienced. Okay. Oh. When you first were visited by Ankatep from the slithering shadows of that crypt, um, you experienced a vision, and you yeah. saw seven things. 
basically, and experience seven things. One of which was a song of lute, harp, drum, and voice. That's right. Holy shit. I don't remember that vision at all. Nikki doesn't. You Iris, I'm sure. You experienced that. that. You experienced a withered heart in a rib cage. Oh, yeah. An onk with an unblinking eye. Hold on. Onk. Heart plus rib cage. A, a what? Blinking heart. An onk, onk with, with an unblinking, unblinking eye. Eyes. Okay. Um, you saw a uh, canopic jar, the skeletal jackal head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, I'm sure. Okay. Golden eagle circling beneath the sun. Ooh. So cryptic. Eagles like... or eagle? Eagle. Single Gold. giant golden eagle. Well, it looked very large. It's hard to tell. It's like a, a gull shaped like an e. Okay. Like an eagle. And then um, uh, the face in a sandstorm. The face... Oh. A face in the sandstorm. And what was the seventh one? What? Just kidding. You. <laughs> that was six, right? Yeah. It's like, did I fuck this whole thing up? <laughs> no, imagine. Good. That would have been Can you imagine? Imagine. <laughs> All right, sorry, guys. Can- uh, Such is canceled. I fucked it up. Uh, <laughs> there's actually a piece of cut. It was the secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst here in the DM. piece of eight. <laughs> Called the uh, Mac. Guff in piece. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Every arc has seven MacGuffins. Um, that's what you see. Okay. All right, well, I think we need to go to the mountains. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yes, the canyon. Are we going to the canyon? Well, I thought, I thought we saw a canyon. Uh, yeah, that... there's like canyon. Canyon down. through the mountains. Looks like yeah. a snake. Yes, that you drew on the map. You even drew it. It's you, you've snaky. mentioned the canyons a million times. Yeah, and you draw them so oh, nice. I really wanted to go to the canyons. I didn't think we'd actually get to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> Sphinxy poos never at the wrong game. I don't know. I get Indiana uh, Jones: The Last Crusade vibes thinking about it. Are they still it. there? <laughs> yeah, they're still there. They're, they're far enough away. Uh, they're just, they're, they're, every, basically, every chance they get, they're just sitting like statues and they're very still as they're watching you. I love with, your sphinx And pose. even though they have these human-like faces, their they're, they're eyes are almost like cat-like as they look at you. Is one of them have uh, snake tongues? Oh uh, yeah, they both have snake tongues, why not? Perfect, um, excellent. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, these aren't the five <laughs> e-sphinxes that are literally just lions with wings. Like, they look far more sphinxy, sphinxy than just lions with wings. Uh, and uh, they they both stand up and walk forward, and Neferet says, Where are we headed next? Well, as long as Romkehen is not too tired to carry the camel, we are headed to... <laughs> this motherfucker's gonna drop that camel. He's gonna hit the sand like a fucking burlap sack full of... I have never been tired! <laughs> well, why would we take him from this paradise? This is the... This, he's, I've never seen him so happy. Or barely ever before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he seems great. He seems really happy. We should leave him here. You want to take him to a horrible mountain? It seems cruel. I mean, what does, is there's no water he, there? And he his does, eyes don't glow. He does seem to have everything he needs here. He's never been happier. In the time that we've known him. <laughs> He's such a happy strappy. Strappy, you want to stay here? <laughs> Can we roll the skipper's pizza again? Out of the other side! Make your animal handling joke. <laughs> Please! Should you click your tongue? <laughs> your, your lips are all like eroded and peeled back of your mouth. Your eyelids are <laughs> away. Oh my god. A 1 and a 20. I'm going to use a bardic inspiration <laughs> to increase my own roll by 10. <laughs> what you roll? A 1. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> this camel fucking hates you. Hey, Strapper, you want to stay here? <laughs> and, ah! Twelve points of point of uh, acid damage. No! Caprice, are you all right? Oh! I can't see out of both of my eyes. Strappy, no! Bad camel, don't do that! 
I would not call him bad. Or you're gonna end up like this guy. Like we need to get <laughs> proper discipline. <laughs> Am I okay? You really make that camel mad. Is my face okay? It's, Can I um, still perform on a stage? I, not I, if people are eating. Uh, I'm gonna say you probably have a face for radio now. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to D&D. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can fix it. Nothing a long rest can fix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure your steel will <laughs> left all over your yeah. face. Think about the horrible injuries we've been through and all we should be like, I'm just going to sleep it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, my face grew back. Disfiguring acid damage. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out. Yeah. <laughs> Holy all shit. Right. I've never rolled anything lower than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst possible outcome statistically that could have possibly happened. Especially for a fucking skill monkey. I was gonna like, say, yeah. <laughs> yeah like with, with jack of all trades plus, you know, all the shit that you have. And like, <laughs> That's amazing. Well, it does seem like disturbing him is really has really soured his day and we don't want to ruin the rest of his evening. So, Strappy, we'll, we'll see you later. Nothing says we can't come visit. He looks at you and just, he looks. And then there's a bit of recognition that he goes back to eating the delicious tree star looking See, thing. he looks so happy. And then as you see off in the in the river, um, you see this, uh, this almost snake-like head rise up with fins. It's, it has aquatic features. And then another, and another is what looks like. It's very far off. What looks like the heads of a massive aquatic hydra swims through this lake and then descends back uh, sure. beneath the I'm water. I'm sure that Hydra isn't going to kill and devour S- Strappy yeah, if we leave be, him. He'll be fine. they got plenty of camels around here. Or did. <laughs> anyway. It's heading in the direction of the gazelles at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Strappy. Goodbye, Strappy. <laughs> 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 I'm already on top of one of those things. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it on too. And uh, she says, "Well, to the path of the asp." And uh, the what? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Muhar Oasis. And uh, they both take off, and you fly. And as you uh, uh, glide over um, the city a little bit uh, closer than you had when you arrived, you see now that there's a number of guards walking through, and uh, there's a very heavy guard presence, and you realize underneath that armor, they're moving like uh, undead. There are mummies and skeletons that are patrolling these streets. Uh, very clearly, despite this being a place um, of life, uh, it is very clearly ruled by the dead. And you fly over Muhar, leaving a <coughs> verdant oasis behind you, the largest oasis in this entire dark <coughs> domain. And you have to skirt, uh, skirt south enough that you can avoid the breath of the forgotten, the massive sandstorm that en- encases the Black I'm Pyramid. Say, you know, and uh, you you fly out of it, and even w- you, you you get the sense that um, both sphinxes take you far enough south to avoid it, but you you immediately feel the pain of the of the of the sand uh, being whipped around from that, even as far away from it as you are, as you manage just to fly and skirt it, and you you arrive at the mountains looming uh, taller and taller. As at this point, um, the sun is almost ready to sink behind them uh, as it's approaching uh, sunset. Because you've been traveling for quite a while today, and um, you see now what looks like. Uh, the, the you see the canyons that are descended, and you see these huge scorpions uh, uh, skitter around, and you see um, these gigantic uh, cobras slither in and out of, of holes. As you understand why they call it the path of the asp, not necessarily for the snakes, but as for the sneaking uh, pattern of the canyons that go through these mountains. And you see now what had been depicted, what looks like the rib cage of a giant on its back but it's just simply rock formations as you then land and bow sphinxes let you off. And you see now, you get the sense that um, the sphinxes know exactly where they're going. As they then, where they drop you off, uh, it's deep 
within a canyon, these massive uh, uh, rock formations that look like ribs coming up all around you and hidden very, um, very discreetly. Uh, once again, half buried in sand, you see the top of a black and gold uh, dais um, that seems to be very discreet. Welcome, Arcadian Seas. Oh, hello, Arcadian Seas. Hello. hello. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. I uh, take a deep breath in. Ass. Very dangerous. What? What? Asps. Very poisonous. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. What's an asp? A type of snake, I think. Yeah, it's a snake. Oh. I thought you said ass. I think you just misheard me. As as I be, as I like, do, I'm gonna like begin to climb down off of uh, Neferat, and and I'm going to uh, address her as I'm climbing down and say, uh, I, yeah, "Pardon me if this is a dumb question, but you would think that if all of these things and clues that we're going from might hold the secrets to to unraveling this whole plan, that they'd be better guarded than this. Well, I mean, what's going on?" You yourself said all of this was some sort of elaborate prison. Don't, don't most prisons have guards? There are... There are powers at work here, imprisoning the Pharaoh. But simply because you have been guided by the architect, one of the architects of this prison, do not think that Ankhotep did not spend millennia searching for these. How long until we draw Ankhotep's attention? It will be unavoidable once we arrive at the end of our journey, when you face Anub Satan. Okay. All right. For you must destroy his physical form. Send the god of chaos and destruction back to the lower plains. Right. Right, well, we can do it. We can do this. You've done similar things before. Killed, like, demon guys and sent them back to the lower plains. We'll be fine. Never a god before, though. I mean, this is sort of different. Anyways... <laughs> turn my and make it off. Make it off the six. You do that. <laughs> that was in a weird mood. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so you see the dais. Well, I, we should. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. See what it says. Let's riddle it up. And as you approach, once again, you see the sand shift away magically as Iris is. Uh, soul begins to glow that same color and once again hieroglyphs uh, emerge and it says prove you possess the heart of the mountain to restore the withered heart heart of the mountain to restore the withered heart withered What does that mean? What's the heart of the mountain? Prove that you have the, the, the heart of the mountain. What's at the heart of the mountain? Lava? Was it a volcano? I mean, it, it, could, it could simply just mean having resolve. It could be, you know, proving that you're strong enough to, 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 to that you have the heart of the mountain, resolute and stout. Uh, to, to, you know, have the, have the resolution to restore the Wither Heart. This doesn't seem like a riddle. There's not like no. one word type operation. Some sort of a like... display. Maybe it means like a mountain is made of rocks. Maybe it means to be made of rocks. I'm 38% rocks. Yeah, well if anybody has the heart of a mountain, it's you. Yeah, go and uh, mountain it up. You know, I'm, I'm gonna let you have this. You know what? Go you know, for it. Mount the dais. Yeah. Even if it's not about being 38% rock or more, or less, if it's about heart, there's no one better to take this challenge than you. Yeah. 
Ah, but the rock thing doesn't hurt either. Are you really made of rock? No, I don't think so. I think it was more like just, you know, Where'd stories you get the 38%? guys would tell. Oh, it was a, a Futurama reference. <laughs> Dull, my baby. <laughs> my man witch! <laughs> It's dull, my baby. <laughs> I'm 42% percent only. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then I, I can uh, always try. I'm a bard, so I'm like 100% rock hard all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Does that work on any girls? Is that how your pants No, I ripped? need to see a doctor right away. <laughs> <laughs> it's been years. Uh, oh, I'll walk up to the to That's the dais, uh -huh. and I'll say, uh, "What was it again?" Just so I have the the, the reference correct. Prove you have the heart of the mountain. To restore the way they are. Yeah. I'm not sure how to prove it. I just say your name, and you're made of rock, and you have a big heart. Heart, though. Yeah, heart. How? Heart. 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 Uh, heart. Heart. Hello, oh, Dyers. Heart. I am Toa Kamanui of the Makani Islands. And, um, I have the heart of the mountain because, like I said, over there, I'm made of the mountain. Um, we say at home that Goliaths are, are we are, we are made of stone, we are made of rocks, and even though I don't think that's literally true, I still have flesh, I can still bleed. Um, they say we're cut from the mountains because we're tough peoples. We, we value the values of a mountain, being sturdy and big and stable. And you know, we like to have stability, we, we, we value tradition. We value honor, we value our ancestors. Really, the, the only thing that keeps us stable in life are all those sorts of things. And so, uh, my, my, my home is in my heart, and, and my home is basically mountains. Because volcanoes are basically mountains. So it was loud. Make a constitution check and add your proficiency modifier, please. <laughs> I'm waiting so for cute. one of these days, like we give an impassioned speech, and then Mike's like, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, he will never do that. I'll do that. Yeah. 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 All right, fair enough. I'm Touché. the one who's like, that's not the solution, no. though. You forgot to turn it counterclockwise, you <laughs> fucking idiot. You Three hours later, <laughs> donkey. You absolute fool. Uh, I'm the kind of DM is like, Impress me? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's the answer. Hmm, I like that. Go 21. Ahead. 21. Nice. <clears throat> Just like the scene before, or the, it, at the Muhar Oasis, here the dais in the path of the asp, this, a scene unfolds beneath you, and you see a bird's eye view of this pathway that looks like a curved spine with ribs and directly where the heart would be suddenly flourish, and you see a massive rock uh, rise up and it pulses like a beating heart. And then once again, Iris's soul glows and it blasts, and you see once again the image of Ankhotep. And he stares uh, down underneath this uh, outcropping in the canyon. And there, uh, buried in the sand, sticking up is a skeleton. The head is off to the side, a brittle rib cage, and a withered purple heart that's cracked. And he reaches down and he grabs it and pierces it with his bony fingers and it explodes into golden light and channels into his hand as he retrieves the fragment of the mountain. And then, once again, your visions leave you. And through the chaos of the rule of this boy king, this boy pharaoh, and the plotting, you see a boat go across to the western bank and wander into the forbidden desert in Nakba. The lone man 
wearing a hood. Not his vestments. As Angatep wanders, called by something. He believes it to be his god. He believes that Anubis has provided the answer. As he makes his way through and the it's treacherous, he sees unspeakable horrors. The living dead, dark monstrosities, and natural disasters and strange magics that miraculously do not claim him. And in the middle of a sandstorm, he stumbles forward and his hand hits something cold and dark and metallic in the sand. And he pulls it up and it seems to be a crown, a black metal crown in the shape of a scorpion. And it hums with energy. And he realizes that it's not Anubis that called him here. The entropy and the chaos and the destruction that hums in this crown, that's not the God beneath the mountain, the Lord of the dead. That is a much greater God. For it was Anubis and the worship of Anubis that had brought the kingdom to ruin. No, Anubis was not the rightful right hand of the Pharaoh. And certainly Osiris not, the presumed head of the Pantheon. And with a grim determination, Ankhotep places the crown within his robes and returns back to his king. And suddenly your consciousness returns. What was that? Another vision. I but think. the crown, where did that, who did that belong to? Where did it come from? <laughs> Another riddle appears on the dais. What is always old and sometimes new, never sad, sometimes blue, never empty, but sometimes full, never pushes, always pulls. <clears throat> you need again? Yes, yes, please. What is always old and sometimes new? Never sad. Hold on. Oh, sorry. I'm doing really fast. Okay, never sad. And uh, never sad, sometimes blue. Sometimes blue. Sometimes blue. Never empty, but sometimes full. Never pushes, always pulls. I got it. What is it? Well, 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 get, uh, just give me a moment. That's what I was saying. Does anybody want to take a guess first? Um, always, always this is fun. Well, well I think never that, <clears throat> the only time we've ever gotten it right, someone's just shouted it out. Well, I just wanted to give Caprice a shot. He seemed like he was right on the edge of something. Well, I didn't I give him a shot. I was just either. finishing writing down the translation. I haven't had a moment to think about it. All right, go ahead. Always old. Sometimes new. Never sad. Sometimes blue. Is it... No, nah, nah, I got it. You go. It's the moon. Oh. Well, look at you. Clever. The feel stupid. The dais shifts and a scene emerges. Once again, 
you all know the drill at this point. Great vast dunes beneath a night sky, the stars twinkling, and a series of obelisks that seem to form a ring that once it pulls out looks to be an unblinking eye. Look at the brain on Brad. <laughs> Look at the big brain on Brad. The big brain on <laughs> Correct. This is. You hear Anubis say, correct a mundo. <laughs> Anubis is actually voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I and wish. Avantris I Power. remember asking you a goddamn thing. <laughs> there are motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking pyramid. <laughs> well, an ass will show up and bites Capri's in the face. <laughs> 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 oh god. <laughs> um Okay, so sorry, what what happened? The thing shifts See Uncle Tap one more time! <laughs> it shifts and shows um a series of obelisks uh in the rising up from the dunes um of a beneath a night sky. First of all, do you know what they call a Big Mac in Harakir? <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, uh, river, we went to a river. Mountain, we went to a mountain. Are we going to the fucking moon? <laughs> um, no. I, I, I'm not... I think we're going into desert while the moon is out. I, I'm not sure it, these are all literal. I want to be going to the moon. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. Which moon? The moon. Is there a moon on this plane? I guess there is. Uh, Felix would have seen the moon. Yeah, yeah. it's a very uh, it's a very large moon, but it it um it looks very blue. It looks at least the one that you had seen definitely an unnatural blue. There's no hag in the moon. Uh, in oh, this oh, really? Uh, there's no hag. It looks there's like a mummy in the moon. It looks like uh, the moon in Aladdin. Like it's very blue. No, there's just the tiny yeah. face of Willy the Worm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's what actually the moon's actually not an orb. It's a uh, spherical. Oh it's God. about three feet <laughs> long. Yeah, and it's all long. <laughs> and he's just gonna fucking ocarina of time. No, no, no. no uh, Majora's mask. <laughs> yeah. He's start to make his way closer and closer to the horizon. All right. Well. Uh, okay. Well, let's go out to the desert and uh, find out what's next. Huh? All right. Is anyone hungry? Should we stop and have like hot dogs? I don't know. What? Oh, maybe we can have a. Oh, what are they calling? Is it a, is it a double pharaoh with cheese instead? That's pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> no, Thanks. I mean we've been walking all day. I just thought maybe we want some. Food. Really, but we've I been riding not. on that. We Fuck should ask me. if they want some dinner. We've been flying on their backs all day. Hey, sphinxes! <laughs> Y'all eat. Y'all eat. Y'all eat. Well, I am a living creature, you know. I am not a statue. I didn't. Yeah. I, I have no idea what you are. We've met the endless creatures who don't hunger or, or any of that stuff. What so do you knows? eat exactly? Because you're like liony, but birdy, but also. And if the answer is camel, body. don't say it in front of Iris. <laughs> you seem like <laughs> beasts. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Does he have lion mouth? Human mouth. Human it's, it's a humanoid mouth. Yeah, it's a little bit feline. It's like the cat's movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's an Andrew's face. Yeah, so it, it, but he has he has very sharp teeth. The jaw is, you know, it's it looks like he could tear into some. some I don't camp. like that. You can oh, take I that love back. This. This is good. Yeah, I don't like him. Okay, well. Oh, we're... that was my other question. They walk on fours, not uppies. No, no, they're in lion body basically. Mm -hmm. Very lion body, um, kind of a headdress mane situation. What are you smiling about, smirky jerky? I was thinking about... <laughs> he says, hey, how you doing? I was thinking about what, hey, what their can... most favorite part of the camel would be. <laughs> what is it? The hump. Their toes. Oh. Ew. Some delicacy. The camel toes. I was reading about... Speaking of uh, Royale fleshy. cheese, toes. You come in full Quentin Tarantino circle. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we move on. Yeah. <laughs> Uno Farto 316. Oh, Did you know their humps are made out of fat? Yeah. yeah. Shut up. If a camel gets... Wait. <laughs> what did you think? It was bone? No. I mean, what, that makes sense. I just really never really thought about air? it. Air? I don't know enough about camel biology. I didn't know it was just pure if they get fat. If they get thirsty, does yeah. the, it, this is like also where they, they store water, right? So yeah. Like, no, it's it's where they store fat. Oh. So fat holds water. And so right. that's why we yeah, can dry fast. Every molecule of fat is tied to 
at least one molecule of water, something like that. Anyways, you no. all, uh, Neferet no. says... So oh, yes, technically that's where they store their water. Yes, the miss... Teach the missing monuments. After you described to her in detail of where, they, water where water it showed, and the sun has sunk <laughs> beneath the horizon, and Stick night has fallen over a uh, hark here. Like a coconut. Well, uh, do you guys know where that is? Because uh, I don't know if I put it on my map. Yes, it is closer to the center of this dread domain. Well. We're not going to have to cross through the, uh... That is north of us. We will not go back there until Anubis is restored, if we are to succeed. And I'm in. Let's go. All right. I'll climb on. You climb on to their backs, and you once again take off into the sky, and the night sky is actually shockingly pleasantly cool, especially the further away you get from the north side of this dread domain. Mm. Um... Uh, the, the the howling wind whipping uh, uh, coarse sand uh, now now behind you and it's and it, it doesn't get super cold but it's 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 cool enough that you feel uh, relieved from the heat of the day and you see all manner of ruins but uh, as you look ahead you see what had been uh, in in this in this divot between basically this mass almost like a valley within the dunes, you see the, the ring of basically the upper half of um, obelisks that seem to form in their construction. You get the sense would form uh, from looking, uh, seen from directly above, a very large eye. That's it. And as they land, you see the center rising up lower than the others a black and gold dais that might be the pupil of this eye. Well, this is the dais for the onk of the unblinking eye. Yeah. Does Caprice get a sense that this valley with the eye shape in it um, would be on the return path of the undead army if we're getting back closer to the center? So, just thinking about, like, if we if we're here-ish because we've been in the canyons and we're heading back towards the center, I'm worried that we might cross this path or be adjacent to it. So you get you've been you're kind of like right here, is that what I'd say? They went from like basically here to here, and you presumably back. Oh. Basically, back, 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 back. Like that's that's basic. Thank they're you. staying on the. You would presume, given everything you've seen, they're staying on the western half or the western portion okay. of this of this uh, domain. And Caprice has no fears. It's also been a long time. Yes, it's been a while. Left. You've been traveling quite a bit. I just didn't want us to be like, totally. hey, everything's totally safe and fine yeah. in an undead army. So Fair enough. Shadow, shadow Kai, you know? They're, yeah, absolutely. Understood. Um, you you see uh, off in the distance um, what looks like uh, a number of uh, hyenas running. Uh, and upon closer inspection, you actually see that their their ribs are are appearing through undead uh, hides as they seem to be running in an undead pack, and they hear these guttural, a uh, dry rasping uh, uh, snickers and laughs. But they seem to be uh, just running over uh, over a dune and do not disturb you as you land and you see this dais ahead of you. And as you approach, the Dice glows with hieroglyphs, and you see a phrase that says, show the change that comes with the phases of the moon to bring the moon to the eye. One more time. Show the change that comes with the phases of the moon to bring the moon to the eye. Hmm. <clears throat> All the changes that change with the phases of the moon. Well, I mean, at least, you know, back home, amount, um, the amount of light that there is at night would be one change. I mean, other than the passage of time, right? Time moves as the phases of the the moon change. How do you bring it to the eye, though? I don't know. 
either they want, maybe they want a lot of light, uh, or, or something that simulates a full moon shining on the eye. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I know magics that bring sunlight, but nothing that brings moonlight. I think it probably just wants to... One of us needs to talk about change. And maybe how they've changed. Maybe. That's certainly better than my idea. Does anyone want to go? I mean, you've changed a lot since we've started. Felix, you've changed. I mean, we've all changed a lot, I guess. We've been through a lot. Uh, it's worth a shot. I'm happy to give it a go. I'll uh, walk up to the dais. To do that. Um, dais? Me said dais. <laughs> dais, come and me one go home. Dais! Me said dais, me said dais, me said dais, me said dais, me said dais. Um, Thank you, Derek. God damn it. <laughs> I've forgotten what I was going to fucking do. <laughs> I get charged with lightning and I can <laughs> Your shrimp reaches out and grabs your face. Um, yeah. yeah I get the camel just shows up from behind the face. <laughs> <laughs> the hyena's tackling you. <laughs> Pick the flesh from your bones. Um... When I started this adventure, I was a, a less humble person than I am now. I mean, I'm still full of uh, confidence, but I know what I don't know kind of confidence. Uh, when I when I started off, I thought I could conquer the whole world all by myself, and I learned that was not the case. Uh, it was uh, unpleasant. It was uh, a lot of hard change, but good. I, I don't regret a, a minute of it. Um, just like the phases of the moon, I have gone from a new moon, one of darkness, to one of illumination, where I now feel like my eyes are wide open. Make a wisdom check and add your proficiency. Twenty-six. Wow. Very nice. So close, Derek. Yeah. So close. <laughs> Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Yeah. Twenty-six. The the dais below you shifts and changes and you see a full moon shining down over uh, the obelisk, all of them adorned with the watchful eyes of, of Horus. You would recognize Iris as they glow with a bright blue and then uh, and then you see as Iris's soul glows, the ka within her glows, you see once again that shimmering golden form, the vision of Ankhotep, as he uh, uh, hovers, levitates before the very top of an obelisk. At its, at its zenith, you see an Ankh built of the same stone and holding that same eye of Horus, stares indifferently at him. He uh, reaches forward and snatches it, and as he holds it up, it hums and glows with that same golden light. And as he, uh, as, as he holds it, it shakes and vibrates and suddenly bursts forward, and all of that energy rushes into him, and he drops the arc into the sand. And your vision shift once again. It is night beneath the moon. In this 
the land of reeds and lotuses. You see priests of Anubis led by Ankhotep, the crown of the scorpion hidden beneath his Anubian jackal headdress. As he walks forward into the throne room, the boy king sitting, being advised by priests of Osiris. From beneath their robes, the priests pull their blades and slaughter all of them. The pharaoh, the entire clergy of Osiris, and the entire temple guard. It is a night of absolute bloodshed that Ankhotep believes will finally bring prosperity, if not peace, to the land. And with the slaughter of the priests of Osiris, there's the rejection of the failed god of the dead as they cast down their jackal headdresses. They reject Anubis and instead of holding the god of death and the god of the dead as the primary deities of this land, it is now the god of chaos, Set. He is the god of the land. And thus it was so, and that was the religion of this kingdom. And with this dark night, this night of evil, this night of chaos, this night of bloodshed, the heavens shake and there's bloodshed amongst the gods. Your, your vision returns. You've just finished witnessing this vision and once again, the hieroglyphs emerge on the dais and uh, you get another riddle. Mm -hmm. Some try to hide, some try to cheat, but time will show we always will meet. Try as you might to guess my name. Oh. <laughs> ah, man, I love this. Today's just been a fantastic day for me. <laughs> Say it again. Some try to hide. Some try to hide. Some try to cheat. Some try to cheat. Time will show. Time will show. We will always be. Mm, I wonder mm. where we're headed next. Does it start with a D? I think so. I think so yeah, as well. In, in I mean, Toe probably doesn't think so. But... I don't know. Death. <laughs> It felt right, I should be the one to say. It. As you give the dais the D, uh, the death. <laughs> Jesus. And, and death. Me said death. And you see the face of the boy king. And you realize that it is not his flesh and blood but made of stone, built into the side of a mountain, you see a great statue of the boy king larger than life, flanked by crumbled effigies of gods, perhaps forgotten or defaced, but all forbidden here in this land. <coughs> For then it fades. We got it. Well done. All right. Well, on to the next one. The story's not finished yet. We have to continue on the hero's journey. The, uh, at, at hearing this, Neferet nods, and once again, they're in their, uh, recline poses and they're allowed they allow you to they welcome you on their backs and they take off into the night sky and Neferet nods and says yes that is Husin Ka's tomb the last 
Pharaoh of the land of reeds and lotuses. For Ankhotep was merely a pretender king. And you fly. What was the name, what of, was the name of the name of Husen Ka? That was the boy. Husen Ka. For your song, Derek. Husen Ka. Husaka. Yeah. That was the boy king's name? Yep. Okay. Husaka's tomb. H-U-S-E-H space K-A-H. Mm. Husaka. I spelled it so wrong. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I would have as well. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm just Ho- reading from the book. Hooked on phonics work for me. That was one of the names I did rename. <laughs> Gotta have something for the book. Uh, and... Uh, you begin to fly south and you see that swirling sandstorm that had been called the breath of the false making its way across the plains and as you fly away you see the billowing dust clouds and sand clouds swallow the missing monuments the obelisks where you have been and you make your way to uh, another range of mountains uh, not nearly as, as winding, filled with winding canyons, but you see what looks like a cliff face, completely sheer, and you see a platform that has this massive tomb built into it with the statue of the slain boy king that you had seen, Husaka. And you see that there is a large double stone door, and the the, the figures on either side of this boy king, despite the statue of him not being defaced, every single one has had their faces smashed in. They seem to be humanoid in various garbs, but the very likely animal-headed or otherwise would have made them distinguishable. Very deliberately smashed. I know I'm asking a lot of questions, uh, Neferat, and maybe these questions will be answered as we keep going, but I can't help but think if Ankhotep was originally in some ancient form of Nekbet, and and this boy king was a ruler, then how did he end up here? Or was this place originally a part of Evandris? That is for you to learn in this journey. You will have the full picture when it is time to face a new Satan. Right, right. Sorry, I my, my brain just gets ahead of me sometimes. All right. It was a good question, though. Yeah, it's the same thing I've been wondering. What links them? Either he was banished here, or this might have been a part of Avengers at one point. By the way, I'm glad it was punishment. I'm glad he's suffering for what he did. You land, they let you off, and you see that although there's a heavy stone double door, huge, in this temple, despite having been slain, someone built this thing in his honor. And there is a large crack in the door, or rather the door is cracked open with a very large entrance where even Toa could shimmy on in, should you choose. All right. Thank you. As I get off, I need to go inside. Is there anything we should keep in mind just to be respectful? Presumably if there was some sort of cultural, you know, bleed over from one dynasty to the next. Don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. Don't touch that which doesn't belong to you. And... Just... Be respectful. It's not fart on any skeletons, or make any dick jokes. Never done that either. (laughs) Or expose yourself. Not only by accident. (laughs) How is those pants holding up? You know, I really. (laughs) (laughs) Fine. (laughs) Let's go on in. We go in. You enter. <laughs> and you see 
a very large tomb where there had that original temple of Anubis that you had been in had been relatively very relatively small small place of worship you see a room that is filled with uh, numerous uh, uh, large gilded jars that who knows what that what they are filled with some are smashed you can see that there's withered ancient uh, desiccated perhaps uh, food you see uh, coins scattered about number of weapons skeletons littered all around you see areas that have uh, shelves built into the stone chamber. Um, some with jars smash, others with, with glittering jewels. Uh, um, religious objects and ornaments. But every bit of religious effigy has been smashed, defaced, torn apart, and the very center, shockingly intact, is a huge stone sarcophagus. And you see now that by to, to one side, very nearly buried under broken pottery and piles of gold and gems, you see a bit of a bit of black stone with gilded edges as the dais is, has raised up in this tomb. Is Iris glowing? If you're approaching. Yeah. As you approach, you hear the clinking of metal. It's the coins minted. And long, long ago, shift and are pushed away just like the sand and the rock in previous situations and you see his iris close so do the hieroglyphs appear you've said my name prove that you have no fear of me I'm feeling very smooth brain today. Mm -hmm. I think the loss of Strappy the Camel has done me in. We need to prove that we're not afraid of death. What we've done. Well, I'm not afraid of death at all. I never have been. Tell us why. Well, okay. I'm not afraid of death. I'm <laughs> not afraid of death. I don't care if I die or live. I just... Okay. <laughs> well, I've never been afraid. I've been on my own since I was so little. And I've been fighting since I could stand. I've gone all around the world and I've met so many people and... A lot of people take advantage of me because I'm tiny, but that's never stopped me before. And honestly, since I've run into all of you, I've I've been scared, I've been frightened of certain things, but never of death. Because we always come through when we work together. And of course I'm very strong. And very fast now, so even if death wanted to catch me, probably could not. But in the end, even if I die, I've spent a life doing good things with good people. And so death doesn't scare me. Let him come. Make a wisdom check, add your proficiency, please. Good. Oh your wisdom's good. Yeah, you're a monk. But my dice are bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're bad our dice. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's solid. right down the middle. Big money. Solid. What yes, is that'll be enough. Two? Uh, wisdom check? So, oh, yeah. What? It's It'll be your wisdom two. plus your proficiency. Plus proficiency. So five. So seven. seven. Seventeen. That's oh, awesome. basically a yeah. wisdom saving throw. Acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the 
day explodes <laughs> as you see the sarcophagus <clears throat> and the shadows that loom over it. Numerous people cowering in fear, some trying to run, but one figure standing amidst the inevitable fate of all mortal creatures. This is a land of death, revered by those who worship the gods of death. It is nothing to fear. And as that happens, Iris's call, the soul glows gold, and you see that shimmering form of the mummy lord as he holds a canopic jar and a ruined tomb, the head, an animal, a jackal's head, but skeletal. Ruin. This is not the head of any god. This is the head of an abominable mockery of the gods. The head of Noob Satan. As he holds that canopic jar, he grabs the lid and opens it and it blasts with golden energy. As he opens his mouth and breathes it in into long, dead, withered, crumbled lungs. And as the fragment of death fills what remains of his soul. You all once again see a vision. And the vision is the bloodshed amongst the heavens. But what you see before you is temple walls, a mosaic in the plains of good the plains above, a grand desert far more grand than this land of death, with great pyramids, a man, a pharaoh, gemstone skin, shimmering green, butchered by a beast that does not exist, donkey, aardvark, greyhound, cobra, an amalgamation, as Set slays Osiris rips apart, tears his body into 14 pieces, scatters it to the winds in the plain of Acadia. The the temple wall mural of all of these gods helpless to stop what has happened. The leader, the ruler, the head of the Osirian pantheon, named after this god, now slain, is a cataclysmically powerful event from where it originated. As the power that Set, the god of chaos, has gained from the night of evil, the night of betrayal, all of the hands of Ankhotep. Suddenly the great pyramid the great palace where this happens glows and rumbles and all those in the land of reeds and lotuses hear a voice call out but there are no words it's maddened babbling maddened shrieking the voice of the chain god thar's doom The power was not just for Set, but to bring about, to summon, and to unchain the god that had once been chained in time immemorial. And within this tomb, the final resting place of the boy king, now untuned soon, was to be the chain god. And with that, your consciousness returns. Oh my gosh. And 
These are getting really intense. Well, you can just kill a god like that? I wouldn't have thought so. I don't even know what's real anymore. Well, I, I think what we just saw was Stara's Dune getting out the... We know his name's Stara's Dune, right? Yes. Yeah. Thoros Dune getting out the first time. And then everything we've heard about from all the, the, the creatures that we've met along the way... That's when they came in and, and, and put sealed them and built the seals and everything else. This is great. This is great to know. This. One, one of my first questions when we started finding out when the, seal, the seals were broken was how can we undo it? How can we reseal the seals? Maybe we, we find an answer. Maybe we find a way to, to, to however they did it the first time, through these, through these memories, through these visions. You're very optimistic, I'll give you that. All right, what's the riddle? A riddle appears, glowing in hieroglyphs. <coughs> never resting. Never still. Moving silently from hill to hill. It does not walk, run, or trot. All is cool where it is not. Should have follow K Dub. Welcome, K Dub. Good to see you. Hello, good to see you. Uh, does not walk, run, or trot. Um, oh, I know what it is. Never resting. Oh, you do? Never still. Moving silently from hill to hill. It does not walk, run, or trot. All is cool where it is not. It does, does it begin with a sound? Not the way I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I almost got shit all over my comment. <laughs> that was close. That was fucking close. We almost got a spit take does, DM. Does it start with a W? A w. I, I, maybe I have it wrong. I thought it was the sun. That's my guess. Oh, hey, I got one! Wind was a close second. Yeah, the, well, the part that had me thrown off was the it's cool where I am not, and then I'm like, mm. I was gonna say light. I thought that, it was, I thought thought it was my second guess. I thought it was fire. Oh, I thought it was, so. <laughs> I was thinking wind, and so when you said, f and she said, that's not how I say it, <laughs> fart and wind. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh my god. Uh, All Caprice, that did was solidify your answer. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, maybe Caprice it is. Caprice resists the urge to fart on the skeletons and disrespectfully pick up all the valuables with his dick and then continues to look Can at Can I have my food back? The Thanks. scene on the dais changes. Where. At the previous several, you had seen a large moon. Now a sun radiates above mountains. Not too far from the land of the dead, you see those ancient buildings built into the mountains, but this is the highest peak in the land, at the top of which a huge disc that looks like the sun stands almost like a throne and then fades away. Okay, well, it shouldn't be too hard to pick out that peak. All we have to do is take the sphinxes and... And they probably know where it is. The tallest one. Yeah, they seem to know where we need to go, I even before they, we tell them. They probably could have told us this whole story, but we have to earn it. Yes, that's right. We do. Well, they work for Anubis who put this all together, so it makes sense. Uh, well, I'll, I'll order the Sphinx. What are you doing to It's not surge pricing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it depends on the time, time of day. Oh, they canceled. <laughs> they canceled? They fucking are you horse. making well, sure to get another... an Excel? <laughs> There, uh, you know, there were five of us. Well, that's going to be another 21 minutes. <laughs> no, we all gonna, you sphinx. all are going to Venmo, Venmo me for this, right? <laughs> well, it, look, it's good that you're ordering the Sphinx because my score's not so great since someone I knew threw up on the last Sphinx. <laughs> <laughs> it was a rough night, and now my score is just plummeted. 
<laughs> Did Kelsey do that? I don't know yeah. who's Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend named Enzo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Sphinx has arrived. <laughs> you leave the tomb, and the Sphinx is once again on either side of the stairs down from this platform out of the um, the tomb of Husaka. Um, you see them waiting, and she nods you to explain the scene, and she says, of course, the Sun's Throne Mountain. Sun's what mountain? Sun's Throne. Throne? Yes. And, and this is the last one, right? Because seven would be Iris. <coughs> Isn't this five? Uh, maybe I miscounted. Uh, yes. River, river, mountain, moon, death, sun. Six, one more, and then seven is Iris. No, but sun would be five. Oh, I'm really struggling today. <laughs> the next one is the golden eagle circling it's, under the sun. It's been a and long And then the time. one after that is the face in a sandstorm. Yeah, my bad. Oh. I missed, so I, we'll be going into the sandstorm. Oh, we're going to go into the pain storm. Somehow I accidentally <laughs> picked up an <laughs> <laughs> I counted... By, by river, mountain, moon, death. And you call yourself sun. a wizard. Well, I've been awake for a pretty long time. <laughs> oh, true. I forgot the river. It's because I didn't draw a little picture next to me. <laughs> You're right, I miscounted. Jason. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. You mount the sphinxes, yeah. and they take off yeah. into the night sky, and you uh, go a little bit slower as you take a, the long way to the Sun Throne Mountain because it is dangerously close to the City of the Dead. You see these undead, almost mummified vultures flying above. You see is you see strange torches as these undead creatures shamble about from afar. And miraculously, none seem to bother you. These sphinxes seemingly perhaps native to this land, are able to move about without being disturbed. And sun rises by the time you arrive. Uh, morning comes and it rises and you finally uh, get higher and higher. And even in the, it's if it were not for the heat of the sun, it would be uh, getting colder and colder. But as the sun rises, the heat returns. And you see the large golden sun disk above the highest peak in on these mountains and as you arrive you see um you look around and, and this mountain top continues to go down and and you don't notice it at first but then as the sun hits a certain angle the light reflects off of this metal disk and it shines a beam of light the subtle spot that you see, that little bit of black and gold, is the dais, is a mere 50 feet from this massive disc on the highest mountain. This is it. I, you know, I just about the whole counting thing, I I, <laughs> I, I wanted to say again, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but I'm glad that I miscounted because I was really worried that this whole <laughs> thing with, with Ankatep was going to really get wrapped up in like one more episode and I really felt like we needed another one. I didn't want to whole have like a, you know, contest of royal seats situation. I just assumed that you were doing that, um, uh, counting the fence post problem. You know, you were counting the oh. sections and not the actual posts themselves. That's true. Yeah, well, there, there was that too, you know, I, but... I've, I've also read Contest of Royal Seats, and that's another story where just the ending, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, is that it? You know, it was like they they could have had more time. There oh, was but plenty I, of time, but there was just no time. I they didn't want it. it. I actually haven't read the series. I've only seen the moving the major images of them. So oh, I'm, sure no. the, I'm sure the books. They, are they never made a major image. They were making minor images. <laughs> Well, they really could have used another few series of uh, or seasons of minor images. Anyway, I'm just really glad that this is going to be. You could watch up those more, at home. More, you know, it's not going to be rushed. Is my point. We're going to get Wait, a full picture. Wait, this is six, here. right? Six, six, six. No, this the number be of the five. beast. This, this, this is will five. be the fifth uh, sight that we've arrived the fifth at. Vision. The fifth vision. Oh, I counted death as one. 
That was one. Oh. You did what I did. Are you the river vision? I'm going to go check out the, 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 the day it starts. Yeah, I have an in score of 20, oh, so it's okay to make that mistake. River, <laughs> mountain, <laughs> moon. Moon, three. Death. Four, death. Sun, five. five. That's where we are now. So we are we are at the sun. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. We haven't seen the sun oh. since. Been. I did the same thing you did. Here but comes you the, the dais. So you're, either, you're either as smart as me or I'm as dumb as you. I'm the, just not counting the same things. I'm just right. counting like, said the, the puzzle. Problem. It's fence problem. The okay. hieroglyphics <laughs> glow and it says, do you have the will to hold the sun in the palm of your hand? And I, I produce a little bit of fire from my, my fingertip. I do. The will of, of the sun. I, I, have, I have literally created sunlight. I've spent my whole life studying magics that would make me powerful enough to, 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 to conquer whatever I might face. And, and I never thought that would be saving my brother, but here we are. It seems a little literal there, Felix. Is the sun like a metaphor for courage or, or some other? Well, I think that's just it. I don't think that, that I would be here with all of you and, and, and gone on this unbelievable adventure if I didn't have the will to do it. I, I've come a long way. I've had a pretty tragic life thus far. And, and if it wasn't for all of you, I don't know where I'd be. But I have learned that even when I felt like giving up, when I was drowning in the ocean and Toa fished me out, that was a change of, 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 of the first day of my new life where I learned that I had to persevere and I couldn't just drown, I had to swim. And, and, and I was angry for a very long time. I was very angry at, at Korovakia and the military and things were getting better and now I'm angry again. I'm angry all over again. I thought I was a new person and I, I'm worried that my, my anger and hatred might be cyclical. But all I know is that I have to keep moving forward one step at a time and, and it's, it's that will to hold the sun in my hands. I can do anything that's gonna get me there. Make well, a charisma check. Stay, stand a little closer to the dais and say that. <laughs> <You're right here. laughs> charisma I, check plus uh, proficiency. I, I, I scuttle over just a little bit closer. <laughs> you literally crab walk. Uh, I'm going to pick this one. <laughs> the dais didn't hear. Charisma you. plus proficiency. Yep. This is the worst thing I could have possibly been picked for. Oh. Ha ha! Oh! Natural 20. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yep. Uh, so I got a 27. It was either a 1 or a 20. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell which is which. Uh, I don't think he sperms little. over a natural one. <laughs> oh. Oh. Cigarette. Yikes. Yikes. Immediately, you see a hand adorned in the jewels of a pharaoh reach up towards the blazing sun overhead and grasp it in its hand with light beaming over a massive empire in the desert rising up holding a, a scepter of power showing the will that requires to lead and to succeed then, once again, the shimmering gold of Iris forms into the shape of the mummy lord, the dark lord of this land. As he stares up to the sun, and you see a massive golden eagle. Not quite the size of, the ro of a rock, but a large eagle circling around the sun at high noon. There is not much time, it is only for one minute, and as he reaches up, dark necromantic magic spills out of his fingers. And it looks like it's tethering towards this bird 
but instead it's ripping down as it tears out its life essence. And as the eagle lets out a final death throw, a shriek that echoes through these mountains and collapses, his eyes blaze with golden light and he rips the fragment of the sun from this eagle as it collapses into the mountains below. And then your vision shifts and fades. You see once again a temple wall, a mosaic that projects the heavens, the realm of the dealings of the gods. As you see Osiris in 14 pieces, as his son, the falcon headed Horus, the power of the sun, Horus Ray. He works with the other gods of the Pantheon, Anubis included, to restore those pieces one by one. And that power hums through not just these, this realm of the gods, but as the land of reeds and lotuses shimmers and shakes in this pyramid, as the chain god threatens to spill out, stepping into this world, a being of light, a creature with massive wings, a long neck, a brilliant beak, rises up from the land itself, a being of light, a massive vulture, rises forth and calls to her sister. Light is powerful. It can snuff out the darkness, but there is only one primal force, only one prime force that even the gods can fear. Osiris has proven that. The power of death. As far across the sea, a great owl rises. With the power of those pieces of Osiris, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They chain one after the other. As they hum with power. And from across the sea, they work and they harness the power of death to rip back the god of entropy, the maddened, shrieking, Thara's doom. But it requires such a ritual requires this god to be in the realms of death. And yet, 13 seals, one more fragment of Osiris remains. Your vision returns. Oh my gosh. I knew it! Oh my gosh. <clears throat> wow! What did you know? How did you know? Huh? What did you know? I just got very lucky. I was, I, 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 just moments ago, I was talking, well, it was hours before we, after, before we, 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 we know how the seals got made. We, oh, we, we yeah. found out okay. the, the whole ritual. Is there even even Zuri was like that. That's been lost in time. I mean, he could have been lying, but so the seals were literally pieces of Osiris's body. That ass. But what about the missing piece? So that's why they're here. Well, not here, I guess, because we're not here. But that's why they're in Striga. Is that? Do I get that sense that that's why? I would say that yes, it was the land across the sea, and obviously I narrated it, and you can imagine what that would have looked like depicted uh, visually. Is there an animal that uh, the sister of uh, the owl that evokes? It was a vulture. 
a being of light, a vulture, rose up to call upon a sister, the being of death that manifested in hell. So, I mean, we know there's 13 seals, 30 bees, the, the, the missing piece, the, the one remaining piece. Maybe that's the key. Maybe it's that's the key to all this. To keep, to keep one more seal to fix it, right? Well, at least to maybe repair it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the missing piece could 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 either fix the other seals or or just put the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, and keep Doris Dune chained for good. Why do you think they only made thirteen? What happened to the fourteenth piece? We'll probably find out. A riddle. A riddle Thank appears. God, one more episode. <laughs> <laughs> a riddle appears. And this will be the last beneath Dark Wing. <laughs> this thing. All things, this thing devours all things. Birds, beasts, trees, flowers. Gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to me to meal. This has been a day, let me tell you. This thing devours all. Mm -hmm. Never felt more useful. Can you it. say it again? This thing, uh, uh, devours all things. Birds, beast, or this thing all, this thing all devours birds, beasts, trees, flowers. Gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to meal. Well, Nikki said it like 30 minutes ago, so I don't know. What did he answer? Farts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Is that it? Uh, is it farts? Toa, to 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 uh, I know you're you're better than that. No, I wasn't thinking that. I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> uh. Doors? No, come no, on. No, I mean doors. Time. <laughs> As it glows, and you see, however, a storm whipping sandstorms. As you see uh, dunes shifted and formed in a matter of minutes as the dust clouds whip around. And at the center of all of this is a small uh, rectangular temple that seems to be surrounded by this storm. And no matter where the storm travels, this structure is always within the boundaries of the storm. And we have to go into the storm. Do you think that they can fly in there? It doesn't seem likely. Yes, they can. Then won't we be torn apart? That's exactly what I was thinking. We'd be ripped to shreds. Maybe they know a way in. Let's talk to them and see what they say. Darude is handstorm by Darude starts playing. <laughs> Are you afraid? <laughs> to enter. Can we go the above? breath of the falls? Well, well, what if we go above the storm and then we just look down and find a little? You yeah, like the eye of the storm. The sun Compared storm. to the breath of the forgotten, the breath of the falls is nothing. Compared to the breath of the forgotten, the breath of the falls is nothing. They are two separate storms. Oh, we only choose one storm on our map. Yeah, we only have one storm on our map. No. That is not my problem. <laughs> you saw two storms. Oh, you saw two storms. Yeah, but I only drew one. <laughs> and I rolled a six. six. She oh. really is a shitty cartographer. <laughs> Anubis is in the real It is one. the moving storm, the breath of the false, the false gods. Oh. This is a temple to those false gods. Why? Is it safe? Is there danger? Are we going to die? Is it going to be a horrible death? To those, to those who know and can traverse and walk through to the other side, there's a great blessing. 
but but you don't know. <laughs> Are you saying I do not know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, Get on my back! <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. I may be a bad cartographer, but I'm a great fartographer. <laughs> and I get on his back. <laughs> As he goes to get on the back, we all see the rip that's formed in the back of his pants. Oh, jeez, it's got you bigger. He rips the so insane, it rips his pants. I sit down. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> you need pants with like an iron tip. <laughs> you can't rip it anymore. No, I want to get one of those like muffler holes that like. <laughs> <laughs> you make your way away from the uh, sun's throne mountain, and you and once again both Neferet and uh, Ramkahan uh, take the, make sure to fly far away from the city of the dead. And as you're flying away, you see the absolutely gargantuan pyramid. The golden pyramid that that sits at the center of the city with every, the, the city is built into different tiers and terraces, all leading to this massive golden temple of uh, this pyramid that seems to have a massive network within it, various balconies where you see undead, po- uh, uh, some gigantic, others smaller that are, are posted at every single entrance as these as as undead march through the city that is not just built in terraces and these great temples and tombs, but also in, in, in highways and, 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 and structures built into the mountains that contains this entire city. And you see that where you had seen, an, although you had seen a massive statue of Husaka in his tomb, built into this pyramid is an impossibly large statue of Ankhotep in his finest pharaoh's garb, holding his scepter of power, immortalized in marble and stone. And it is literally the album cover of Power Slave for my Iron Maiden fans. <laughs> and as, I had a feeling. <laughs> I just had to say that, uh, just so I was very crystal fucking clear. Um, I'm looking it up right now. But are the Anubis statues actually oh, yeah. set statues? Hey. Yeah, yeah. Excellent point. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Excellent point. Wait and flanked. It's clearly based off of a boost and bell, but that's fine. And flanking this statue, uh, this massive statue of Ankhotep himself, <laughs> are the statues of a jackal headed god. Uh, not a jackal-headed god, a skeletal, jackal-headed, false god. A noob satan. On either side, the creature, the entity, drawing power, soon to be awakened. <laughs> and you descend towards the breath of the false, the breath of this false god. The howling, whipping sandstorm and you uh, hear the booming voice of Ramkahan. He says, do not lose your courage now, as both descend in and you see as they fly uh, with incredible grace and precision, flying on and and through the winds um, as as you are whipped and blasted by sand. Um, it is an, it is very painful, but uh, but you are goes. able to hold on. You are not ripped <laughs> off. Your flesh is not rended, and finally, uh, what feels like an eternity. To use another fourth wall breaking thing, it's like that scene from Dune and the Ornithopters, uh, uh, where they're rocketing through the sandstorm as they seem to know the path, they know the way to go. If you follow the if you follow the right wind patterns. You can make it through mostly unscathed, and finally everything stops and calm returns. And you see before you, as the dust cloud is above you, it's to every single side of you, and it continues to move. In a small area rising up from the sand is a temple. Relatively modest, small, four walls, 
um, not particularly adorned with any kind of fancy uh, decoration. Does that make it feel older or just that that's the case? Does does it make it feel even more ancient than the ruins we've seen so far because of its modesty? Yes. It... I would... That's an excellent uh, observation. I would say make a history check at advantage. Oh. Gosh, I didn't expect to roll. I was just curious. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't think I was playing a game. Let me get some of that 16 number. 16. And you also realize that where all of these, even in the most beautifully maintained temples and ruin, or uh, temples and, and structures, they've all had the weather, the weathering effect of thousands of years. This feels like it was built yesterday. Completely pristine and trapped in time. In spite of what? In spite of the massive sandstorm that you would think would be ripping it apart, but obviously it's calm. And you know that the sandstorm is moving, but this is almost as if time is standing still Hmm. in this temple. And it seems, well, all of these things, you're not sure, but they're all larger than life, perhaps constructed in the millennia since this dark domain has been around. This feels like it was, it could be the first temple that was ever built in the land of reeds and lotuses. Seems like an exception to the time riddle we just heard. That's a great point, actually. Well, maybe this temple was built to false gods in the sense that they're gods that nobody remembers. That um, that will be the storm of the forgotten. Maybe there's not really gods. I mean, just like a new set car, whatever his name is. What? A new. A noob satan. A noob satan. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, Sphinxes, for the ride. We, did we land? Yeah, they, they landed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. I thought it was like floating. Did they, like, did they, did they fly off? Or they, no, they're still here. They're still here. They gotta get us out of the sky. Yeah, I was being sincere. You guys don't have to stare at me. <laughs> uh, she, she, uh, you see, uh, Nefer and nod and face. says, uh, <laughs> "You're welcome." <laughs> there is. There is a trick to flying, to making one's way through the storm. Not many get to see this temple. And uh, you see Ronk has, has, I am surprised you did not lose courage halfway through. Well done. He's like, seems like he's like a little frustrated that you didn't scream like a girl on the way in, but. I do fine in open spaces. Just don't put me in a tiny coffin and I'll be fine. You'll be right back. I'll I turn. write down tiny coffin. I'll start walking <laughs> through the temple. Um, you enter the temple and it is deathly quiet. It feels like everything is still. And you see up ahead, it seems it's actually a bare room, but at the center, covered in bones, is a dais of black and gold. And you see that these bones are not human bones. You see the skeleton of a jackal, the skeleton of an aardvark, a donkey, a greyhound, and a cobra, all littered in this strange temple. You feel, you know what it's like to be in a temple of a god. You've been in the temples of Anubis that Iris has made. And this feels have that same kind of reverence, but off feels like the antithesis. It feels like there is still power to be gained here, but it's a power of darkness. It's a dark, a power, a temple of dark blessings. And as As you approach the dais, once again, the bones start to crumble away. And you see hieroglyphics on the dais. And it says,
Time waits for none. How do you pass the time? Is there a trick to this? Or can we just say the things that we do to pass the time? I have read a lot of books. I take out my wine skin. Well, you know what I do. I'll take a drink. <laughs> I, I put my spare time into creative pursuits. Uh, writing words and making compositions. Putting them together. Writing songs. What do you do, Iris? What do you do, Topa? I don't know. I play my ukulele a little bit. I, uh, I eat some fish. I go fishing. I catch fish. I haven't done that in a while since I've been home, but I guess lately I talked to Felix. I talked to Caprice and Lefty Iris. I mean, you. I, uh, ride on Sphinxes. Um, you don't have to say everything that you've uh, ever done. It's just. Ah, well, I mean, those are all things, right? I mean, yeah. That... So, what do you do, Iris? Well, I don't really have free time. Even when you were home before all this? No. There's always something to do in. the. <clears throat> along the path to worship. But I would say my time is spent honoring the gods that have given us the life that we are lucky to enjoy. So you spend your, your time... And readying in, myself for death. In prayer. Sure. In worship. In worship. In, in faithfulness. Yes. Iris, <laughs> I need you to make a wisdom check and add your proficiency modifier. <laughs> Thank you for the fall sweetness. Thank you for the fall. Welcome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Faithful Twenty three. I'm gonna play a one. Twenty. Are you on tea with a lift? <laughs> when we used to paint. I'm a cleric. And there was a color. The color. Wisdom is good for me. Silver. I always wanted to hear mithril silver. <laughs> I couldn't help mithril, it. Mithril. Mithril makes me feel like you have a lift. Yeah, mithril. mithril. That's right. Mithril silver. I did the my, exact same my thing. My brother, when he was young, used to say, mithril. he couldn't say mountains. He, so he'd say mountains. 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 It's like people would say crayon. Uh, crown. 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 Or crayon. Crayon. You crayon. see. Crayon. Crown. Sorry. <laughs> you see a crayon drawing. <laughs> and crayon raspberries. Delicious uh, seltzer flavor. <laughs> Mike hates us. <laughs> no, this is meant to be a classic D and D session. Uh, <laughs> God, I got one. Uh, you see the dais change and shape. And Iris, when you spoke, you saw a person in worship bowing before a jackal-headed god, but a skeletal jackal. And you see a craftsman creating the highest work of art that they could fathom. You see a lover achieving a true romance with their one true love. You see a pharaoh achieving the most prosperous society that they could fathom. What does it mean to pass the time is to truly live and to succeed, even this realm of death. And suddenly Iris's soul glows once more and you see Ankhotep stepping into this eye of the sandstorm, where very few have tread, mastering this force of nature, force of death, force of magic, force of power. And he raises his hand before this temple of time, and you see the almost the full 
manifestation of his own will and drive, form and a face in the cloud, in the, in the sandstorm, the clouds of dust and sand that then rocket from the storm around him into his hand and all starts to glow as the energy and the ka, the fragment of time, drifts from each grain of sand into this blessing of the sandstorm and it fills his undead body. And now you see a kingdom shaking, rumbling, people shrieking in fear as they hear the incessant maddened shrieks and babbling of an entity they cannot understand, but they know that it is just pure chaos, madness, and destruction that is erupting from the pyramid where their new pharaoh, Ankhotep, the former high priest of Anubis, sits. This is what the people wanted, Ankhotep thinks. This is it. This is how prosperity will be achieved as he wears that scorpion's crown that speaks to him in that same maddening whisper. And it's here that Ankhotep finally can understand the maddening cries. After following its bidding just almost automatically for so long, this crown was forged, created by the chain god himself, one of many cast into this realm of Avantras. One of 12. And only he was the one to find it. He truly was great where his boy king had failed. It was the night of his greatest victory. But in that moment, the people of the land of reeds and lotuses stormed this pyramid. And just as he and his priests slew his pharaoh, the guards and all of the priests of the other gods, the people of this kingdom slew their false pretender king, their false pharaoh. And in that same moment of death, you then see it shift to a mosaic as you see that same owl with the seeming death mask on in a triumvirate, a meeting shrouded in mists. Where there was a great owl, there's also now a feminine shape in a hood holding a lantern. And making the third point of that trinity, the god of the dead himself, Anubis. The three make their pact. They make their agreement. They save existence. And as Ankhotep dies, you hear him breathe out a curse as all of those that slew him are horribly changed into undead abominations, scorpion creatures, snake-like monsters, and other horrible abominations. As a massive sandstorm laced with mist makes its way across this kingdom of reeds and lotuses. And in this one terrible night, in this one last act, as Ankhotep breathes his final breath as a living man, he clutches his chest, and on his chest is a glowing seal, as the entire kingdom is swallowed by the mists. Harakir is formed. The 14th piece of Osiris, as Osiris returns from the dead and takes his place back at the head of the Osirian pantheon. 
and where this pyramid had been, this seat of power of Ankhotep is coated in black and forever trapped in a sandstorm, imprisoning Thara's doom. At the time, ideally for all time. And your conscience returns. So the 14th piece was in Ankhotep? It was on that seal, I thought. It just... On oh, him! In his chest. And, 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 and I guess that's how he was able to rip this part of, of Avantris right out of Avantris and, and create Harakir. So if we end him, get that piece back, I wonder if this would be restored back to where it's supposed to be. But what if it doesn't? What if it just stops existing? And everybody in it stops existing? I don't know. Do we really want to return this realm to its original spot in the Prime Material Plane? That seems it's full of undeath and I don't know. And ruins. Well maybe all the undeath would just die. All of the camels are incredibly vicious and spit in your face, <laughs> causing terrible burning scars. And normal commoners would just be killed instantly. I've taken, I've taken 26 points of damage from just camels today. That would kill, that would kill so many commoners. Yeah. Look, I'm not saying we have to return this place, but we can't let Ankhotep have a piece of Osiris. Right? I mean, at the very least, we, it feels like that's something that we could use to, to defeat the Chain God. Would I infer from the vision that it was used up the way that the seal allowed you I'll, to... I'll reiterate just so it's very clear. You get the sense that the 13 of the seals were done in Striga. Mm -hmm. And the 14th seal to finish sealing away the Chain God to basically to send Ankhotep and this entire place and the chain god back is to he did not want the seal they basically used him as the final seal to finish the ritual to have him be the anchor point so, in the in the pyramid so essentially that anubis um the maiden in the mist clearly and the and striga works together yes. to create this dread domain Yes. Yeah. And this dread domain is the prison. Well, that's probably why he wants to die. Poor Ankhotep. I'm that's... like, really? A maiden with a lantern? Fuck. I wrote down Raven Queen, but you're right. It's totally the maiden. Yeah. Poor Ankhotep. That's pretty unfarrow. What happened to him? What? And it's... I will also add, uh, you get the because you had learned from... Uh, Virgil Zern, who Mace had, was lovingly playing as Zalek, <laughs> that the Shadow Fell existed well before the Raven Queen got pulled into there. Mm. Right. And you get that this is well, well before that. Right. Right. Well, I, I mean, hmm. I, I mean, if he, if, if his goal is to, to, to work with Thar's Dune, then it would make sense that he'd want to die if that would release the seal, right? Perhaps him being forever alive or undead and, and being that anchor point would would permanently prevent the return. And he wants to get the pieces of his cod and end himself and, and release Thar's Dune. <clears throat> so if we kill him, then we would unleash the chain god? Maybe. Yeah, potentially. Well, then that makes sense why he wants to die. Because I was thinking to myself, if he is such a bad dude, a bad, bad Leroy Brown, why would we stand in the way of letting him accomplish what he wants to and allowing him to die? That's exactly right. But if allowing him to die is a world-ending event, which it seems like it would be, yeah. then we can't let him die. What about the opposite? What? Well, he's undead, right? What if we make him mortal? Would we go about doing that? I don't know. I'm thinking don't you think creatively. If, the, if he could be made mortal again, don't you think the gods would have just done that? Well, I think that's what he's trying to do. I think he's trying to bring back the pieces of his car so that he, become, he can become mortal and then die. Oh. That's, that's extremely reasonable, Tella. 
So we sort of just want him to sort of like stay here. But how just... do we just make that happen? Well, we take Iris and we, we get the fuck out of here and we never come back again. Problem solved. We have to rescue Nubis. Oh, yeah. Right, because, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And they'll never stop coming for Iris. That's right. She'll be woken up by gross bugs for the rest of her life. Trying to take her away. The next riddle appears <laughs> amongst the gross bugs. I love how bugs. the riddles wait for us to yeah, have a they, conversation. Yeah, thanks, riddles. Like, the they're, riddles. they're really the, considerate yeah, the riddles of our know feelings. about dramatic uh, effects <laughs> and timing. Uh, so once again, I've been here for thousands form. of years. Now, what, <laughs> what can bring back the dead, make you cry, make you laugh, make you young, is born in an instant, yet lasts a lifetime? Oh my god, Ow, I snorted tea. I have an idea for this one, too. I can, okay, born in an in instant, instant, yet lasts a lifetime. Yet lasts a I'm just gonna read yours. I'm not writing any more. What shit. can? What can be? What can be what? Foot, feet pics on the What's internet. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> what can bring back the dead? Make you Hold cry. Hold on. Bring back the dead. The dead. Make you cry. Make you laugh. Make you laugh. <laughs> Make you young. young. Is born, born in an instant. Ooh. Yet lasts a lifetime. Yet lasts a lifetime. Mm. Bring back the dead. You know what? I've not said, not hey, chat, that. don't answer any of this, and no one said anything. Good job, no, they, chat. No, the chat's been really, Wait, really good. Good job, chat. I didn't even they, think that They I, wait yeah. until we get yeah, it. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I thought we already did that. I think you guys did that. Foot pics on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to. Exactly right. I don't even have to roll for it. Show feet, please. <laughs> Everyone, take off your shoes and put Show your feet on the disc. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Also, please leave your used socks. <laughs> Make them <laughs> extra crusty. <laughs> Anyone got it? Oh yeah, Luffy, yeah, Luffy it, looks like it. he's got it. I already, I got the last one. I don't want to take all. Of I it. did one already. Who who hasn't gotten one? I think we all I think did. We've all got one. Well, how about on the count of three, we'll all say it at the same time. Oh, this is fun. It's a great idea. It'll, all right. be, it'll, be, it'll be three, two, one, and we'll all say it, okay? All right. All right. Okay. Three, two, Foot one. Footbits on the internet! Memories! <laughs> <laughs> it shifts. It's what like, did everybody say? I said feet pics. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> it shifts and it shakes. And you see now um, uh, the memories, the lifetimes, the cherished moments of every kind of, of person, young, old, uh, from every walk of life. As, as you see in a, in a brief moment, entire lifetimes, cherished memories as, but then also the immemorial memory of time of the gods, of that which should never live this long, as the memory of betrayal, the memory of loss, the memory of failure, is, is, is radiating from the scene. And then it shifts, and you see the river, what had been a river, the dried river bed, where it had once flowed deeper into Nakbat, now emptying into a howling prison of sand and mist, you see the very, a tiny, tiny, tiny tip of what looks like a tiny, small pyramid swallowed in the sand. And it fades. All right. So we go back to the river. That's where we fight a false god. 
Are we ready for that? <clears throat> well, we found Strapon. Who? The camel. Oh. Strappy. Oh, right. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that guy. This is very hero's journey. We go we go back to where we started, and uh, maybe we have some kind of boon, additional knowledge, abilities, powers. A level. That's, that's what I'm saying. Boon, powers. Level. 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 I read a book Level. once. Called you can read. Duke of the Circles. Living <laughs> on this great journey. Duke of the Circles. Save the world. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but then they, at the end of the book, they went back to where they started, and there was this really weird, like, really short, rushed, like, mini threat that was dispatched pretty easily, really. <laughs> Took the wind out of the sails of that story. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> like a couple the halflings with crossbows showed up and just killed a wizard. <laughs> They're like, okay. Anyway. It's very confusing. They didn't put that in the major image, thank goodness. <laughs> It's at this point you go back. The sphinxes are waiting for you. <laughs> but another circle was Dukes made. Of the circle. Oh god! And you mount them, <laughs> and they begin Ooh. to fly oh. south, southwest, to the very southernmost point of the eternal river, the empty riverbed. And as you fly, you see far up ahead the lonely Castle Gloomvale. Such a an out-of-place monument. No longer any inhabitants that you're aware of. They are for this sole purpose to, to be here for eternity. And as both sphinxes fly <coughs> and land, you see just a, a bit of sand, just a single dune that just seems completely inconspicuous. But you see just several inches tall, a tiny bit of just a, a limestone pyramid that looks like it's a tiny little, little pyramid, almost comically small in this desert. But then you see far off in the distance the glint of gold. And towards where the mountain range starts to rise up again as the mist and the sand form a wall a hundred meters from you, reminding you of the prison that you're in. You see the deus off in the distance. And you know what awaits beneath. What do you do? Does anyone want to find a casino and play some craps? What? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds a lot better than what we're about to attempt to do. I think we just need to get it done. We can do it. We've done we've we've killed a lot of things before. And I have a feeling that a false god is nothing. We killed Baphomet. We killed that other guy that was kind of like Beth in it. Moloch. Moloch, thank you. Oh. We killed the dragon. Um, yeah, but I don't know where any of those rank against a false god. Is a, a false god like a god? It's, but false. Yeah, but like so probably power a lot wise. Weaker is my guess. I mean, yeah, it's but not like probably a, like a lot stronger than a dragon, I would say, right? I, I, I don't know really, but I mean, probably not that different from Baphomet. There's only one way to find out. Oh, Baphomet wasn't fun. Are we all ready? As I recall. As ready as I'm gonna be. <laughs> you right. approach the dais, and once again, hieroglyphics appear and glow. Do the impossible. Bring back the dead. Mm. 
me hours to do that. It's not impossible. I still have that hand floating around. I'm not going to bring her back into this. Well, I was no. just saying, if we needed to actually do it, we could. And again, I mean, all of these haven't been literal up to this point. I mean, memories, right? Oh, yeah. People we've lost oh, it's along the way. Idea. Oh, thank God. There's, there's so many. There's so many. Oh, God. Oh, um. What about your cousin that was horribly trapped by that trap? That was, oh. <laughs> that was very genuine. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> what about the memories of him? Well, I don't know if he died. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, I thought you meant that he was crushed to death and you didn't want to go into detail. No, he was stuck and then I left. And we never heard about him or from him ever again. Oh. I mean, it was months, I assume he's dead. <laughs> There's a lot of lying. It's not funny. Oh, it's called the gallows humor. Oh, I saw, I'm totally misunderstood when you were telling the story. <clears throat> Okay, well, I mean, it was an emotional time for me to tell, share that story for the first time, so I understand if I may have, you know, not not been a, a great storyteller in that moment, but no, no, I I can only assume. I, if we were, were going to pick someone who died, it would be like my mom or, or, or who else has died? Lufti's mother died. Lupti's mom. Not really. I mean, she... But she did. We don't really know if she died, you know. It's more like a mystery. It's not what it seems to be, you know. Maybe. <clears throat> oh, maybe some of the folks we defeated? We could talk about their memories. It's not like it has to be a positive memory, right? We could be like, oh, that fuck turned into a crazy lightning bird. Took him down. That kind of thing. You know, considering the horrible things that we have seen, we have significantly fewer impactful deaths in our lives than I would have thought. Well, there was... No, I guess all so hard. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're surrounded by death, but... So far, we've been pretty lucky in the people that we love not dying. And even when we think that someone has died, we find that they have not. What about that old guy? <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> that orc? The halfling? Oh yeah, the halfling. <clears throat> he died twice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. Wow. Well, we're learning a lot about Rich tonight. Rich loves unjust death. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Are you sure Toe is not loving? He's 100% genuine. He's just trying to figure this out. <clears throat> yes. Sofiana is dead now. Right, but we don't really have any memories of her. Ashes. I guess he's not dead anymore. No, he said. <laughs> 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 oh, go stand in the corner. I'm sorry. I turn around and just stand by myself. Oh. <laughs> Look, I... It just keeps coming up and I'm just so tired of talking about it. I, my entire life has been shaped by death. 
I wouldn't be here or who I am if it wasn't for all of the things that I did. You know, I think about my mother every day and, and Mr. Mendel and all of those poor, innocent people. I'll never forget them. They haunt my waking dreams. And I don't think I can ever fix any of what I did, but I'm here and I'm trying. It's awful, you know, and not all the memories are good memories and they're not all, you know, just they're, they're just there. I can't forget them if I wanted to. I don't know. I mean, we've been considerably lucky so far, like you've said, with the people that we've run into and the people that we care about and they managed to escape or, or redeem themselves or find a way out. We've been lucky, but you know, it might not last. We don't know when, when one of us won't make it. And at the end of this, you know, we talked about not fearing death. And of course I don't fear death itself. I, I've wanted to die so many times. It wasn't until recently that I didn't. What I fear is not finishing what I need to finish before I die. As long as we draw breath, remember? Right? Yes, I remember. And if I don't make it, I would hope that you'd all remember me and keep me alive that way. Of course we would. I, I would write an epic poem and, and, and sing it for, for all to hear, telling the nice. life story of Felix. So why don't you do that? Why don't you tell us a story about Mr. Mendel or your, or your mom or anyone else? <sighs> as if they were alive. Oh. <sighs> Well, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't know who my father was, and Mr. Mendel was really the only person who was that father figure for me growing up. I mean, he, he put me through the academy and, and, got, and, 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 and gave me a place and my brother to stay and, and fed us. And, you know, of course we worked and we did what we could to, to get, provide back to him. But, you know, on, on, on cold nights, when all of the people staying at the end had, had, had turned in and, my brother and I were helping uh, around the inn, whether we were cleaning up the kitchen or, or preparing for the next day. We would, the three of us would sit together and just talk. And, and Mr. Mendel would tell us the most amazing stories of his life. And, and just funny things that he and his, his family would get up to and his friends when he was kids. Uh, just unbelievably uh, funny. And we would laugh and laugh. And, you know, the next thing you know, it, it would be... It would almost, we would laugh until the sun was coming up. And then we'd have to realize we, we needed to get sleep to be ready for the next day. And I would give anything to go back to those days one more time. To that moment. That was very nice. He was a good man. <laughs> the dais shifts and shakes. And once again, you see an image. You see a human boy wearing a blue coat and a red hat. Felix is before you. Beside him, his mother appears. Mr. Mendel, neighbors, friends, loved ones, citizens of Kesselfeld, the ghosts of the dead. In this moment brought back by only a memory. We surround you, Felix, but Milo is not there. Milo is not dead. And as it fades, Iris's soul glows as the fragment of memory glows within her. As it erupts forward, and you see Ankhotep, as he stares into a pool, and through that pool you see a withered cemetery in a strange forest, and a tabaxi in religious vestments walk by. As she starts to lose consciousness, you see him reach out as slithering shadows reach out in the scene beyond as he attempts to grab and harness that call like you've seen time and time again six times. 
but he clutches as the vision fades and suddenly he's no longer able to see Iris. He has failed in this moment. And suddenly the glow fills your eye and the consciousness leaves you. And suddenly you're in a land of sand and mists, in the land of the dead. You're in a pyramid of gold as Ankhotep awakes. He'd just been killed, hadn't he? Reaches up and touches his face. How long has he been dead? His skin is withered, his body fully mummified. He feels the puncture, wounds, his missing organs. And as he pulls down his robe, sitting in his throne of gold and limestone, he sees that humming rune imprisoning the chain god, but also him. He feels empty. His cause gone, ripped apart by the three that trapped him here. His people turned to undead abominations. Creatures that now lurk and wander across the sands, that wander the labyrinthian tunnels and hallways and chambers below. Shell of a man god, preserved for a thousand ages. Now he waits. And waits, and waits, and waits, and waits. And the power and the life seems good at first. He has temples to him. He has everything that he wants, but like all things, it gets old and boring. And he's tired, and he's weary. And where, in a time long past, he had wished for unending life and success, now that he's achieved some form of that, all he wants is for it to be done. All he wants is for it to be over. All he wants is to be mortal again so he can finally die and experience oblivion. He cares not about the chain god anymore. He cares not if it dooms existence as long as he can rest. So that desperate quest begins and goes on for countless years, millennia after millennia, as great monuments rise and fall and crumble away, he loses track. Until now, no gods allowed. They made sure of that, so Set could not penetrate and use his will to free the chain god. No god can enter except the one who made the pact to create this place. So why not create, create a false idol? The god of chaos and destruction that he had once served, that he betrayed his original god for. And eventually, it would come to pass in the moment when he would kill a god, get that revenge, welcome another to his doorstep, and finally begin the ritual, the transformation, where he could become a man and die. Your consciousness returns. And the ground rumbles around you. As suddenly an entire tidal wave of sand erupts and explodes out from that tiny little several inch high pyramid. 
and blasts away and sinks away. And you see now that it flows like water tumbling from the dunes into the riverbed. Spills like the crashing sea. As you see, getting revealed, dozens and dozens, hundred more feet tall, a massive limestone pyramid. On its doors, the symbols unmistakably have set. But the face of the false god, the face of Anub Satan, and the doors begin to open. And that's where we're on the session. <clears throat> Damn! Oh. This was Damn. another like mega lore drop. Yes. Mega, mega lore. This mega, is mega, mega, mega. Crazy mega. amount of lore. It's starting to come together. Holy shit. I'm finally Holy getting shit. answers. So much. Oh. Well like, done. Like meta plot yeah. info, right? Well done. Well done. Oh, we're not done. We're not done. What's <laughs> next, Andy? Next, yes, Andy, what's next? We have a Vantress and Chill, which Yay. is a subscriber slash Patreon perk. One of the one of the small ways we like to give back to the people who support us month in and month out. Where after every single stream session of D and D that we do, we turn the cameras over to a subscriber only stream, and we talk about our favorite moments. We discuss theories and what happened in the session. We kind of like do some therapy and unwind. Uh, but most importantly, uh, everyone in chat can ask us questions, make comments. We will address <laughs> all of them. And it's just a way for you to spend a little bit more intimate time with us and get some behind the scenes uh, look. So if you're on the or if you're on the fence about uh, checking out our Patreon or uh, tossing us a sub, um, this might be an opportunity for you to make that decision and come on over and hang out with us and just get a little extra behind the scenes time with us. Uh, yeah, so it is still temporarily available for everyone. Ah, uh, but um, get your free preview. For, You're getting this a test. The only yeah. place to see it once this is, this is gone, it's gone. And the only way to see it going forward is to be a sub or a patron. Mm -hmm. We do record uh, them. Yes, for a limited period of time, uh, as long as uh, we're working through this issue that I've been dealing with, <laughs> uh, it's available for everybody. So uh, welcome, and we'll cut over now.